Today's episode is brought to you by EliteFTS.com. Founded in 1998 with the primary aim to live, learn, and pass on. Please help Elite FTS support this mission by smashing the like button, leaving a comment, sharing with a friend, and thinking of us for your training needs. If you can put it in a gym bag or load weights on it, Elite FTS has it. What's going on? I'm Dave Tate, and we are broadcasting from the middle of the Elite FTS weight room, where the underground still thrives and you're part of the crew. It's time to sit down, keep it real, and cut the bullshit. Welcome to Table Talk. What's going on, guys? We are back with another episode of Table Talk. Before we get started today, I want to throw a shout out to our sponsor, Merrick Health. MerrickHealth.com backslash Table Talk. I've been told you need to say the URL three times during the shout out so people can actually remember that. And it's actually, they're a premium telehealth platform specializing in hormone optimization and preventative medicine. They have a self service platform where you can just get the labs done, analyze them yourself, which is kind of fucking stupid to do, but you could do that if you want to do it. Or you can have your online trainer do it, which is also fucking stupid to do, but you can do that if you want to do it. Or you can have your own physician look at it, which probably isn't going to go really well because most of the time they're going to blame everything that you do on test anyhow. Or you can use their guided optimization. <laughs> and then through the guided optimization process, they can go over with you what your goals, what your objectives are, what you're looking for, and then put together a blood panel to help diagnose and determine where your strengths, weaknesses are, put together a plan with over-the-counter supplements and prescription supplements to be able to optimize your hormone and increase longevity, preventative medicine, or whatever you want to do. Or if you want to drink 20 to 40 beers and still train at a very high level there we go. And, and know exactly how fucked up your liver is actually getting or not, they can be able to help with that because they're not going to stereotype and say, hey, don't drink 40 beers. Yeah. They're going to say, might want to drink 40 beers, but take these supplements that might be able to help or optimize the training goals. Again, that's MerrickHealth.com backslash Table Talk. My guest today is Tom Huck Finn. The, um, there's a lot of bio here that I think that people miss, right, because you're – you're known for stunts and stuff like that, but there's like 10 years of powerlifting experience. Oh, yeah. Where yeah. You just reach one crazy son of a bitch. Yeah, which you've been waiting to say. Yes. But anyhow, <laughs> the best total of, you know, 20, 28 at 220, but, and there's, again, when I went and looked it up, I, I, I knew what your lifts were, you know, I, and I know the 500, you've, you've benched 500 pounds raw, you've benched it in the back of a truck with it on fire, oh, yeah. you've benched it um, with a beer bong, you've yes. benched it. Um, in the fucking cold in the outside, right? Yeah, yeah. I benched it in a courtyard with C.T. Fletcher. I benched it um, yeah, on fire, beer bongs. I benched it on a platform several times. Um, I don't even know. I benched it. You've benched a lot of I benched it ways. going through. Oh, no, that was a 500 pounds. That was uh, like 225. Well, I benched it going through a Taco Bell drive through but that was only 225 for reps. And I ordered yeah. a number four with a, with a Baja Blast. Um, yeah. So you, you, you benched it in one way or another for about a decade, mm -hmm, correct. you know, which is the longevity. So we'll talk a little bit about training. We'll talk a little bit about stunts. We're going to talk a little bit about obviously beer because that's what you're into. Oh, yeah. I don't drink beer cause I hate the taste of it. So I'm going to have you try to sell me on why I should drink beer, which would be an interesting thing. <laughs> um, and there's a background in football, yep. you know, there's a background of cutting your fingers off. There's all these <laughs> other things. So um, both pec tendons off. Yeah. Both pec tendons. So as I was going through some of the past podcasts, you get asked the same things over and over and over. So some of those things we're going to talk about, but I'm going to go a little bit different direction on them because you're probably sick of being asked the same things over yeah. and over and over. Right, right, it kind right. It gets repetitive and boring. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to skip through the whole football era. Okay. Right? So same story as what most of meatheads mm -hmm. have. Like we're not the most studious people so then we kind of like fine training but we do pretty well in sports and you know that gets you to a certain point but I do have a question with the football which is something that's interesting to me is how people fall into powerlifting and individual sports is <clears throat> most fall into it because they're just trying to find their place where they fit because we're all fucking oddballs to a certain degree mm -hmm. 
Football is a little different, right? Because you got to work in this team environment. So you could be the person that's working harder than everybody else, but feel like you're getting shortchanged because nobody else is working as hard. So you're like, screw that. I'd rather just wrestle or do yeah. powerlifting. Um, what was your experience with that, with the football side? Did you ever feel like you fit as much as what you feel like if you fit in, say, powerlifting? Oh, football. I mean, I fit in perfectly. I love football. Just hurting other people was what I liked. Mm -hmm. So every time I had a chance to hurt somebody, I mean, I didn't give a fuck if we're losing, we're winning, whatever. I just wanted to hit somebody. Yeah. So, I mean, I must have, I went through my senior year, probably three or four football helmets. I popped them, you know, So I led with my head all the time. What position you play? Outside linebacker and fullback. I played okay. both ways. And so you, uh, you, liked, captain. You, you liked outside linebacker loved more, it. I guess. Loved it. And, and, and when I was running the ball, I would look for contact. I wouldn't look, you know, to find a hole. I looked for contact. That's what my coach said. I was, yeah. It was just dumb. I'd look for contact. That's what he told my dad, you know. Pappy he said he always looks for contact. He can just run, you know, find a hole. There's a hole there, but he went and looked for contact. Yeah. So I just loved to hit people. Mm -hmm. And now that was, that was everything, you know. Through high school, I played defensive end for a while, and that was before it was a drop back. But well, at least on the team I was, it wasn't a drop back position. It was contained. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I fucking love more than anything else is, uh, yes, you like the sack, but what I liked more than the sack was like right after the quarterback released, yeah. wham! Yeah, you know, like to fucking knock their helmet yeah, off I know and shit, it. which you can't do it's anymore. Best. Yeah, I know. You can't do anything anymore. <laughs> you can't, but that was like the best fucking thing. Oh, that, world. and I love crackbacks too. Like when you're, they, you know, they'd flank you out and you come back and the defense ends looking the other way and then he turns around because the ball's getting pitched to the right and I'm coming in as hard as I can, man, fucking... You know, right into his head. I love that, but that's illegal now too. Yeah, like I mean, all the guy's not looking, and then you hit him like as fast as you can. Like all the punches. Oh you god, it was so good. You know, or somebody, a running back, a receiver coming across the middle, and he doesn't see, and you see, man, those are those are the best hits ever. Yeah, and that's all gone now. Uh huh. You know, because I guess of concussions. I don't know. I mean, I've been hit in the head so many times. I had numerous concussions when I played. Uh -huh. They weren't like diagnosed. You know, I wouldn't know where I was at. A fucking helmet would be. I'd look out my ear hole because the helmet would be popped. Uh -huh. You know, I'd play a whole half like that. And I say, hey, coach, my helmet's popped. It's just wiggling around. Like, it almost look out my ear hole. Yeah. And they would switch helmets out, you know, get back in. It's no big deal. And uh, you black out all the time every time I lay with my head because it was a harder hit. Yeah. That, that motherfucker, yeah. you could hear that pop in the stands. You know, that was the big ooze when you, when you, yeah. when you hit him with your helmet. So, yeah, that was all legal then, like, you know, 2000 and everything. Yeah. That's all gone now. Yeah. I was, they I ruined was, football. Yeah. I, mean, I'm, I was earlier than that. So, I was in, the, like, 80, what was it, like, 85. And the, the first game I played is – it's like a freshman starting as a senior, yeah. whatever it was. Um, like yourself, I was I got strong fast, right? right? Yeah. So it's it, it was kind of fucking awesome. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> it's I know. Great. You're like as strong yeah. as – you're stronger than the seniors. You know, that's oh, how yeah. I was yeah, when I'm I was a sophomore. Fucking killing people. Yeah. And the, the first game I played, I got hit so many fucking times because it's a different level. Your skill isn't there, yeah. but you're strong. Right. So you're just getting all fucked up. And my parents are taking me home, and I'm sitting in the back seat – I'm laying in the back seat, and I'm like, I'm like shaking and shit. I'm like, I don't know why the fuck I'm shaking. And I'm like, this can't be a good thing. Yeah. You know, and, right. and my fucking mom and dad, like, they, they go into a party for like two hours. <laughs> like, they just leave me in the back of the fucking car. Yeah, here's a bag God. of chips. And I'm like, <laughs> like, and my dad's like, ah, man, it's just, what did he call that? It was, um, um, just get your egg scrambler. Yeah, something. some shit like that. Yeah. It's like whatever it was, like just normal. It's just yeah, a normal deal. Normal. I'm like, fuck it. All right. Yeah. You know, it never happened again. But right, right, right. Yeah. It was a different, different time with that. Oh, yeah. The um, coaches would always send you back in. They didn't give a shit, you know? Yeah. Because you had to prove you're tough. Yeah. I mean, if I ever laid on the ground for anything, I mean, my leg had to have been ripped off my body to, for me to lay on the ground. I didn't want to show weakness yeah. and never show weakness. Yeah. My old man, he would have killed me if I laid on that ground. And I wasn't hurt, but my legs wasn't broken. Man, you better call out that fucking field. Because yeah. I'm not showing weakness to the other team. Fuck those guys. Well, it wasn't for for me, it wasn't just my it wasn't just my dad. You know, it was like the fucking coaches. Oh, too. The, oh yeah, you not scared of the coaches the as well. In the stands and shit. It's yeah, like, yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. Give me your bell rung. That's yeah, right. yeah, I got your my bell, bell rung. I got bell my rung bell rung. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's still fucking ringing, dude. Mm -hmm. And um, it's ringing until the next day. Yeah, and it's like you it's like fuck it. I just you go back, you know, yeah. and it's and I, maybe that's why I'm so fucked up now from all this here. stuff and powerlifting and yeah. everything. And our heads are fucked up, too. With your, your finger was kind of a part of all this because you, you fucking tore your... Yeah, this one. Cut yeah, that one. Right. That looks like it's got a condom on it, dude. It does. See, it's got a, that nail. That's a nail? That's a nail right there. So it doesn't... That's, that's a condom. No, that's a nail. That's... Cut it. I can't. It's like a horseshoe. If I have to like grind it down. 
usually I get drunk and I'll get caught on something and flick off. Yeah. You know? And then it'll be gone, and then it'll grow back all the way. It'll curl up over the finger, you know? That looks like a condom. You got a fucking dick finger. Yeah, I got a dick for a finger and a finger <laughs> for a dick. You know, and uh, double overhand deadlifts, a lot of times when I, yeah, when I drop yeah. it, it would hit that nail and fly off, yeah. so I'd lose it that way a lot. But, uh, yeah, I cut that off in college, and uh, they, they reattached it, right? Yeah. And then I, I went home, and uh, it turned black, so I thought it had gangrene. Show that to the camera, like, if you can. Yeah. It's a condom, I'm telling you. All right, anyhow, go ahead. So you so, turn green. So yeah, so it's like black, and I'm like, I think, it's got, I think I could gain green. So I go to the emergency room, and they're going to cut my finger off and stuff. They think, you know, I gain green, I guess. I don't know. And a specialist came in. He looked at it said, no, it's just not circulating properly. It'll be fine. Give it a couple of days. So I'll give it a couple of days. You know, it's not getting any better. But I didn't go back to the doctor. So about two, two months down the road, it, was get, it started getting hard, the tip was, because it got cut off down to the knuckle. Mm -hmm. So part of it grew back and part of it didn't. So the other part got hard and black, kept getting harder and blacker. And then I hit it on a, a lat pull-down machine. Like, I don't know, for some reason I was doing a one-arm lat pull-down machine. And I had my hand on the bar and the stack went up. I hit that yeah. finger, yeah, shot that. like 20 feet across the room, and it started bleeding everywhere. I picked that finger up, put it in my pocket, and I finished my workout. And that was like at my hometown gym. Yeah. You know, and I took it home and I gave it to my dad and he put it in a shot glass and he put it uh, where all my trophies are uh, from high school and stuff, out, you know, in the, yeah. in the, we call it the dungeon where I used to train mm -hmm. at over there. And uh, it's still there to this day. See, that, that's the question I had. It wasn't about the finger. The question I wanted to get to is like, why do you still have it today? So and we, like you drink to it. Yes. Shit. So we drink every Thanksgiving. My dad brings it over or we go over there. Right. And we drink a shot of wild turkey out of every year. And last year, my dad s almost swallowed it. It got caught in his throat. He coughed it up. And, no, and wait, wait, wait. You put the fucking you, – it's in the glass that you're shooting? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so we shoot with the wild turkey. Is, the finger's in the wild turkey every Thanksgiving, and we take a shot of it. Because Thanksgiving was about the time when I cut it off. So – and we've been doing that. I mean, that's been fucked now. That's 20 still, years. All, all you're doing right now is – all you're doing is telling me the process, but you still haven't said why. Oh, why? I, <laughs> I don't know why. I, I absolutely don't know why. I think one day we – we were drinking, and I said... Well, you kept it for a fucking reason. We kept it for a souvenir. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's a souvenir. It's my finger, you know? Yeah. And it still, you know, it looks the same. It's all black and rotted, and it's like the tip. It looks funny, and it's sitting in a shot glass. So that following Thanksgiving, you're just like, hey, yeah. we ought to just... Because it was in a shot glass to begin with. Yeah, we ought to put the shit in the finger. Let's put it to use. Yeah, and then drink the finger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a shot. Yeah. So yeah. how are you not swallowing the finger for how many years now? Well, you have, you have like your teeth block it, you know what I mean? Not when you take a shot. Well, you can't. Like, my dad threw it down. That's when it got caught in his <laughs> yeah, throat. He caught yeah. it back up. So you're sipping the finger. Yeah, kind of sipping the finger, I, I would say. It's not as fast as, like, a, a typical shot, but it's. So it's a finger shot. It's a finger shot. All right, so yeah. it's a different thing. See, this is what I wasn't understanding yeah, when I'm. It's a finger shot. When I, see, I, listen, I think of things differently, mm -hmm. right? So I'm hearing these stories. I'm like, how are you not swallowing the finger, right? Yeah, it, it's tough. You know, and or or I'm thinking drinking to the finger, like here's the finger on this little altar. Oh no, yeah, here's to the finger. Oh, the cheers to the yeah. finger. I'm like, cheers to the lost stupid, finger. Stupid. No, man. no, we take a shot with the finger in it. No, that makes kind of a little bit more sense. Right, right. Yeah. Not, not really. I should have brought the finger to the shot. We could have a shot with it. Yeah. Maybe next no. time I show up. So it's a, it's a finger shot. It's a it's a finger shot. So yeah. you can create a new thing. A finger shot. Yeah, the finger shot. Everybody wants a shot of the finger. Yeah. I mean, come on. All right, so now didn't you fuck up the other one too? Yeah, so I was uh, I was deadlifting. I wanted to attempt a 500-pound deadlift on a Stairmaster for these guys. These, these firefighters wanted me to do a video for them for like 9-11 or something. So I, I was like, well, I don't know what to do, you know, and I wanted to think of something. So I'm like, well, they walk upstairs and, you know, you have those weight. Maybe I'll deadlift on a Stairmaster. It's a funny video. So I got these two kids that were probably, I don't know, just out of high school. And this was at like a La Fitness, LA yeah, Fitness. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, so I go in there and I tell these kids, hey, load up the weight at the same time. We'll work all the way up to 500 pounds. Go 135. Two, and I, every, after every step, I'll take it up real quick. Right? So I think I got it up to, I think it was four or 500 pounds towards the top. And I realized I can't do it. I can't walk and then do a deadlift at the same time on a Stairmaster. It's like impossible. So I got Yeah, I'm kind of thinking that to begin with. Like how's the bar go in it, right? Because it's it's got the railings that you know what I mean? The railings yeah. where you where you hold on to. The bar is inside that railing. Yeah. And they're loading the plates up on the side. But isn't the bar lower than the step? No, not lower than the step. It's higher than the step. 
The bar's higher than the step. Yeah, yeah, the bars are higher. I can't fully stand with it. Pretty yeah, much okay. I can, I yeah, thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then the back railing, once yeah. it got to like four or 500 pounds, I couldn't do it, and it was too late, and I fucking like, I, I, I tore my hamstring in half. It straightened out, and then my finger got pinched in between the barbell and the back railing, and it split it. I mean, filleted it wide open to the bone. And I looked down, there's blood everywhere. I'm like, fuck. And I just walked out. I mean, a trail of blood all the mm-hmm. way out the door. I got in my truck. I drove home. I called my wife. I said, uh, can you bring out the insurance card? She's like, what the fuck did you do this time? I just cut my finger off again. My other one. What? Okay. I drive home. She's got just shaking her head, got the insurance card, gives it to me. I drive myself to the emergency room. They sewed it back together. And that one actually took, and everything's fine. At this point, I would think you would carry your medical files around like fucking the dude in Roadhouse. Right, yeah. I should. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just walk in with a file. Yeah, yeah, say, yeah, yeah. Here you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I should have been. I don't know. I, I wasn't thinking. But, yeah, that was uh, – yeah, so I had to cut off both pinkies, right? At, yeah. At, at one time, I had both pinkies cut off. I had both pec tenets, um, you know, fully detached. Yeah. Um, and, a, and a big hole in my hamstring. I mean, it's there. I mean, it's like a, somebody put a fist, like a crater through it. Yeah. My right hamstring. And how that one happened? That was the same time I cut that finger off. So, ah. And I didn't know it was that bad at the time. I knew it hurt a lot, but it, my finger was hurting more. Now, were you able to film the injury? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Okay. From like, I don't know how long it's been, probably four or five years ago, yeah, maybe. Yeah, because I would have to it was. It's on YouTube somewhere on my page. Those views have to be better than some of the other ones. Like, oh, the, yeah. The, I mean, real that's, injury yeah, that, that's... The probably the most well besides these couple new videos I've been doing about your your buddy the Liver King. Besides well, actually, that, actually, you know that, that's kind of funny because we'll talk about that because you your your liver's got to be worse than his. That's so. what I that's was all well, you know what that's what I imagined before the truth came out. Yeah, so now yeah. we don't know. Yeah, right, right, yeah. But you know, <laughs> yeah, the real truth. Yeah, like one cc is not gonna fuck up his liver. Yeah, yeah, half a half a cc. Yeah, he he claimed to be the Liver King, and that was a, all I heard was Liver King. I didn't really know him at all, but I was like, that's a that's my name. I'm the real liver king, you know, because I drink all, I lift all yeah. this crap. So it was all kind of a joke. And then I he eat testicles, so I thought that was a funny saying when I got my shirt here. You know, real alphas don't eat testicles. They eat pussy, yeah. right? And everybody loved it. Like, that's the greatest saying ever. So I'm like, well, fuck it, put it on a shirt. And that shirt's probably sold. We might sold more of these shirts than any other shirt we ever made. Really? I mean, they're, really? And especially since liver king lied or whatever. Yeah. This is the greatest thing that happened to my company. I made more money in the past week than shit we made the whole year, probably. I well, mean, not combined, but they, this week more than any other week the whole year. Did they did they ever release his blood work? Because I thought I watched part of the, yeah, I, the I first video. Because if they release his blood work, Isn't and that then like you can compare illegal? liver enzymes. Oh yeah. Then who's the yeah, real liver yeah. king now, huh? Yeah, well, that's what I'm right? saying. You yeah. Know, yeah. If I can out bench you, I can out squat you, and out deadlift you. Then yeah. who's and out yeah. drink you? Yeah. Then who's the real liver yeah. king now? Yeah. I that's mean, perfect. is it? No, it's not legal, right? Is it? No. And at the same time, is it cool for a coach to say, "Hey, look, here's the email." I know. Yeah, that's me. kind of There's bullshit. Like a whole other fucked that's up so part. weird. <laughs> but yeah, that was hilarious. And uh, yeah, I knew it was time to strike. Like, uh, liver king's name is everywhere. I'm like, oh, I gotta, you know, we gotta restock this shirt. Mm-hmm. You know what's? And then, man, it's fucking. Like my even like Instagram has changed a lot too, right? Uh, they had like I don't know who who was running it before, whatever the deal was. I built a big following up, and then all of a sudden, like my videos aren't getting seen as much. I'm not gaining new followers. I mean, this is for like a couple of years, mm-hmm. and then I think Instagram went to court or something happened, and they changed the algorithm or something. This is within the last six months, and now my videos are getting seen more. My followers are going up constantly again. On, on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, in the last three days, I've probably gained four or 5,000 followers, which I've never gained that many followers since, I, since you know, when it was good. Instagram yeah. was better. Yeah. So, and, and the reels get shown more, even though I get demonetized. I don't make money off it because I wear a shirt that says fuck on it. They demonetize you, you know. So Because you wore a shirt that said fuck on it, they demonetize Yeah, I had a shirt that said, you know, uh, the only thing I like better than benching is fucking. Is, is there any <laughs> – well, is, is, there, is there any way to, to be – is that forever? No, they said I can, uh, like, it's per month. So they'll let me in again next month. Oh, okay. So it was just recently that they pulled it down. The, they yeah, yeah. They, they demonetized me, I think, two or three times in the past year. Yeah. All right. Which, All right. whatever. No, I mean, no, they don't make too much they, money off it. Just out of curiosity, when they turn it back on again, mm-hmm. are you at the same? It's, it's hard to determine what they're bonusing, right? Right. Do you think you're at the same bonus level that you were? Man, it's hard to tell. I don't think so. I don't. Who knows? You know, I, 
I had a video get like four million views uh, like le- two months ago. Yeah. And I literally made like two hundred dollars off of it. Well, part of it is when it goes out too. You know, because oh, yeah. you have that pay period. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. So you want to hit at the beginning of the right. pay period. Well, this hit at the beginning, and it, I mean, it had over a million views within yeah, a couple yeah. days. So they always, I don't know, I don't know how that that works, really. But I mean, it should pay a lot more than that, I would think. Yeah. Because you know, if you have that many views on YouTube, that's a ton more money. Well, that's yeah, that's completely different. Yeah. Well, YouTube Reels is a good thing too. Yeah. So I gain. You know, I don't do YouTube that much because I'm an idiot. You know, you got to have some guy that's like a nerd that really knows how to do it. So I don't know how to do it, and I try to throw stuff together. You know, you can't film yourself. It's just – it's hard. And uh, anyways, I had maybe 10, 11, 12,000 followers on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And uh, just doing YouTube Reels, I gained like 12,000 followers in a month. So that's good, too. Like YouTube Reels, I think they're all trying to copy that Tic Tac, you know, because everybody was watching that. Now we got to get something similar to their site. So Instagram went to Reels. Mm-hmm. YouTube went to fucking shorts, shorts or whatever yeah. that is. And, and that helps helps bring more followers in, you know, and all that. So Yeah. Yeah. So the, so, so the, the you mind if I grab another beer? No. I've, I assume that you're going to have like 40 of them yeah. before you're fucking done, right? Cheers, guys. It's all it's all good for me. I got a beer and, and food next to me, my cooler. Yeah. The um, it, so, <laughs> God, I forgot where we were at because I'm kind of walking through a timeline here. Oh yeah, I got uh, I, I got off track. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. The um, the the powerlifting started kind of during actually before that, like interspersed between. So the first meet that I saw was, it seemed late to your story. It was like 2013. It seemed like there were meets before that. Well, my first. High school shit or something. Yeah. My dad in eighth grade took the, you know, table out of the living room, coffee table, Mm -hmm. put a bench in there, and we benched every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at full practice. You know, he'd be drinking Pabst with Ribbon. I'd be bench pressing, and that's how I started, you know. And he'd just say, build the chest, fuck the rest. That was his motto, you know. He had a huge chest, my, my old man did. And he loved bench pressing. So, and, you know, that's how I started becoming a good bench presser. Yeah. And then, you know, I went to high school, started training at the high school um, every day. I remember my numbers. My first, when I was a freshman, I benched 235. And then, because uh, they'd have a big lift-a-thon every year there. they call it, and, like, the whole school would be there. It'd be center court, you know, and, and the stands would be filled. So it was, like, a big, big thing every year. And I won it um, as a sophomore. I think I benched 335. And that was more than any of the seniors. Mm-hmm. So they're all pissed, you know. And I was, I was out, and I was, I probably weighed then, geez, I don't know, 170. I, I don't know. I think because when mm-hmm. I was a senior, yeah. I probably weighed about 190 or 200, yeah. somewhere in that range. And then I benched over 400. I benched four plates in high school at the lift on 405. And then I competed my first time when I was like 17 uh, at Ernie Franz's gym. Yeah. And I had no idea what I was doing. Um, everybody was wearing suits because this was ni- 1999 or 2000. Yeah, yeah. And I'd never, I'd never seen suits before. They made me wear a wrestling singlet. So I saw these guys walking around, you know, with their arms yeah. out, and I'm like, I didn't know what it was. And I, I remember seeing this one guy. He's a fucking monster, and he, he was going to bench press a lot. I don't know what, 800 pounds or something. Yeah. And he started fucking slamming his head against the bar, and he started squirting blood out everywhere. And I'm like, man, I fucking love this sport, you know? And – uh yeah, that, and I'll never forget that. And I met Ernie Franz for the first time then. And I later on, I had met him. I hung out with Ernie a lot later yeah. on in his life. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was awesome to meet Ernie and then and go to his gym in Aurora, which somehow got burned down. Yeah. I don't know what the whole story was behind that. Um, Ernie was awesome. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I went to college and I cut my finger off. And well, let's go back to the benching in high school. How much did you bench be, w- before leaving high school? Four oh five. So four five. I benched four plates at the liftathon. Yeah. Yeah, that was my best bench in high school. All right. And that was and at then, probably 190. And then you end up at, in France's, right? I mean, w- was that just an acquaintance relationship at the time, or were you training there? No, no, no. It was way too far away for me. Uh, I lived, like, out in the country, probably 40 miles from there. I mean, yeah. when I was in high school, I couldn't go there. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I just met him that. That was the first time I ever met him. Um, and then, like, yeah, like I said, I didn't meet him again until probably fast forward when I'm, like, 30. You know, and then, then we hung out a ton. He used to come to that gym we used to train at with everybody, the Little Bridges and all those people. Um, and I trained – I remember training on his 80th birthday. I think it was 80th or 81st birthday. It's on my YouTube. 
we deadlifted together, and that motherfucker was deadlifting like I don't know what it was, four hundred pounds or no, something. That was respectable for eighty fucking years old. Yeah, I mean, just the fact he was eighty was yeah, respectable. He, his arm didn't work very good, so he yeah. tied it to the bar. I mean, it was it was awesome. I, I yeah. played that George Jones song, "I Don't Need Your Rocking Chair," <laughs> and it just gave me chills just watching him deadlift at eighty some years yeah. old. You know, and uh, yeah, he's he was awesome, man. Yeah. When so the bench at four hundred five in high school, then you're you're bouncing around playing ball at different schools. Mm-hmm. Um, at what point did your bench start to – because how am I trying to ask this? The, my bench through high school – I benched 500 before leaving high school, and it was, say, 240 or whatever right. it's going to be. But then, like, 12 years, 15 years after that, I'm looking back, like, what the fuck? Like, why is my bench now just 520? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? So at what point did it start to slow down, and then you had to realize, I can't just randomly just be doing sh- shit? Pro- probably when I – came back and realized I was trying to transfer into another school and uh, Northern Illinois University to play football. And the head recruiter was a good friend of mine. He called me and said, uh, I was playing Madden football, drinking a beer with one of my buddies. And he said, yeah, we're not going to, your grades are bad. I was going to community college then, went back there and said, you know, we're not going to get you in. We're not, we can't get you in in the spring and, and it's not looking good and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I'm like, well, I'm done. I'm not going back to school. Fuck this. Yeah. The only reason I was going to school is to play football. So then, you know, I fucking found a job, and uh, and then, uh, you know, I, I trained constantly because that reminded me of football. Yeah. So just with the group of guys training, and it's still to this day, it's kind of what it reminds me of. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it would grow a little bit, but, you know, it would be stagnant. But I was benching, you know, always somewhere in the 400s or close so to So you pulled up, pounds. like, mid-400 before you had to really stop. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Wait a minute. And I, I wasn't there. even thinking, you know, where I trained at, too, was like a local gym. For a while, for quite a long time, um, I didn't realize how strong I was or anything. Yeah. I knew I was like the strongest guy in that gym, yeah. But I didn't know how strong I was until uh, until probably when I was about thirty, because I man, I was wild and crazy. I was doing, you know, I was drinking, and then I just got settled down, met my wife, um, you know, and and when when that happens, you settle down a little more. But yeah. then I really got settled down when I had a, my first kid. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I can't go out drinking and being fucking nuts all the time. I got, I got to be responsible a little so bit. So you got to stay home and drink so, and go nuts. Exactly. That's why we <laughs> built a bar in the house. It's <laughs> yeah. perfect. So then I'm like, well, I got to really, I can really turn my focus on to just training because yeah. I can't go to the bar. I can't do. I go to the gym, and that will be my only time I get out. So I'm just gonna start fucking focusing on, on training solely. Yeah. And that's it. And uh, I was training with a guy. Um, God, his name is uh, Craig Turkowski. Oh, Have yeah. you ever heard of him? Oh yeah. So I met him. I was squatting like 700 pounds at a, at a like a, I don't know what kind of gym it was. It was like a local gym. Yeah. And this is after I had moved. It was like near Juliet, Illinois. And he saw me, and he, he comes over and said, if you're going to train like that, you're training with me. Be here Saturday morning. I said, all right. I don't know who the fuck this guy is. Yeah, yeah. So I started training with him and his crew there. And he's like, man, how come you're not competing? I said, I don't know. I never thought. I never thought about competing. He's like, you could be like one of those, you know, best in the world if you ever go compete. I'm like, yeah, maybe, maybe down the road or something. And uh and then after that I trained with him for a while and then I I, I my first meet ever, I don't know what I totaled like eighteen hundred pounds, had no clue what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Um and then my and then the Lillibridge uh Ernie Senior told one of my buddies, Hey, have him start training with us on, you know, Thursdays or whatever day they mm-hmm. were benching and squatting on Saturdays or something. Mm-hmm. So then I started training those guys, right? And um then, then my second meet, I, I think it was a second meet, I told 2028. 20, yeah. You know, and that at the time, I think it was like top five in that weight class. And uh, again, I still didn't really know what I was doing. Um, you know, just, I just like benching. I didn't even like, I mean, I, I like squatting and, and deadlifting. I think I squatted over, but it had to have been, I think I squatted 800 pounds in that meet. Yeah. And pulled seven something, maybe. But your training was way more structured. Than oh, yeah. Before. Way more yeah, structured yeah, because yeah. these guys, they kind of knew what they're doing a little more than I did, yeah. you know. And then I met Ernie and Ernie, mm-hmm. uh, Ernie Senior and Ernie uh, Franz, you know, and then Ed Cohen mm-hmm. and, and all these guys, and they had helped me too. And then you know I've seen how they train, how they're working their numbers, how they're fucking peaking for meets, you know, and and, and all that. So I and then I've, I've been around so many. And then Craig, he taught me a ton. Mm-hmm. It's just every all the older guys, you know, you meet and you just gain so much knowledge from those guys. Yeah. So the 
what I'm trying to put out there to the people that are listening is even if you have really good genetics, genetics and hard work will get you so far. Right. Yeah. But then it's like you're just beating your head against the wall oh, yeah. literally. Then you got to learn more. Yeah. But you just need to still work hard. Exactly. And you still have all the other yeah, things. Yeah, and I'm stupid, so it's hard yeah, for me to learn. Yeah, yeah. So it takes me quite a long time to learn. No, but putting you in a group of people that are basically oh, yeah. just do what they're doing. Exactly. You know, then they tailor it a little bit uh-huh. to what you're doing. That's exactly what we crew. do. Yeah. Then, bam, you know, there it goes. It takes off. Well, yeah, and I've never worked. Hell, where I lived, I mean, there was nobody stronger than me in that area. So I was not used to lifting with people that are actually stronger than me. You know, like yeah. Eric Lillibridge at the time and, and Derek Kendall. Yeah. I mean, those guys were, were fucking monsters. They were squatting 1,000 pounds yeah. and raw. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was squatting with them on, on Saturdays and, uh, you know, bench with them on Wednesdays or Thursdays. And the only thing I keep up with them was was bench. You yeah, know, I couldn't keep up with it. I mean, the squad, they're squatting 1,000 pounds. At the time, that was, like, unheard of. Yeah. Nobody had squatted 1,000 raw yet at that time. So, you know, it was just great, great atmosphere. I mean, it was fucking and – and, and it was in, like, a really hardcore gym. It wasn't some fucking law fitness. Yeah. You know, we're, we're in a, a cement area with fucking blood and shit on the ground and everything else. I mean, it was great. Jacked hardcore mm-hmm. we started at. And uh, then a, another guy bought another gym, Barbell Central, and that's when it kind of – Got out of hand. Yeah. I mean, it was wild there. We had a lot of good lifters there. Um, and then the guy never paid his bills, and it kind of went downhill. But for about two years there, man, that gym was the best gym I've ever been a part of. You know? yeah, well, when you say wild, give me an example of one of the wild we, situations. Like me and Juju Mufu lit the gym on fire. Lit the gym on fire. <laughs> we lit the gym on fire. Like we, we made a finish line. We had, a, we had a little meet and greet there. And we, uh, there was a circus guy there, a guy that worked in the circus. He said he can light these rags on fire and make it a finish line. We'll do a horse race. So we put 225 pounds above our head, and we ran, and the finish line was like 30 foot long, and it was lit on fire about five foot high. Well, in the gym. In the, in the gym. gym. Okay. And we couldn't get the fucking fire out. We had fire extinguishers, everything. I mean, it was crazy. So like shit like that, um, you know, I ran through a Red Bull machine there. Uh, that was a big video of mine that went viral where uh, I, I lined up like 20 yards away and put my shoulder into Red Bull. It split. It flew open. I mean, that thing's been everywhere. It's on ridiculousness. It's been on. I mean, it's all over the internet. Yeah. Um, and that was the owner of the gym's machine. It wasn't. It wasn't like Red Bulls. I'm like, I was, hey, I was like, I'm, I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> was, I don't, I, I, my dad's a television repairman. He could fix it. I yeah. guarantee he could fix it. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it was a great gym. I mean, I, I, and then all the hardcore lifting that was done there too. You know. Yeah. Well, that. What? Give me some stories of that because that's what I know it for more than yeah. the other stuff. Well, uh, anytime I did, like, say, like, a dumb video was, was always after we trained. You know, yeah. I never went to the gym to, like, do a, a video. That's what, like, back, like, uh, people would think, this guy, what, did you just go to the gym and act like an idiot? Mm-hmm. But I can't bench, I can't lift like this if I went to the gym just act like an idiot all the time, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, like, the hardcore, uh, like, just people, you know, like I said before, people that were uh, – we had a group, like two monoliths, you know, guys that could squat over, like, a, you know, seven, 800 pounds on this monolith, everybody on this monolith that was below that, and then the women on the other monolith. Um, I mean, it, the place would be packed, too. With, with a, Everybody, there must have been eight to ten guys there that were probably top five in, in, in yeah. their weight class. Yeah. I mean, those are the kind of people you got to be around to get stronger, to get better, you know. Um, people just bleeding out of their eyes, bleeding out of their nose. Um, I mean, I shit my pants there twice. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember one of the heaviest pulls I ever pulled was close to 800 pounds, and I remember getting it to my knees, and I, I started shitting, and I knew I was shitting. Uh, it felt like it felt like soft serve ice cream coming out, <laughs> and, and I, I'm not going to drop it if I'm shitting my pants. I didn't care. Pulled through it, dropped the weight. I said, I shit my pants. I went to the bathroom. I dropped my pants, and, and I didn't see any shit in my pants. I'm like, this is fucking physically impossible. Well, my butt cheeks are so big, and they were so clenched, all of it was in there. <laughs> So I cleaned myself up, and I went right back in the gym and, and then finished my workout, you know. <laughs> no, just shit like that. And then I'd go to prison after that, you know. Like, yeah. I'd train. At the time, I was working third shift. So I'd train. I don't know. We'd train from, like, you know, 6 or 5 o'clock to, like, you know, 9 at night. And then I'd go right from there an hour and a half all the way to a maximum security prison, work all night, and do it all over again the next day. So and that, was, that ran, I mean, that, that crew, right, that – it was a few years, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd say at least four or five years. And it's just from a powerlifting standpoint, you know, when you have crews like that, there's always fucking stupid drama. Oh, right? God, yeah. Yeah, so how, um, how did that unfold? Like, how did you guys deal with that? Like, if it would start to bubble up, was it just one of those 
I mean, we're talking Chicago. It's it's a little bit different than it, that gym we're training at was in Aurora, and it that was a bad neighborhood too. That's, I mean, really yeah, bad. Yeah. I mean, there were shootings. You hear gunshots yeah. outside. We're training there at night a lot too. Yeah. Uh, gyms closed except for us. Our you know, ten of us are in there training. Um, ton. I mean, there's drama with some of the other people. Uh, you know, I always stayed out of it. Yeah. Like between like you know boyfriend girlfriend all that bullshit that started happening. Uh, I don't know. I mean. I just got would come in there train like a motherfucker in the, in the you know yeah. go to prison. Well, I think a big part of that keeps you out of it was you had to get to work. Yeah, oh yeah, that's you know, very work. true. I'm like, hey, we got to get going. I got to go to work. Yeah, I remember taking off work early just to come bench with them sometimes. Yeah, and those guys wouldn't start training sometimes till nine at night too on bench night. I'm like, I can't, and then get done at two in the morning, and my wife would be like, "What the fuck, you at?" I said, "We just got done working out." What do you mean you got done working out? It's two a.m. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, this is little bridge time. This is how, yeah, this yeah. Is how they did it. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. They, they show up about nine thirty, ten o'clock. You know, and get the stuff going, and, and then we'd start benching. Oh, and I it would take like four it hours. That late. Oh, it was man. I I remember coming home two, three in the morning, and I get there at nine. They're starting. At, you're starting at ten. Yeah, wow. they start at ten at night. Well, that works for you. I mean, being third shift, that worked really good for you. No, no. Well, well, I guess no. Well, that, it depends on what shift that was on. Yeah. Right. And and sometimes when I was on, uh, I think I was on second shift then. I was on, I, I I get bounced around a lot too. Yeah, yeah. But I'd have to I'd take off work early and then go train with them, and I'd take off at like lunch, say eight o'clock or yeah, whatever yeah, it was. Yeah. And then go train, and then I wouldn't show up till like two in the morning at home. So it's just, <laughs> I mean, it, it was great to train there, but man, there are some long hours. Mm-hmm. What were some of the training things that you took away from that crew that you still use now? Obviously, the rest periods, you've shortened those. But. Oh, yeah. I mean, they had super long rest periods. Um, just how they uh, how they would peak, how, we'd, you know, these guys would train to peak for a meet. Um, just the numbers, what they'd hit, you know, work backwards from whatever, you know. Just some of their training protocols, um, how uh, how to set up in certain positions, like how, like on a deadlift or, or the bench. Um what do you mean? Just different cues, you like know. For the deadlift, give me an example. Like how to how to brace yourself with your belt and all that. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd come in there and I would just pick shit up. You know, I, mm-hmm. it's kind of nuts. And he taught me how to deadlift better. Um, when you, how would you explain how you ex- brace with the belt? Uh, like you're taking a shit. You know, pretty <laughs> yeah. much. Putting which that is how you, under. which actually you did. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> yeah, your coach, you told me the shit. You know. Um, you know, and then like uh, how to get really tight on the bench. Um, and what what are some things that you think about there that care? Like if you were to explain what that means to somebody that has no clue. So pushing my knees out, getting real tight with your legs, driving back into your uh, traps. You know how I set up, how I, I press against that bar real tight, um, grip the bar. You know, bend it in half, all that bullshit. Um, just like a whole body movement instead of just using my chest. Was there anything with the bench or any cue that somebody told you at one time that after you did it, you were like, holy shit. Like, yeah. You know, it was a big difference. What was that? That was probably uh, – uh, it would probably be the way my shoulders set back because they were not as back before. Like like th- like uh, how – how you finish here, mm-hmm. instead of your shoulders a little forward, that's like three inches, you know? Mm-hmm. That's three inches less you have to travel. Yeah. You know, so when I was younger, I didn't know that, you know, and then I, I got taught that, you know, what, 10 years ago or something. Yeah. So I've, I've always, you know, really gotten back on my traps, really, you know, s- squeeze them together, shoulder blades together and all that. Yeah. Shorten that range of motion up more. Um, and then uh, Ed Cohen taught me that big toe trick. He said, like, push down with your big toe. It engages your leg drive better. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of anything like mm-hmm. that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I never knew that. He taught me that at my house one time. Well, speaking of that, that was the same night we brought a goat over to my shed. When Ed come over to my shed, I, I used to have lived I, in a shed. Oh, oh, God. And we okay. had a pregnant goat there waiting for him. Okay. So the goat and the goat. And the, yeah, yeah. So it was okay. fucking hilarious. <laughs> the goat gave birth like two days later. Yeah. He was shitting all over the backyard. All right. So, so what did you do with the goat? So I ended up... Um, benching with the goat like on my stomach while the goat was giving me a lift off, benching like 500 pounds or something. The goat. They, they picked the goat up and put it on my stomach. Yeah. Right. While the goat's there, and then Ed Cohen's giving me a lift off. Uh, okay, the I goat. Get, I get yeah. it. I get. I get it. So we did that. Um, we <laughs> speaking of goat. We also benched a goat. Yeah, right? I benched a goat. Uh, what was it? 80. I don't whatever whatever it was. How many ever number of years it was that the Cubs didn't win the World Series? It's like 80 some year or 80 it's some reps. Like a century, right? Like 100 yeah. years. Yeah, that was on uh, the pregame show, dubbed as the world's strongest Cub fan. 
and I was making fun of the Cleveland, I called him, I said, this is for all you fat, out of shape, Cleveland sweat hogs out there, let me show you what a real man looks like. And then I like, picked up like 500 pounds with one arm, and I was hitting fucking empty beer cans with a baseball bat with the other. <laughs> and then uh, they, they also played where I benched the goat, like 108 times, that's what okay. it was, 108. And the, my buddy, you know, he borrowed his neighbor's goat, and he had it in his truck, and we're at Barbell Central. He pulls up with the goat, brings it inside, shits all over the gym immediately. I mean, just shit everywhere. Like, oh, fuck. We got to hurry up and get this going. We put on my little platform that I bench to go, and then we got him right out of there and clean up the shit. So you're, you're in Aurora. You're in downtown fucking Chicago, and it just shows up with a goat. Yeah, he showed up, you know, with a goat. He got it from, you know, 30 miles from there, yeah. his neighbor's house. But why? The bench a goat because the goat, uh, okay, that was the so, curse. Okay, all right, so that was the thing. All so right, so yeah. the curse for the Cubs, I don't know if you know the curse of the Cubs was the curse of the goat. I don't know anything about the goat with the cup. Oh, so a guy brought a goat into Wrigley back yeah. in 1908 or 1909, whatever it was, and they wouldn't let a goat in. He bought a ticket, and then he cursed the Cubs. So they always called it the curse of the goat. So the Cubs didn't win for like 100 years, and everybody's like, there's that fucking goat. Well, that's how I broke the curse. So you broke the curse. By benching a goat 108 yeah. times. Yes, and then they went on. And then they went on and beat Cleveland in seven, game seven and won the World Series. So it fucking worked. So you got me to thank for it. Yeah. <laughs> So wait, at what point? At what point in time did you think to start doing this stupid shit? Right? Um, because you're you're benching, right? And yeah. obviously, say you're. I'm gonna kind of put pieces together. You're benching, then you're you're on social media mm -hmm. for whatever reason, and you're like, "Fuck." Well, I'll tell know? you how I got on social media. I didn't even know anything about it. All right, go. I wasn't on social media until must have been right before my first meet a supplement company. Or supplement store and and Caleb said, "Hey, we'll sponsor you if you go compete." I said, "Okay." Yeah. So they sponsored me. I haven't done shit yet, and these guys sponsored me, gave me all kinds of free supplements, you know, and everything, and paid for my stuff. And uh, I compete, and he comes back. He goes, "Hey, could you get on Instagram?" I said, "Isn't that for women? Like that's like a picture site for women, ain't it? I don't want to get on there." Mm -hmm. They said, "Just just get on it, you know, be good." So I said, "All right." So then I I I asked my buddy Tom Callis, who I train with a lot too. I had him help me set it up because I had no idea what I was doing. So I throw on like a bench video. I, like my first video was like me bench like 500 pounds. And it's like getting no views. I'm like, man, there's not many people in the world at 220 can bench 500 pounds. Mm -hmm. I don't know nobody likes this. So I'm sitting up in a, a tower one night at work. And, um, and I'm like, man, what am I good at? So I'm good at bench pressing and I'm good at drinking beer. <laughs> So I said, let's put that together. I'll, I'll do a video where I'm bench pressing and, and, I, and I'm uh, doing a beer bong, 500-pound bench with a beer bong. Nobody's done that. Yeah. So yeah. I did that, and then that kind of started things going. And then I'm like, oh, I, I want to be entertaining because I like being strong but also being entertaining. So I want to see something entertaining. Like, what do I want to see? I want to see something that I've never seen before. Like, mm -hmm. holy fuck, what is that? Yeah. I mean, my whole life, you know, I've been a class clown or, you know, I've been, you know, just trying to entertain people as well. So I think that's kind of what it was. And I'm like, well, we'll do, we'll do lifts. We'll do entertaining shit, do shit nobody's ever seen before. And that's kind of how it just kind of snowballed after that. So how does the alcohol play out when you are dealing with things like Instagram and social media where that I can see that being something that's going to get shadow banned? Yeah. You know, like. Well, I always try to be myself. Um, I'm, I'm, I like to drink beer. I like to lift weights. Um, and that's just who I am. So yeah. I. If they shadow ban me, they shadow ban me, but I'm not going to, like, change, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like um, like an average guy who just goes home and drinks. I just happen to be extraordinary, extraordinarily, is that how you say it? Yeah. Strong. Yeah. You know, and um, I like putting them both together. There's got to be more to it, though. You're just not – you're not eating like shit. Right? No, 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 no. no. I right. eat like a bodybuilder almost. Yeah. I don't – I can't maintain, a, like, a physique like this without – I mean, my, my – my diet is very good. I'd say at least 80% of the time, you know, I, I eat similar to all a bodybuilder would eat almost. And then probably about 20% of the time I would, uh, you know, drink beer, eat pizza. I love eating pizza, mm -hmm. uh, shit like that. So I don't want to live a life where I have to, like, ever count every calorie or something like that. Yeah. But I don't want to look like shit. I don't want to be a sloppy piece of shit either. So what are your, what are your tenets? <laughs> oh, it would be. Uh, if you're going to take over yeah, the king. Right. So uh, good evening. <laughs> no, what is this, afternoon? What time is it? It's, it's two. Good afternoon, primals. This is your old pal Huck Finn Barbell here with the nine alpha ancestral tenants. <laughs> Tenant number one, we like to lift weights. 
Tenant number two, we drink beer. <laughs> Tenant number three, we fuck. Uh, that's the only three I got so far. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I got to work on the rest of the six. <laughs> well, at some point, you got to eat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we got to eat. We don't eat <laughs> testicles. We eat pussy. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, that's fucking great. That liver king guy is something else. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. By the way, thank you, Liver King, for helping my sight. <laughs> the fucking shirts are through the roof. People love them. <laughs> and then when when you're coming up with these skits, mm-hmm. do they just fucking come out of nowhere? It's the, the, like I know Juju Rowe, right? I mean, he yeah. plans the shit out. You know, yeah. it's kind of all laid out. Is it to is it to that level, or is it more to here's the idea? <laughs> Because uh, you got some of these things need a long time. I know out. some of them are, are, are take quite a while. Like some of the the bigger ones definitely are planned out. Yeah. But most of them, I'll have an idea in my head. I'll write something down. I'll, I'll ask some of my buddies, "Hey, what do, you, what do you think you can do off this? You got anything about this? You know, one of my buddies used to like write comedy, so I'll ask him sometimes. Yeah. Hey, what's funny? What, what's a good? Because I also like um, like pro wrestling. I love pro wrestling as well. So growing up, I love. The promos, like them doing a promo, you yeah. know, like Hulk Hogan or something, or Steve Austin doing a promo. So I like cutting promos, too. So that's kind of like how that – some of these other shit where I just talk on the mic, too. I think that's funny. Yeah. And, and it works. But, uh, like, the bigger videos – I did a 4th of July video. I've done a 4th of July video a few times, but probably the biggest one I did was on a boat, and I was lifting weights with, like, 400 fireworks going off at the same time out in the middle of a lake. And uh, that took a while. My buddy had found a boat – an old boat that mm-hmm. we just get rid of. We fucking push it out. We got like 400 fireworks, brought 225 pounds out to the boat. We hit it on a rope. He pushed it out about 50 feet, and uh, the fireworks started going off. People are fishing. They're yelling at me and shit, and I'm fucking <laughs> lifting weights. Fireworks. I mean, fireworks everywhere. Mm-hmm. That took a lot, of, a lot of time. Stuff like that takes a lot of time, you know? When, what's the most viral one that you've done? Oh, jeez. Well, that's hard to... It's hard to pinpoint. It's hard to pinpoint because if it gets picked up, yeah. wait, let's look, let me get a different. Which one was picked up by the most outlets? I think that Fourth of July one was. Oh, really? Yeah, that Fourth of July one was big, and then probably the one uh, like Juke and Media has bought some of my videos. So the one where I fell off a T-bar roll machine has been like everywhere for like seven years. <laughs> like that one's everywhere, and then when I ran through the vending machine, that's in a lot of places. Um, but that Fourth of July one, man, that that is everywhere. Every time something needs to be said with like the United States, it just I don't follow soccer, but there's like a the soccer thing, you know, where they're the mm-hmm. World Cup. Well, all these companies were using my video. You know, I don't get paid for that. I don't know. I don't know. I was gonna say, how do you protect that then? Well, I mean, you try to. I, I guess you, I sell some of them to like uh, media outlets, and they'll buy them, and then they'll protect it. Yeah. So I can't. I try to. I haven't, I, I'm an idiot. I should be selling them more. I asked Juji years ago, yeah. hey, how do, what do you use for your videos so I can sell these videos and all this? And he said, Juke and Media, and I talked to a guy, and they bought a lot of my videos. But uh, the last couple of years, I, I haven't really sold any, and that would have been a huge one because that is, I mean, literally everywhere. Yeah. Like, DraftKings used it yesterday. Like, everybody keeps using that video. Every 4th of July, every time there's something to do with the United States, it's that video with I'm Real American playing in the background, you know? Yeah. So that's a catch 22, though, because you don't know that you should have mm-hmm. somebody representing it until it's already been used. Oh, I know it. And yeah. then you don't want to fucking have them pull it down. No, because it's, it's still attention. good publicity. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So, yeah, my, my, I'm, I asked my wife because she's a lot smarter than me. I said, man, these fucking look at all these companies. This got a million views on DraftKings yesterday. And it's my video. I'm not even mentioned yeah, it at yeah, all. Yeah. And she's like, well, why don't you watermark it? I don't even know how to watermark shit. What? What? Well, thanks for telling me now. Well, you they told pull, me that three years yeah, ago. They pull it off. What, they would pull a watermark off? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they would find a way to. So there's just no way. Yeah. You know? I still think it's great publicity either way. If we get paid, you get paid. Yeah. You know, eventually it comes around. You know, people buy your products. It just, it all. Well, at some point in time, it did start to come around because you you have uh, an apparel line and a supplement line. Mm -hmm. The apparel line first, I assume, right? Yeah, yeah. So I I, I was with 8-Man Strong um, for quite a few years. And uh, when I tore my pec tendon off the bone the first time, I... Asked him, hey, could you make me a shirt that says, okay, buy on it? Because that's kind of how yeah. I'd end everything on my Instagram is okay, buy. And that came from a special, I don't know what you call him, uh, special needs guy that, I, that grew up three houses down the street from me. He was like 70. Mm-hmm. And he would go to all the high school events. And he was like the, in the Hall of Fame for being a fan of the game. 
and his name's Johnny Garmy. He's awesome. And he would always say, okay, bye. Like mid conversation, he'd say, okay, bye. And leave. Are oh, you on the great. phone? Okay, bye. And just hang up. So you can use it anytime. <laughs> so me and my dad have been saying that since I was a kid. Yeah. Okay, bye. So I just started putting it at the end of all my Instagram posts. Okay, bye. Well, then I'm like, oh, maybe I'll just make a shirt that says that. So, hey, eight man, can you make me 100 shirts? Put okay, bye on the front. I'm like, yeah, no problem. So they sent them out and I sold 100 shirts, you know, in like a day or two. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, that's 20 bucks a shirt. That's two grand. That's great. You know, like three, four months down the road, hey, can you send me another? It says, build the chest, fuck the rest on it. And they did, and then that was great. They sold, too. And I'm like, man, what if we had shirts in stock all the time? Who knows what kind of money we could make, you know? Mm-hmm. So then about six months after that, or maybe a year after that, my wife was pregnant, and she didn't want to go back to work. She was a teacher. And she's like, oh, I want to stay home with the kids, raise the kids and all that. So I said, well, what if we just start making our own shirts? Maybe we can make enough money doing that. So I said, okay. So we looked for, uh, you know, a... Uh, Screen printing company was going out of business. Finally found one. You know, six months down the road, I pick up all the shit. We put it in my garage in my uh, last house. And she taught herself how to uh, screen print in about two months with help from uh, these guys, JB Boss, who is a a brand. They're from Iowa. And they would come out, and they helped us uh, show us how to do it. Um, And then she started making them. And uh, in July, one of my buddies, Jack and Homeless, he's this – idiot and he was he died so he died and he always he said let's get stupid in mm-hmm. a video so then i i put the first shirt is going to be let's get stupid so then we were we're like hey let's put these out and we'll give them you know we'll make money off it and we'll give it to his dad mm-hmm. so we made that shirt and it sold great and then after that you know sales came in and we we had a certain amount of money that we had to make per month for her to you know not go back mm-hmm. to work and we did that easily like the first second third month so we just bet on ourselves, you mm-hmm. know, and it, and it was the best move by far, definitely ever made. Why did you decide to go <clears throat> screen print instead of say heat press? Because it's one's going to cost way more than it. Yeah, other. I thought that screen printing was was better than heat press. I think, uh, I, I honestly I don't really know. Mm-hmm. I th- I think it's better quality, but I really I don't know much. I don't know anything about screen printing, but I knew other companies screen printed. Yeah, you know what I mean. I I never. The only guy I ever seen that was uh, heat pressing was uh, the guy that owned Barbell Central. Yeah. So I didn't. I was like, I don't know. This guy doesn't know much about business. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's not that good. I don't. I don't. But I didn't know anything about it. And uh, I think JB Boss told us about it, like how because they were screen printers. Yeah. And we got a really good deal on the equipment. Really good. Yeah. So we went. Well, it's in kind on of that. a catch twenty two because you can you can heat press a one off. That's true too. She, we got heat press now. Yeah, yeah. But at the time we didn't. We started yeah. with that. But definitely heat press. We heat press stuff. Yeah, now. you see what I'm saying? Because if you yeah. got a screen, you're like, fuck. Okay, this better what? sell oh, at least God, this. No, right? Know? Yeah, because it takes a. You got We got. We make the screen. We make the image. I mean, everything is in house, mm-hmm. right? And uh, yeah, we did very well. Um, and it just it started taking up our whole house, our last house, you know. Well, the screen. We had <laughs> screen print. The whole big. screen print thing was in the garage. <laughs> yeah. The whole. Uh, Kitchen, not the kitchen though. Place you eat at, what they call that, a uh, eating place. Yeah. Fucking eating place is covered with fucking tons of shit. I mean, it was just everywhere. So we 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 looked at a, you know, expanding, getting a bigger place with an outbuilding and everything, and mm-hmm. we found a great place. Now we have an outbuilding with the, where the shop is, and uh, I have a big barn that I made a gym. Yeah. It's like eighteen hundred square foot barn that's got a gym in it. I mean, it's a great. I was training in the shed, you know, because when, when the backtrack when everybody. Broke up from Barbell Central. It kind of went different directions. And I'm like, I mean, I'm not driving in there. It's, I'm just going to start getting my own shit and just start training here. Because I couldn't, I, you know, I had kids. Yeah. So I started collecting all kinds of my shit. I went to my dad's house, got some of my old plates and everything, and then I started buying more shit. And uh, some companies started sending me stuff. And I just kind of built a shed up. The shed was in the woods. It was, it, was, it was awesome. I mean, it was small. You get three guys out there. I mean, it was tight. Mm-hmm. And we had bench. Dumbbells, squat rack, pull down machine. I mean, pretty much the necessities out there. Um, and uh, one of the coolest things that happened out there is Muscle and Fitness came out and did a like a six page spread. No shit. At the shed, and the you know we lived in like the small town, Big Rock, Illinois. It has like you know forty people in it. Yeah, yeah. And 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 uh, they came and did a full full photo shoot out there, and it was awesome. You know, um, got really drunk during the photo shoot. Uh, How'd that go over with them? Well, that was great because they brought me the beer. Oh, they and oh. they kept telling me they had like one pose. I'm like a tractor or something. I'm just, they're like, hey, just dump the beer down your mouth. 
and I'm gonna take a bunch of pictures. So I'm doing this. And I'm like, I need another beer. It's, it's like six beers in a row. I'm just down it. Yeah. So by the end of the photo shoot, I'm pretty lit up. You know, it, it was good. Everything worked out great, and it was it was awesome. You know, it said the Adventures of Huckfin Barbell. Yeah. You know, but it was fun. And it was crazy to have them in a shed because they wanted me to go to some fancy gym in Chicago. Well, this ain't me. I said I fucking yeah. lift out in the woods, man. I'm in a shed. Come out here. Yeah. And they said, well, send us a you know a photo of what what it's like out there. And they said, okay, we'll come out there. And they did. And uh, yeah, so that was awesome. And then, so then during this time, you pick up all this momentum, right? Yeah. And then COVID happens and lockdowns happen. Then for you, how did that work as far as the momentum that you were building? And because now you're not doing expos, you're not doing anything, mm-hmm. right? So it all yeah. stopped. Everything just slammed off. Yeah. Um, you know, I just kept doing what I was doing. Uh, what really sucked was it was right before the Arnold. That was the biggest event that first got canceled. Yeah. Right? So yeah, that, we had the been, day before. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been stocking up, I mean, for months. You know, my wife has to work a lot extra, making shirts all night. We have to have a lot of fucking shit to bring there. Mm-hmm. So we had all this fuck, all these T-shirts, everything, and then it's canceled. I'm like, what the fuck? We're just, I mean, we're sitting on a ton of money right Did now. Did you have those the shit here, or were you not here yet? No, no, no. We were still, I didn't leave, I don't leave till like Wednesday or okay, something. Right, I think right. this happened Tuesday. Yeah, so it wasn't sitting on the loading dock like a lot of other people got. Fired. No, 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 yeah, no. Yeah. We, we, so I always drove in with, the, with my truck and a, mm-hmm. a trailer. And I drive in Thursday, I think it was right Thursday, starts Friday. Mm-hmm. So I drive in Thursday, get there in the afternoon, and then load all my shit up for Thursday. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, no, that was lucky we didn't have all that. Well, yeah, it was a, I was like, well, something's going to happen. Let's you know, do an Arnold sale. We'll mm-hmm. build a fucking, uh, a uh, booth in our garage, and we'll go live, and we'll drink beer, and we'll act like it's the Arnold. Yeah. So that's what we did, and we and we had a great sale, and everything worked out good. Did it really? Yeah, I was surprised. I was nervous. Yeah, you know, I yeah. don't know. You never know. I don't know what's going to happen. No. I think a lot of people kind of felt bad for companies. Oh yeah. Right. Because they're, they're all set. Like some companies, I mean, that's like their whole year. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Especially for apparel companies yeah, like huge. yourself. That's, I know that's it. Not, a, not I, good. And on top of that, you get to meet so many motherfuckers. I mean, yeah. That's how you grow too as a business, and how you, I mean, everything. Yeah. So you never know. I mean, it, we did great on the sale, but we might have probably done better if there was the Arnold. Well, you, you don't get know. New you know, people. And now it's a different mm-hmm. Arnold. You're yeah, right. I went last year. I didn't have a uh, booth. Yeah. And it was like 50% of what it was, mm-hmm. kind of. So. So where does that leave you now as far as would you do it this year? We didn't get a booth this year. I, yeah. I think everybody's waiting. Yeah. That's, it, it was the same last year we waited, and I'm like, yes, yeah, let's just show up. We'll go for two days. Yeah. That's what I mean by waiting. They're waiting to see what, you know. Who's going to be who's there. Who's going to be there yeah. and what's going to actually happen. I don't know. I kind of – I love the Arnold. It was great. It was good, good uh, exposure and publicity it's and all that. It's a lot of money, too. It's a ton of money. Yeah. And if you're fucking not coming out pretty good, you know, there's no sense of doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, it just mean, have yeah, an Arnold yeah. sale, yeah. you know, virtual – Instead yeah. of, you know, selling at a booth. but Well, you got a different perspective now. I mean, it doesn't take a, a super intelligent person to realize, here's how much it costs. Yeah. Here's how many shirts we need to sell. Yeah. And, oh, uh, wait a minute. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got to sell this like, much. Okay, bye. Uh-huh. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah. We'll just do it virtual again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, no, that was, uh, well, that, and then I tore my pec tendon again. That was uh, in April. Of well, how did you tear the first one? Let's go back to that. So the first one, I uh, flew out to Mark Bell's gym there at Super Training Gym, and we did a bunch of uh, video. Um, I benched, I think it was 525 out there, where I, I snorted salt, squirted limes in my eyes. It was on Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> and, and then I benched 525. I mean, it flew. So I, I think I went to no, a, wait, Like, who comes up with the idea of I'm going to snort salt and fucking – well, I used to do it when I was like, you know, 21 years old. I used to do that all the time. Snort salt. Yeah, I'd, I'd say, uh, I forget what I called it. It's called some stupid. It is, I don't remember. But and everybody would be like, "Oh, you need training wheels?" I said, "Yeah, give me training wheels." And I'll show you training wheels. And I snort the salt and I squirt both limes in my eyes and I all take right, a right, shot. Right, you know, no, I get, it, I get it. Yeah. So okay. and it sucked because it, yeah, it no, burns like lime, a motherfucker. It's gonna suck. Yeah. So anyway, I did that because I thought it was funny, you know, for the, for the internet, for YouTube, and. Mm-hmm. and it, and then I'm like, well, let's go to, I think it was 570 maybe. It would have been a PR because I had hit 560 in the gym uh, two weeks before that. So I'm like, oh, I got this all day. Mm-hmm. And I go in and, I, and I'm coming out of the hole and it, something popped. Felt like I struck my light. I didn't even know what it was. Like, Whoa, I thought somebody hit me in the side. 
And I fucking dropped the weight, and then Mark's like, yeah, I think that's a tendon. And he's like, if that's a tendon, man, it's fucking, that's like career ending or something. I'm like, huh? I didn't know anything, you know? I'm like, because I went home. And I'm like, oh, fuck, Mark, man, career ending. I'll show you. This ain't going to be career ending. Yeah. I'm going to come back. Maybe some people can't come back from this, did it but bruise? I'm not some yeah. people. I'm Huck Finn Barbell. Yeah, did it bruise at all? It didn't bruise bad. Yeah. It kind of just bleeds yeah. out into the bicep a little bit. Yeah, that's the problem when it doesn't. I know, bad. right? <laughs> I know it. I knew it. Yeah. Well, I knew that the second time for sure. Like, oh, fuck. Well, like I told you earlier, I was like, oh, man, maybe it's just a muscle tear and I'll be back yeah. in three months. Yeah. How long did that one? I mean, how long did you wait until you got it fixed? Oh, I got it fixed as fast as possible. Yeah. Because I heard if you don't, then you got to get a cadaver tendon. And in over 21 days, your, your tenant dies, they said. Yeah, I don't know, because I waited six weeks or something like that. With and they used your tendon or the cadaver? I, I, it was probably, I, I'm going to guess it was probably cadaver, because this was a long time ago. Right. So, fuck, I mean, I'm going back to uh, 89. Oh, yeah. I'm going way back. Yeah, I didn't want a cadaver yeah. tenant, because I, I, I heard they weren't as good. Yeah. And I went in there, and, uh, yeah, I got it probably within 10 days. Yeah. I got it surgically repaired. Within the first time, within six months, I was back to about 85%, 85, yeah. 90%, which was great because they told me you'd never even bench again. You know, the doctors always tell you, like, don't go above 225, no, yeah. don't do this, you know. And uh, I went back, benched 500 pounds hundreds of times again. Everything um, was great. Um, you know, competed again, everything. Do and- they know when you went in, do they knew pretty quick that that's what it was? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I knew it, too, because I talked to, like, three other people, and they're like, uh, I talked to a physical therapist, some other people, like, that's yeah, definitely the tendon. Yeah. So, like, yeah. And they told me what the deal is, and I was kind of trying to figure it out. I'm asking other people who've had it, what do you do? How do you do this? Um, looked up everything I could, you know, and then, yeah, I just went and got tons of, what is that, PRP, right? Yeah, PRP. I got tons yeah, of that because a company yeah. in Kentucky kept doing it, so I traveled down there, yeah. fucking like six times, um, just doing everything I could to come back. And I did. And about a year later, I, you know, I was back over five hundred, everything. And another thing was the WWE had contacted me for an uh, invited tryout and through email, so I didn't know anything. Yeah, I contacted yeah. the other guy. I say, you know this guy? And he's like, yeah, that guy's like in charge of talent or something at WWE. I said, holy shit. So then I sent all my papers away, and I sent everything. We had a, I had a plane ticket, everything. And this was for two weeks before I tore it. I was supposed to go to Orlando for an invited tryout. And that was I was thinking, yeah, it was two weeks. Yeah. And then I tore it at Mark's gym, and, and they never invited me again. So I said, hey, in like six months, I contacted me. Hey, everything's good. I can come down whenever you got another tryout and everything, and nothing. It kind of just you know, blew me yeah. off. So that was it. No, it's, it's, it's interesting because when, it, when I pop mine, where it's a, it was a different time, right? And it was at a bench meet here in Columbus. And it was when I was traveling back and forth from Toledo to Columbus to train at Westside. Yeah. And so I, I, I blow the thing off. And I remember Louie saying, you know, oh, you just pulled it. Yeah. And my, my entire fucking pack was under my nipple. Yeah, I, know. I mean, it's like it's just fucking roll. And I'm like, <laughs> just man, pulled I, it. I mean, I don't know, yeah. man. Like, this is this is <laughs> fucked up, you know. And then I. I I was six weeks away from graduating from college, Mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, there's a couple doctor visits before there. The the first doctor visit, they wouldn't see me because the amount, when you have to fill out, you know, meds and shit, they're like, no, you come back tomorrow (laughs) because it was a meet. Yeah, right, right. That kind of shit. Yeah. Um, that's that's a whole other. You know, <laughs> no, come yeah. back in two months. Wait, wait, I should. No, I never took anything. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I should have said, right? Uh-huh. And um, but when I went back to college and I went to the college doctor there, th- she said, "Well, you just pulled it." And I, I flex it, and you know what it's lo- oh, when you yeah. flex it, what it looks like. Yeah, it's yeah. like fucking. It's actually kind of awesome in yeah. a way. Like if the yeah, whole like pack would look like that, yeah. it's like well, boom. And um, so finally, when I got it done. And where I'm kind of going with this is, I mean, they knew right away with you. I had to go to, like, five fucking different people. Oh, shit. And it's like, yeah, you tore it. And I'm like, you think? You know, I can't even lift my arm off the ground. Right, right. And and I'm trying to, like like your own story, I'm trying to will myself to bench yeah, you're like, I can't I think, bench. I, I think it maybe is just strained or torn yeah. barely. Did you deal with, um, I mean, they, I, had, I was in a sling for, I was supposed to be six weeks. It was yeah. like a week. But um, did you deal with... Um, uh, scar tissue tearing, like oh, yeah. when you come back, right? yeah, it's like you pop. Keep... You're like, oh shit, oh yeah, big time. For how long? 
who probably a couple months. Okay. You know, it'd be off and on. I'd be benching, and I'd feel like something just tore again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's And I didn't know, and I'd ask somebody. They said, it's just scar tissue breaking up. Yeah. Holy fuck, because it scares the shit out of you. No, shit. You don't, shit you don't want on. that fucking yeah. thing to tear again. That shit went on for me for, like, fucking two years. No, I haven't had anything probably shit. I, I think three, three, four months maybe. Yeah, yeah. Cause when I does. started benching a little heavy. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So it, it, a year ago. And I had the same thing where the doctor's like, you'll never bench 405 again. Oh, yeah. And it was weird. That that alone was fucking weird to me because I'm like, why not 365? <laughs> like, where's this fucking 405 yeah, come from? Right, yeah. You'll better bench 405 you know, again. Like, this, is, this, is fucking, this is stupid. But you it, will never bench 405 again, but I will. Yeah, but it fucked with my head, right? Yeah, well, that makes you, me angry, though. Yeah. It, does, yeah, it drives me. Like, no, I'm going to fucking... Put this up your ass. Yeah, but I was hearing, well, your sp- all your tendons look like, you know, like fucking spaghetti. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, all this other right? stuff. And I'm you're like, like oh, I got shit. spaghetti tendons. I'm and fucking fucked. 405. And I tried to, like, recover the right way, you know, oh, like yeah. slow and gradual oh, yeah. and all that. So you don't get back to the heavy weights for four months, five months, yeah. six months. And then it's like the, this, the scar tissue. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, you know. Uh-huh. And... You know, if, if fucked with my head, that that was the first real major injury I had, I'm, or surgery. It did. It Same fucked here. with my head. Besides my finger. Yeah, the only way I was able to get around it is I had to start visualizing the worst case scenario. Oh, yeah. Like, okay, so I would, you know, as you get ready for the bench, yeah. you know, I'm like sitting there, I'm like picturing, okay, I'm going to get underneath there, I'm going to take it out, I'm going to lower it, my pec's going to go, the bar's going to smash my head, <sighs> fucking blood's going to go everywhere. And I would start getting so... F- the, I get the chills. Yeah, then I, I would get so... F- I get so amped up. I do get so amped. Yeah. I still get so amped up going heavier, you know, an 80, 90% range. Yeah. I mean, I get so amped up of benching, I'll start getting the chills before I even sit on the bench. Yeah. I'll just get myself so amped up, and i got to calm down a little bit. Yeah. I, I do now. I mean, I mean, and I've been yeah. like that. And it's, I've been like that for a long time. I don't know why, but it's I fun. just get so fucking fired up, man. I get so fired up, I get shit, you know, yeah. like I said. No, it's fun. But, uh, yeah, there's just the, – in your head, especially that first year – you're like going heavy, and you're like, "Fuck!" Well, you get mad that you're being a puss. And then, yeah, that's what I say in my head. I'm like, "Fuck it, stop being a bitch. Let's go." Yeah. And you're, and then in your head, you're like, "Oh," because I went up to uh, 485 or something with uh, in the last six months, and I remember I smoked like 465, whatever it was, just smoked it. I mean, like fast. Mm-hmm. And then I pull it out, and I feel that weight in my hand, and I'm like, "Oh shit." And I'm bringing it down. I'm like, I'm just going to pause it on my chest and I'm going to make him take it. Like, I'm saying that to myself. Oh, I know, I know, I know. And then all of a sudden, I start pushing it and it's going up. And I'm like, oh, shit, I got yeah. this. Oh, yeah. And like, that's just, uh, it just helps you mentally so much because you've already hit that weight. You're like, oh, I've already hit this. I can do yeah. this again. No, I think you so need it, to go through that kind of big stuff, time. right? And for, for a long time, my benches got faster because I was so fucking scared. I'm like, I want this fucker off me the fastest I possibly can. Oh, yeah. Then I, then I, I became the opposite of a puss. I wasn't scared about it anymore. I'm like, well, now I need to eat something else. Yeah. To be able to get fired up yeah. to that same level. Man. You know, it's, it's. Oh, no, I've been through it. I mean, I've been through it twice. Yeah. It's, it sucks. It's the worst, you know. What'd you do different the second time? Um, I talked to a guy who's rehabbed this exact injury with professional athletes before, as a yeah. friend of mine. And he helped me out with everything. Like, I uh, bought a slide board, I bought a, all kinds of shit to rehab. And I rehabbed literally. I would wake up at 4.45 a.m., I'd go out to my shed, and I'd rehab for an hour before work. This is the most boring rehab ever. is moving my arm in different ways with a slide board, fucking lifting it up with, like, a stick and, and oh, getting yeah. a range of motion. Yeah. I mean, I did that for four months, all this rehab. I mean, tons of rehab. Then I'd go to work, and then I'd come home, and then I'd train my good side or my legs or something, and then I'd slowly start training both sides again. So I rehabbed. Like like a motherfucker. I mean, I rehab the hell out of it, like constantly. So this guy Jacob Ross, he helped me a ton with with rehab because before, when I first came back, I didn't really know anything. I just started benching again, mm-hmm. just slowly progressing, you know, like you know, one plate, one eighty five, two twenty five, two seventy. Just keep going up, man. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Um, Ernie Senior helped me a little bit the first time because he had been through it. And he kind of mm-hmm. just he pushed me pretty fast. Oh yeah, but um. Yeah, the only thing different really I did was was I a, one of my buddies really knew how to um, rehab it really well. So I was rehabbing twice. And I go home and like I say, I go home to I go home to and go to physical therapy that the the doctor gives you or whatever the fuck yeah. that is, right? So I do my own physical therapy. I'd go to physical therapy and I would train. Yeah. 
And that happened four to six months I did that. And they didn't – I was already benching like 315 pounds, and the therapist – was telling me she doesn't want me to come back. And I said, well, what did my insurance say? Well, you still have 10 more visits. I said, well, I'm still taking 10 more visits because mm-hmm. you can break up scar tissue. You can do anything. Yeah. Just keep doing it. I want to keep getting better. You know, if I, they're paying for it, I'm not paying for it. Yeah. You know, so the more, the more, the better. The, and just, yeah, that's what I did. And I'd go to work. I'd use a broomstick, push my arm because I couldn't move my arm when I first went back to work, you know, because you just, you get that range of motion. Yeah, going. yeah, yeah. It's all tight. What do you do different with your bench now because of these tears? Anything? Nothing. Yeah. No, I'm a fucking idiot. You know, no. I try to. Uh, I bought your bar. Mm-hmm. I bought that uh, the football bar, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I use that. I try to use different bars just to have different, uh, like bar pass or whatever you call that. Yeah, different, yeah, yeah. Different yeah. variations of the yeah. lift, right? Which, you know, I sh- should always do that. But I just love bench pressing with a straight bar, and I'm an idiot. Um, I do it a little bit. I try to use, you know, my back more in the bench, like everything like that. You know, I just try to keep your pecs out of it more. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing I've, I've kind of done differently, but, I mean, I'm pretty pretty similar. Well, it's tough because when you look back, you try to figure out, like, why did this happen? Right, yeah. Right? And there's so many compounding variables, you know, that, fuck, I mean, you can say you're dehydrated because you're drinking 40 fucking beers. Or That's true. Or it could true. be this, or it could yeah. be this, or it could be... Who the fuck knows what it is? Yeah. Like, it is, it is, it happened. It's an acute fucking injury. It right. fucking tore off the tendon. Yeah. You know, a muscle strain, I would kind of think a little different. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the, how my brain, like, your hamstring makes more sense. Or, oh, yeah. I'm sure you've heard other things. You've yeah. You've pulled muscles. Of course. You know why you pulled the muscle. When yeah. a fucking tendon detaches, it's kind of hard to say. Yeah. This is and, like, the was. second time I tore it, I think I was doing seven sets of three at like 435 or something. Yeah. And on my seventh set was a max rep set. And I texted my buddy Cowboy Cam. I said, how many do you think I can get? And he said, six. I said, ten. And I go and do it. He said, I've already done this. Six sets of triples already. I mean, yeah. it, and then I go in and, and the second rep or whatever it was, and my wife was spotting me because COVID had just happened. Mm-hmm. So we didn't know what was going on. So I had no idea. Nobody wanted to come over. Nobody wanted to do anything. So I had my wife spotting me. So she, I said, hey, this is easy. I got this all day. All you got to do is lift it. You don't even have to lift it for me. Just act like you're lifting it. Grab your beer. Drink a beer while I'm doing this. Act bored for the video. Okay. She turns around, grabs her beer. And as she turned around, grabs her beer, she didn't know that I just tore my peck tenant and the barbell's laying on my stomach. Oh, fuck. And I'm like, God damn it. Fuck. And it rolled it off me, and I knew immediately what happened because it felt very yeah. similar to the first time. I'm like, I'm so fucked. How long did it take to get you in? Because non-electives. Oh, yeah. That's what I was know. saying. I, I'm telling them. I said, hey. I make money doing this. I'm a professional athlete. I'm just giving every line I got. Yeah. And I said, I need to get this done within 21 days. My tenant will die. And all that. I'm giving them everything I got because I want it. I didn't know. Mm-hmm, I'm like, I'm so fucked. I'm not going to get the surgery. It's going to be like two years. Yeah. But I got in with probably 15 days. Wow. Yeah. So I went the next day. I told my doctor, I said, I send me to an MRI immediately. I tore my pectin off the bone. Yeah. They did. And they called me on the way home. And that night, before I went to the MRI, I bench press. I don't know what it was, 225, 135, whatever it was, because I'm like, I don't think, I'm doing push-ups off the wall or whatever, off the yeah. fucking table. Maybe it's not, maybe it's not the tendon. And I go outside, just like you did, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, I willed myself to do it, but it's pretty much, I lifted it with this arm the whole yeah, way, yeah, yeah. and I did it, I'm like, I think I'm all right. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally within 10 minutes after I left that place, the lady called me and said I tore it. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck. Well, how soon can, we, can they reattach it? Well, then they called me the next day. Go visit the doctor. Hey, we can get you in this week. Okay. And that's what happened. Yeah. And then I sat on the couch and drank beer and watched uh, fucking Netflix for like a week. Yep. It's fucking terrible. I played uh, Doug Stones. I'd, I'd be better off at a pine box. Yeah. What, 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 <laughs> I've had a lot of injuries. So what did you watch? Because after a while, you run out of shit to watch. Well, I watched, I watched <laughs> Vikings. That's why I watched Vikings the whole season. Yeah. I watched Vikings and then I watched <laughs> Ariel America. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm watching Aerial America and I'm recording it and I'm saying, uh, you know, I'm in Kentucky today and it's just a recording of Aerial America in Kentucky and people would be like, hey, where are you at Kentucky? I want to meet you. I'm like, I'm watching on TV, you idiots. I'm not really in Kentucky. I'm just pretending to be there. What what are the um, what are some skits that you've done that didn't work? They didn't go. In other words, you set it all up and it's just a complete disaster. Yeah. So the last Fourth of July video. Yeah. Complete disaster. We were out there for like five hours. It got dark. We couldn't get uh, the boat to float. 
we're, we're in the river, and the river's too low. We had a fucking four wheel, a four wheeler out there that broke down that was pulling, trying to pull the boat. We had a tractor in the water. I mean, oh yeah, he cut his toe, almost cut his toe off. He got caught by a beer bottle in the fucking river. I mean, it was like a complete and utter disaster. I said, I had all my buddies there, and I all every we trained on Thursday night for bench. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, this is gonna take like an hour. We'll go do this real quick. We'll go back and bench. Oh, okay, that's no big deal. So we all went down there. We didn't get back to bench like 10 o'clock at night. Fucking video was half-ass. Okay video. Didn't do nearly as well as I thought it was going to do. And uh, just uh, such a waste of money. I'd spent so much money in fireworks, everything else. I mean, it did all right, but nowhere near as I thought it would mm-hmm. do. I thought it was a great video. And, uh, yeah, nothing was working. So that was probably – that's definitely one of them, one of, the, one of the ones that I thought would do well that didn't do well. And everything went awry. Yeah, what what are the ones that you didn't you didn't think were gonna do shit? That took off. Oh, this fucking Liver King stuff. <laughs> I, I I thought for sure it wasn't gonna be. I mean, this this caught me totally off guard. I I was just making a joke out of it. I because I'd seen the guy. He just walked through his woods, and I'm like, well, I'm the real Liver King. Like we saying, I drink beer and all this. And I said, hey, uh, I got a beer backpack. Throw that on. Give me a couple cases of beer laying in the corner over there. I walked through my woods saying, you know, I'm the real Liver King and all this. And at the end, I thought of a, a clever idea. Is like, uh, you know, real alphas don't eat testicles. They eat pussy, you know. It's a joke mm, yeah, to Liver yeah, King. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea that would take off. I mean, that took off like a million views. I thought maybe fucking 50,000 or something, you know, something like that. Just bullshit. Mm-hmm. And, it, man, it took off so much that, like, pretty famous, like, bodybuilders and, and – I would think the word pussy would hold that from taking That's what off. I thought, too. Yeah. I thought there's no way because – There'd be a select audience that would buy something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. But shit, man, that I like I said, I sold more of those shirts than any shirt we've definitely sold the last year. Or maybe no, I'm just two. saying the video. I'm surprised the oh, video. Oh yeah, that would well, do that, that, that too. That. Yeah, no, they, no, they, they, they uh, that's. Yeah, I get the shirt. I understand the shirt, but the, I don't understand how the video was able to do that without it getting without it getting flagged or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it, it did. Man, I played it. I replayed that video recently. It's got seven hundred thousand views since like two days ago. Oh, so you just reposted? I reposted it because I'm like, oh shit, let's repost it and put my shirt at the end of it. Oh right? yeah, I, yeah. And just try to sell the shirt. Well, you can post it each billing cycle or every yeah. pay bonus. Yeah, cycle, just right? keep getting money off yeah. of it. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah cause, fuck, I'm demonetized now. That's a waste. I shouldn't have did it, but man, we made a lot of money selling those shirts. Yeah. Well, that that's you're gonna make more doing that than oh, you're gonna yeah. make the couple right, hundred right. bucks yeah. on Instagram. So I didn't think stuff like that mm. or. Uh, I'm trying to think of other other videos in the past. It's weird because you'll think some videos are so good. And I'll post it, and I'll look at, look at them like an hour and doing like shit. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Man, this was like a, such a great video. How is this not doing You're so like well? you thumbing down on the phone. Yeah, like, There's no reason. way <laughs> this is not doing this well. And then other videos are like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to post it. But then I, I just always post no matter what. I don't give a fuck, so I'll post it. It'll probably do all right. I look at it, and I'm like, holy fuck, it's done this well? It's crazy. Do you so put you it on TikTok, know. too? I try to regurgitate them on TikTok as much as I can, but, man, they pull my shit down all the time. They threaten to t- take me off there. They have taken me off there before. Yeah. They, they've uh, deleted my – not deleted, what do they call it? Permanently yeah. just suspended it or something? Well, I wrote to them, like, hey, you guys are picking on me. I feel like I'm being picked on by you guys and all this, <laughs> and they immediately give my account back. So if you just say you're feeling like you're picked on, boom, just replay it back on them. Why are you guys picking on me? Everybody's picking on me. Yeah. So they give me an account back then. So I, I'm on there. And I kind of just post my videos, you know, I don't make When you get the money. account warning, how long does it last? Say it again. For TikTok, if they give you an account warning. I have an account warning right now. I've had it ever since I've been on there. All right, okay. Um, I don't know. It's, I don't think I've never ha- not had an account warning. It's always <laughs> it's always said account warning on there. Yeah. But uh, they, they did take me off there, and I said I was being picked on, and within 24 hours it was back. Mm-hmm. Um, same with my Twitter. They took my Twitter off for, man, I didn't do anything. I, I don't. I don't post anything like. How long ago did they do the Twitter thing? Uh, yeah, a year ago, a year and a half yeah, ago. Yeah. Well, I got it back. I told them I felt like I was being picked on. Same oh, really? Thing. And they gave it back to me <laughs> because I had like a lot of, you know, I had pretty good following on there. Yeah, you know, it helps. Yeah. Everything helps. Yeah. So, and they, they did the same thing, and, and I ended up getting it back about five months ago. Huh. So, I'm on there. Yeah, I had a, my Twitter. It's, it's when I learned mine, it's pretty much the same time. Both just got axed for like no reason. Yeah. And I had like 300,000 followers or some oh, shit, shit like that. I mean, yeah. it was a lot. And, um, it, like, there's – it's not like I was actively doing anything. Mm-mm. I would just make a blog post and share it to Twitter. I mean, it was literally – No, and, just, and I wasn't 
I don't do anything like that's uh, what would you call it? Uh, where it should be taken off. Yeah. The only thing I'm doing is like dumb videos or fucking drinking beer or something. Yeah. I mean, that's just normal shit. Not nothing that's controversial at all. Yeah. Like that should have been took it down. So I don't get it. Yeah, with a, with a Twitter, as I just said, fuck it for like a year. Then I just created a new one. I got like four hundred followers now, or some some. Stupid well, yeah, and it's follower. harder to build a following than it was before. I think. Oh yeah, I started yeah. Twitter when it first started. Yeah, and it was like all text messaging type. Right, of right, shit. right. Yeah, and it was like, it was stupid then, you know, because it was you're like, I'm going to go to school. Right. Was, yeah. You know, or whatever. It was just yeah. stupid. Um, but I did it because I thought it might help the business. Well, yeah, anything would help. It's just like a, like a TV channel, right? Like you have Instagram, Facebook, all that, all the all the social media is, is just like you know how ABC, NBC, Fox is. It's the mm-hmm. same type of deal. Mm-hmm. So I want to promote. It's free promotion on everything. Mm-hmm. You want to get your name out there, your business out there, and everything, so everybody sees it, no matter what it is. I mean, anything that ever started up, like a Tic Tac started up, somebody said it was getting popular. Right, hot, let's get on there, get my name on there, you know, and. And just regurgitate the videos, and people will see it, and you know, build a following. You don't know do how big it's going to get. Do you see the same response from each? Like it's for a while. I haven't done shit on my own Instagram because I'm doing the Elite FTS one, you know, socials now. But on my own, I would do like reaction things. You know, it's like a duet. So like yeah, no, I I, I saw those. Yeah, scream at them. Right, right. And it would do like well, just comment wise, or just the way people on on here. But then on like TikTok, it would just get fucking blasted. You it know, wouldn't be any good on there. Different audiences. Definitely, yeah. Different I I, I see a bigger, the biggest. No, the views. I mean, the views are good. It's just which direction. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the comments and on TikTok's way different than the comments that are on yeah, Instagram. Yeah. I agree with that. 100%. Which is way more negative, but I don't yeah. give a fuck because there's way more of them. Yes. Yeah, you I don't give a fuck about what anybody says as long yeah. as they're commenting. Because there's you a know, lot. Yeah. You go look at some comment, and it's some <laughs> fucking guy with, like, two followers. Like, every time it's a bad comment, it's some guy with two followers. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like. I'm like, who's this guy? <laughs> then I'll fucking pin it, you know? This <laughs> comment's <laughs> pinned. <laughs> fuck you, you prick. Yeah. And then, th- then his fucking shit will be gone. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, he's erasing his stuff. It's like, now he's never going to comment again. It's like, mm-hmm. fuck. <laughs> right. Pin that comment. <laughs> I'm going to have another beer you mind. Nope. Nope. I figured it Well, yeah, four. <clears throat> yeah, we're, we're only at four. We're good. Probably about five or six. Yeah. We're gonna have to take now, a leak. <laughs> with um, w- at what point during your journey did you meet your wife? Um, geez, probably. What is that? Twenty? Was it twenty four? So think. is that 20? still college? No, I, I've been out for a couple years, and uh, I met her at Country Thunder. The fuck is that? It is a fucking. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's a country music festival for four days where you camp out, a hundred thousand people, and you get drunk, and it is just a shit show. Okay. And it's in uh, Twin Lakes, Wisconsin. <laughs> so I would go every year since I was like eighteen or something, seventeen, eighteen, and I'd always throw a couch in the back of my pickup truck, and that's where I'd sleep in for Country Thunder. I'd find one in the spring, leave it back there all summer, and then when I go to Country Thunder, I bring ten cases of beer, two packs of hot dogs, and my couch. That's okay. it. Yeah. That's all I brought. And uh, I'd pass out, put the couch down on the ground. I never had a tent, never had nothing, sleep outside on the couch every night. Um, and then uh, we had one year, I noticed uh, a good-looking girl that uh, was across the way from me, setting her tent up, and I'm sitting on my couch drinking a beer. I'm like, man, that chick looks just like Jessica Beale. But I bet she's a real bitch, you know. <laughs> and uh, I go and talk to her, and, and she said, like, the first thing I said to her was, slap me in the face, sir, she can't, or something stupid, I guess. Yeah. So she slapped me in the face, you know, and she thought I was an idiot the first day, and then the second day, you know, she she liked me. Yeah. So, you know, we drank a lot of beer together, and, and then it's been a love story ever since. So you know? she she knows you're, she knew you're an idiot. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, she, yeah, exactly. She knew from the start <laughs> I was a complete idiot. Yeah. So anything that happens, she knows I'm an idiot. I mean, yeah. it's your fault. You already know I'm an idiot. You married yeah. me. Yeah. So where I'm where I'm going with this is throughout this journey of you becoming more of a social idiot. Let's just go that way. Yeah. Um. Obviously, she's behind it all because it's who you are. Yeah. Or, I, or she? Has there ever been a point? Well, time I've always like, what the fuck are you doing? So I've always been this way that even before there was cameras. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So I was this way doing really dumb shit before there's any social media. I mean, just always the same. I just happened to start putting it on the internet. Mm-hmm. You know, so locally I was really well known, but I wasn't well known you know, like in the country or something. You know? We, yeah. 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 You know, we travel places across the country. And, you know, I remember people started recognizing me, 
and she was like, oh, all these people know who you are. Like, we'd be in Virginia Beach somewhere. You know, people had always recognized me. And she's like, but we're not making any money off this. Mm-hmm. You know, I said, well, eventually we'll make money off it somehow. I don't know. You know, mm-hmm. and that's how we started our brand. But I forget what I was talking about. So she was the one that's trying to figure out how to monetize this yeah. thing. Yeah. It's okay. like everybody knows you, but you're, we're making nothing off of it. Yeah. Like you're, you're. It's actually costing you. Yeah. <laughs> you're gaining popularity, but we, we're not making anything off of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, she always knew I was an idiot, you know, I'm just who I am. Mm-hmm. And then we started, yeah, I just started putting it on social media. And, you know, that's how so when you start doing some of these stunts, I mean, obviously she cares about you, at least I think she Oh, does, geez, right? yeah. Like, so, oh, yeah, yeah, this is a good story. <laughs> I thought of an idea of benching or overhead pressing on top of a barbell. I put eight plates on the bottom of a barbell, put a barbell through it, put one plate up top. And I stood on top of it. So I'm standing on top of a barbell in the ground with the woods behind me. And I was going to overhead press like 135 at mm-hmm. the same time. Well, I got up there, and the fucking thing's just shaking, like, terribly. It's spinning, shaking. And I'm thinking I'm going to die. My wife sees it from the kitchen as she's doing the dishes. <laughs> Starts yelling at me and my buddy Cam. If you fucking lose your dick, I'm going to marry another guy. Like, all this shit. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, what are you talking about? You know, and, and, like, she was upset. Some of the stuff she gets upset about when it's, like, really... Something could go awry and be real bad. Yeah. And uh, but other than that, no, she's pretty supportive. Like, she'll think of dumb stuff for me to do sometimes. Okay. You What's know? one example of that? Um, shit. I'm trying to think. What's the dumbest thing that she's – oh, yeah, the e-bike. Yeah, that's it, the e-bike. So I got an e-bike from a company that sent me, you know. So they sent me a free e-bike, so I'm going to do, a, like, a promotional video for them. What is an e-bike? It's like an electric bicycle that goes 25 miles an hour. Oh, so I take an electrical bicycle, and I take this, this, this fat guy. He's uh, my buddy. He's, like, 350 pounds, and I put a uh, plywood, piece of plywood on top of him. We light the plywood on fire, right, as a ramp, and I take up from the hill, and I come down the hill going, like, 30 miles an hour. So the fat guy is the, the wedge for the ramp. Yep. On fire. On fire. All right. And we're going down. I'm going down at 30 miles an hour. At this thing, you know, because you're going downhill, getting a little speed. I hit the. I've never jumped anything in my life. I have no idea what I'm doing. I jump it, fucking fly off the bike. My leg makes a backward, like a backwards J. Looks like I tore everything in my leg. I thought I had a compound fracture. I mean, it was the worst. Fucking bikes, fucking broken in half. Shits everywhere. My leg made a J. I mean, it was terrible. And uh, I couldn't walk for like six weeks. Mm-hmm. Never went to the doctor. I benched that night. Mm-hmm. I, I, I said, hey, I think I have a compound fracture. We checked my leg. I was fine. My leg swelled up like eight times the size, right? And uh, and this was her idea. That was her idea. And this, it fucked you up. Big time. One of the worst and ones. And she was like, she was real upset about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she was very upset. It was it was bad. And uh, I mean, everything turned out good. Yeah. Now, I, I ended up benching. I, I put my leg up in the air. We put a, put a chair out there, benched that night. Went to work the next morning, could barely walk. And uh, after about a month, I was all right. Yeah. So, yeah, that was that was one of her ideas. The, um, the supplements came in not too long ago, like a year ago maybe, right? Yeah, we started them maybe two years ago. It's been it's tough with the uh, with COVID. It's been kind of yeah, hard. Yeah, on. was that her idea? Was that your who's no, idea? One hundred percent my idea. Okay, I uh, I've been sponsored by a few different supplement companies, yeah. Redcon One, some of these other guys, and uh, they weren't paying me too much, you know. And, and I got flown out to uh, the Olympia for a certain company, and they were gonna sponsor me, and uh, they offered me like pennies on the dollar, like way less than I was making for the last company. Yeah, and I said oh, I'm not gonna sign for that. So I was like, hey. I told my wife, hey, I got connections. I know people that know, you know, manufacturers and stuff. Let's just make – I could sell a pre-workout. Yeah. I'll make my own pre-workout. Let's just go that route. So I did and uh, went back and forth with these guys for about four months. Got it down. Perfect. Love the pre-workout. Let's get stupid. Um, it's fucking my favorite pre-workout of all time. That's all I ever take. I take tons of it. Yeah. Um, I gave it to all my friends. They said this is the craziest pre-workout they ever had. I said we got a winner when we are you know, sampling it. Mm-hmm. Flavor spot on. Everything was good, and, uh, yeah, we just went with that. You know, one of my buddies is an artist. He, he kind of helped me with the design of it and everything, and uh, I'm definitely glad I went with that, too. Same with yeah. the apparel and same with the, the, the pre-workout. We have amino acids and stuff, and we got a bunch of flavors. Prison Punch. Uh, what is it? Let's Get Stupid Prison Punch. White Lightning. Ring of Fire. That's coming out soon. Ring of Fire. Ring of Fire. It tastes just like Fireball Whiskey. That's mm-hmm. a good one. Um Local unicorn. Uh, what else have we got? I don't know, but it, yeah, it worked out great. Great flavors and everything worked out. So yeah, 
I'm really glad, really happy with that too. Well, I was wondering what spawned that because that's a that's a saturated industry. Oh yeah, but, well, but I, it's not. It is and it isn't, right? Yeah, that's a. I reached out to a couple of guys that are like Juji yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and uh, Tony, the real tactical guy, and some of these other guys that are you know in the industry and know their stuff. And I said, hey, what do you think? about making a pre-workout and everybody that I reached out to is like, yeah, it's too saturated. That's all. They, they all said it. Well, I think it depends on what I said. So is the fucking apparel business yeah. and I'm killing yeah, it in the apparel yeah, business. Yeah, so yeah. same shit. Well, I, th I think it's, if you have a brand and you have a brand name, mm -hmm. right. As, as you have, and a lot of other people in the industry have people want to support you. Mm -hmm. Right. So Correct. if they're going to buy a pre-workout anyhow, they'd rather buy it from somebody. They and it, support. it's fucking good. You yeah, know, if you have it, yeah. you have to, we have, we have a lot of repeat buyers, so you have to have a good product. I'm not going to yeah. put out a piece of shit, you know? Yeah. So that's another thing. It has to be good because you want them to repeat buy yes. and support you. So that's well, what's so been Yeah, consumable is, yeah. Like, is a, yeah. it's a big yeah, thing. Yeah, it can't be terrible. No, it's a good thing. It's, yeah. It's, it's one of the things I suck at. Yeah. I don't have consumables. <laughs> you know, when you sell shit that lasts 10, 15 years, it becomes a problem. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. People buy it one time <laughs> their the whole life. And we're going to take that bench, by the way, with yeah. us at home. We're going to put it in the back of the van. <laughs> What's um, what's a, I don't want to say stunt. What what's a bucket? Let's just call it a stunt. I don't know what else to fucking call these yeah. things. What's one that's on you, that you want to get done that you haven't been able to get done? To light myself on fire. To light yourself on fire. Yeah, I talked to a guy that was in the stunt industry. Like he's a stunt man, like one of the best stunt men. This guy Luke Hawks. He knows a lot of these stunt guys. He's a stunt guy, and uh, I talked to him on the phone about it. And you have to have a license to get this gel that you put on you and all that. And I've been wanting to do it for like two or three years and just haven't got together with this guy. But, yeah, put that gel on, light my whole body on fire except for my head, and then have girls roasting marshmallows on me while I'm over at pressing like 300 pounds. Yeah. So that's kind of – that's one of the big ones I, I want to do. I've been wanting to do it for years. I just haven't got together with these guys yet to get it done because mm -hmm. I can't do it myself. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And they said you can only be lit on fire for like 10 seconds because it gets too hot. Well, I – well, you need a fast mar roasty marshmallow then. Well, that's true. But I think it's just <laughs> funny if they're—I mean—they're I mean, they're not going to be yeah, able to roast yeah, whole yeah. marshmallow. No, I get it. But if they're just roasting it on me, and I'm lifting above my head, and I'm yeah. completely on fire except for my head. Yeah. I think it would be fucking hilarious, and and I've never seen anybody do that. Yeah. So what's another one? Um, shit. That was probably the biggest one. Um, another one is definitely this year because I got this boat. And there's a lot of snowstorms where we live. It seemed the last boat thing didn't work so well. Yeah, I know, I know. But, I, <laughs> but we got to use the boat because we got a boat just sitting out in the woods right now. So I was going to have uh, one of my buddies pull it with his four-wheeler, and then uh, I was going to be doing something in it and uh, just going down the road and whipping shitties and make the boat fly over. So I'd go flying out of it too, you know, like whip it yeah. around and have maybe people skiing on the back of it or something like that. So I was trying to think of winter videos, like a good Christmas video, something like that. I like good. Well, you need snow too. Uh, you have yeah. So okay. next snowfall, we got to do it. Yeah. I think we're getting three inches Thursday. But how long did it? Is it still there now? No, no, no. I'm saying this Thursday. Oh, okay, okay. It's supposed to snow, so it's got to be fresh too. Yeah, just so got to go down the with road. You, with it. I mean, the last couple of years, does it stick very long? Because oh, here yeah. it will snow and it won't stick. For oh no, no, no! Hell no, no. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. No, we get. Man, we get a lot of snow where we're at. Oh, do you? Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah. And I live out in the middle of nowhere too. Yeah. So there's fields everywhere. I'd like to do it right down the main road, though. Yeah. So, like, Dexter snow shit. Oh, yeah. Big time. <laughs> yeah. So, there's your other video there. Mm -hmm. You just fucking kill somebody. Yeah, Dexter. Uh, <laughs> that's one of my favorite shows. I love yeah. that show. Dexter Kill Room. Yeah. Have you seen the, the latest uh, series? Yeah, uh, where, he, where, he, where he went. I didn't see it. It's on New Showtime, right? Last yeah, year. yeah. I haven't seen the new one yet. No, it's Where like he comes kid. back as a fucking whatever. He comes back as a mountain man or something. Yeah, and his it's kid finds it. Yeah. So I, he's like. Oh, I didn't watch it. No, Don't I ain't tell gonna me. Say, I ain't going to say anything. All right, all right. Yeah, because no, I want to watch it. I like the original Dexter. No, it's it's fucking good. Yeah. It, I'll have to watch it. I don't sure. know if it's as good as the original, but for me personally, I would put it pretty damn close. I got to watch it. Yeah. I love Dexter. No, it's, it's some good shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if somebody is trying to, because right now social media and Instagram and you know all these fucking kids, everything's a, you know there's two sides, right? There's people that are gonna bitch about it, mm -hmm. people that are trying to use it, but a lot of people are trying to build their following, right? Yeah. Um, especially in this industry, mm -hmm. they're trying all different kinds of right. ways. If you kind of organically did it, but then 
didn't kind of organic then you start thinking about it mm-hmm. if you were to go back or advise these kids now what would you tell them to do not do you know for instance royal you know protecting your yeah your, definitely your, you try things. to get your video and you don't know what's going to be good though too you know yeah i mean a lot of these guys are starting at yeah. no followers exactly right? so the biggest thing is to entertain because people just keep scrolling but if you can entertain somebody, and you've got to do it quick, too, because if it's like two seconds in and you look like you're just walking around, I'm not going to watch that. You've got to mm-hmm. skip right through it. So it's got to be quick. got to grab your attention, right? And then it's got to be like shit like you haven't seen before. Always thought that. What haven't I seen before? <laughs> something that's better than something you've seen but a little bit of a, your spin on it. Mm-hmm. So anytime I think of a video, I, I like, the, like a video, I, something I've never, I've never seen. Because if you haven't seen something and it's crazy, you're going to watch it. Mm-hmm. That's going to give you views. That's going to give you followers. So just think of – and everything's been done. You know, so many people have copied me. It's crazy. You know, everything has been done, and it's just hard. It's hard. Yeah. Well, I think so my advice is drink beer and think yeah, of something stupid. Yeah, yeah, well, I think the key thing for you, though, was you took you – took, you know, out of the things that you love, you took two of them and put them together. That's true, yeah. Where I think what a lot of people are trying to do is to take the one thing that they love, uh-huh. say if it's just powerlifting, right, and just do that. That's and you've good seen, luck. Yeah, I know it's tough because I've seen it's to me. I've seen all that. I've yeah. seen people bench five, six, seven, whatever pounds. I've seen people squat a thousand. I've seen all that. It's it's great, but normal people are going to skim right by it. You know, yeah. so it's tough. Um, even the powerlifters, there's a casino. Yeah, right it's just, it, you know. Man, I've seen this. It's, mm-hmm. it's great, but people, it's, they become immune to it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So I kind of realized that right at the bat when I was like benching 500 pounds and people didn't care. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, this is fucking great, but nobody wants to watch it. Mm-hmm. So I got to think of something else, I guess, you know. <laughs> it's true, though. Nobody gives a fuck about your 500 pounds. Nobody pounds gives a fuck. Your except for me. Squat. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's just, true. It's, a very it's so small true. percentage of people care. Right, right. That's right? true. And then the ones that do are either going to be jealous of because uh-huh. of how you did it. 100%. You know, or try to belittle how you did it. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Right. Oh, that wasn't deep enough. Uh, yeah, that you, you, you fucking, that was a soft handoff or whatever, you know. Yes. You see that all the time. Yeah. Especially in the meat. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. That's, well, that's the other thing is, you know, meat clips and stuff like that only go so far mm-hmm. that actually i in my opinion if, if it's somebody that they're trying to build their following those are the worst clips you want to post because now you're going to use the same background as fucking everybody else yeah. on that same day right you know yeah so how how is that it's any so different? it's so boring yeah right yeah it, you can't be boring you have to be different i don't want i've never my whole life never wanted to be like anybody else you know i always wanted to be who i am i want to stick out you know what I mean? I don't – It's just be different. Yeah. You know? You have to be different to stick out. If you want to get a following, you can't be like everybody else. What do you think holds you back from that next level that you want to be at? Um, my job, you know, my, my regular job, that, because uh, that takes up a lot of time. Um, if I had only my time to do my business and social media and stuff like that, I think I could build way bigger following – uh, way more stuff. Like you, you got to post a ton. I mean, that's tough. Yeah. You got to post a ton. Like you said, Juji, he fucking writes his stuff down. He gives game plans that, you know, I mean, it, it's just, just a lot of work, mm-hmm. you know? And then when you got a full-time job and a family, I mean, it's, and then on top of that, I got to train and then you got to fucking do your social media. You got to do everything else that. And, uh, you know, also like having people record for you, like I said, building a YouTube or anything else, I mean, you got to have, other people do it. I can't mm-hmm. do it. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm training. I don't even want to like have. To, I, it's I don't even want to record, but yeah. you have to record. Well, see, that gets to another level though, because now you got to pay that person. That's so now true. if you hire somebody to do that, yeah. Now the monetization becomes a whole nother game. Exactly. Yeah, that's so true. Now it has to monetize to be able, and monetize what that person is going to cost. And I don't know when I'm going to do stuff because my schedule changes all the time. On top of that, so it mm-hmm. makes it even harder. So it's just. Uh, just, yeah, pretty much all that in a nutshell. But, yeah, definitely, I'd like to grow my YouTube bigger. I think YouTube is big, and I think it's going to keep getting bigger and always be big. Yeah. But it's a lot harder to develop a YouTube page than it is Instagram. Instagram's easy. I put my phone over there. You record your bench. I record this. I record you doing something dumb for 10 seconds. Yeah. It takes two minutes to edit. 
boom, it's on the internet, and it's fucking 800,000 people see it. Well, shorts are now another story. That's though, true. Yeah, right? so, I do. That's why I put shorts up there all the yeah. time. That's how I grew a bigger following on YouTube. Yeah. But making YouTube, you, people want to see it, like, actually be professional somewhat. Yeah. Instagram, don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? It's like raw footage is sometimes better than yeah. footage that you, like, take. I've taken time to, like, really do it up real good and look nice. Yeah. People shit on it. They just want that raw footage, you know? Yeah. That, well, that's you know, you always can't better. take your phone and, like, turn it to horizontal and film it that way, and there's your YouTube. What? So, like, here's vertical, right? Yeah, right. Just oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There. That's that's true, yeah. <laughs> right. But don't overthink it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm, not, I'm very bad at thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but then the problem becomes, fuck, should it be this way? Oh, I know, yeah, way? that's another thing that's going on now. <laughs> because I used to always film. Is yeah, that, is yeah. that horizontal? Yeah, yeah. And it vertical? Yeah. So now I'm like, well, I got to film vertically because I got to do fucking shorts and you got to do the fucking reels and everything yeah. else, you know? So you just need two phones. That's the next step. <laughs> yeah. You got to get two phones. Mm-hmm. You want one of these beers? No. All right. That's, I've never acquired a taste for it. So even since when I was younger. Well, yeah, when you're younger, it don't taste very like good. Shit. Well, and even when I was older, it was just. It's terrible. Well, I mean, what like, are you why drinking? Why would anybody though? drink that shit? Well, uh, <laughs> it makes you feel good, for yeah. one. That's good. Um, ice cold. It's yeah. Very good, especially if you work all day and you have a cold beer. That feels, that tastes real good. It's just so good a soda. No, I don't drink soda. I never drink a soda. I never drink a soda. Maybe a diet. <laughs> diet Dr. Pepper with vodka. <laughs> I've never drank like a regular soda. Yeah, yeah. No, if I, you know, when you get older, like Arnold said, you drink beer. Yeah. Because it's cold. That's the only reason that you've given me right now. Oh, it makes you feel good. It that makes was reason too. Right. It's cold. It makes you feel good. Um, geez, I don't know. I guess that's it. <laughs> I guess you're right. Maybe I'm going to stop drinking. <laughs> this is the last beer I'm going to have. <laughs> well, then why Miller Lite? Uh, less carbs, less calories. Now, I got to maintain a physique here, man. Yeah. Can't be drinking Bud Heavy or some Budweiser. Yeah. Now, so what if Old Milwaukee gives you the sponsorship? I'm going with Old Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> I think our Hams reached out to me, or some old company reached out to me once a couple years ago. I thought it was Hams or something. Yeah. I didn't even know they're still around, and they they wanted to they wanted to sponsor me or something. Nothing ever happened out of it. Yeah. Miller Lights contact, and they sent me stuff, but they never nothing ever came about it. I mean, they sent me like a bag and a T-shirt, and I'm like. Even when I was in Muscle and Fitness, I was chugging Miller Lite in the fucking photos. And Muscle and Fitness reached out to him like, hey, listen, uh, we're doing this, and he's drinking your product, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they never reached out back to him. So I kind of got upset with Miller Lite, and I, I said I was going to switch, and then I didn't. Well, I'm obviously. still drinking Miller Lite. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's here. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, I still drink Miller Lite. But, yeah, less carbs, less calories, you know. What would be a misconception people have about you? They drink know, beer every day. Yes. That's not true. Yeah, yeah, I can't I can't look like this drinking beer every day. It's physically impossible, you know? So, like I said before, usually if I drink, if I drink during the week, I, I usually drink like a mixed drink or two, right? Um, and, and what I, would I have that to be? train. I'd be usually Tito's and Diet Dr. Pepper. I like that a lot. Um, well, wait a minute. I missed something. The Cheetos. So, you drink Cheetos after- vodka. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Not okay. Cheetos. I'm like, Cheetos, no, man. No, no, what no, the no, fuck no, are you Cheetos. talking about? It would be Cheetos. Like, now you're talking my food. Yeah. I like che- Flaming Hot Cheetos is good, too. <laughs> it's usually after I drink all the beer. Yeah. Um, usually, like, Tito's and Diet Dr. Pepper. I call it coffee. Okay. I drink that. Um, and then, like, the weekend, especially, uh, like, there's summer at events, if I'm on vacation, um, I drink a beer. Mm-hmm. You know, I love beer. But you can't drink beer all the time or, you know, it, it affects, like, your lifting, obviously, and everything else. But, um. Uh, you know, you can drink beer, obviously. I drink beer. I drink a lot of beer. But during the week, I'm very strict, you know, usually with my diet, mm-hmm. my training. I don't let it disrupt my training at all, you know. And uh, I think I got that from a young age. You know, my dad always said, you know, training comes first. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, you fucking do your training, you do everything else, and then you have fun. So I always train. That's, a, that's your light at the end of the tunnel. The light at the end of your tunnel is a beer, nice cold beer. Yeah. So you do your job, and then you drink beer. Mm-hmm. So even if I'm um, like a Saturday or whatever my weekend is, I'm training always first. I never skip training to drink. Mm-hmm. So training comes first, then the drinking comes. And then how? What's how many beers on average per week? Shit, I. It well, could, let's let's. It could be anywhere well, let's from take, like. Let's take your two. Let's take your two days off work. Right. Out. So. Oh, I, I would say just a, just a handful of beers. All right. So. Or a couple of mixed drinks, handful of beers yeah. during during the week during my work week. Yeah. 
I don't drink that often. It just depends. Yeah. You know, it depends on an average week of my work week. I don't drink that often. At well, all. there's a lot you got going on. Yeah. Like you got a full time job. It's family. just so much. There's a yeah. lot of shit. You know? So that's why, like, at the end of the night, when I'm, you know, done all my shit, done my training, went to work, you know, put the kids to bed and shit like that, you know, I'll have a couple of drinks or something, maybe. Yeah. It just depends on the day. Yeah. Know? Um, you know, well, as your business is growing too, that's also cutting into your beer time during the week. Yes, big time. <laughs> um, so my wife, I mean, she runs most of the business. Mm-hmm. You know, she, um, especially the last couple, what, two weeks, uh, she lives in the shop. I mean, she's been in the shop this morning, since eight o'clock till mm-hmm. she go. You know, the kids come home from school, hangs out with the kids, eight p.m. puts the kids to bed. She's back in the shop like two a.m. All the Black Friday, Cyber oh, Monday, yeah. yeah. All that, and then all this, all the the, the selling of the testicle shirts. Uh, oh, I mean, okay. she's been getting yeah, upset. Yeah, she's yeah. like, fuck, you know, so many more. Well, she got to so make them more. too, right? Yeah. yeah. So she's got to make them all, then ship them all. I mean, you know, we were stocked for, for the Black Friday sale pretty good, you know, and and then, you know, the testicle stuff comes out, and then it's just just like a Black Friday sale pretty much the last couple of days. It's the same thing. It's, mm-hmm. So, yeah, she, she does all that, you know. I don't do much of that. I, I'm usually the guy promoting it, mm-hmm. you know, doing the idiot stuff, and she does the smart stuff. So mm-hmm. it works out pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, on the weekend, the um, obviously the drinking is going to increase. But for, <laughs> for, for, the, for the entrepreneurs out there that are in the same boat, mm-hmm. how much of your weekend involves your – it's hard to say it's work, right? Cause oh, it, it, a lot. Yeah. A lot. I'll wake, I wake up, you know, on my day off, and I immediately start working. Yeah, I work till noon on my day off. Every Monday, right now, I have Mondays and Tuesdays off. Mm-hmm. So every Monday morning, I work till noon, and then afternoon, that's just on the computer, right? Mm-hmm. And then afternoon, you know, I uh, usually train. I train at, at about noon or one o'clock, um, and then you know we got to make all your posts. You got to make all your bullshit. You got to think of an idea for a video. Uh, try to do all that, and then you got to promote your products on top of that, or write an email, or do this, or do mm-hmm. that. So it's a lot of that too. My days off are, are a lot, you know. And then working with the manufacturers to make the supplements and all that bullshit, you know, that's sometimes that's a pain in the ass. So it's a lot of that as well, you know. So mm-hmm. and then at night, usually, and, and it, you know, depending, you know, you let loose. Yeah. Drink your beer, you know, have a good time, eat some pizza. You know, I mean, my favorite food's pizza, pizza and beer. I wish I could eat that every day. I wish I could do that every day. But, you know, I'd look like a complete slob if I did. So, yeah. you know, you got to limit it. You know, I love Jack's Pizza. You ever had that? It's no. a Midwest thing, I think. Uh-huh. Or maybe it's an Illinois, Wisconsin thing. I tried to get a Jack sponsorship. It's a good thing they didn't give me one, though. It's just a, it's I not, have a pizzazz. No, it yeah, spins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I throw a frozen pizza. Yeah. <laughs> I make frozen pizzas, drink beer. I mean, there's nothing better than that. No. And on I mean, a cold winter be, night, yeah, what, what's yeah. better than a cold beer and a, and a warm Jack's Pizza? Well, anything that's food that's sponsored is going to be a good thing. doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Because it's less. I have money. another beer in mind. <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> You're all good. Yeah, no, Icon Meals is good too. They they sponsor me. They've been sponsors of mine for years. And they you know, they always send me my meals out every week and, and that helps a lot, you know. Yeah. Before that I used to have to always make my meals, make pounds of rice and pounds of meat and whatever. Cups of rice, pounds of meat. Um but since uh Icon Meals has sponsored me for the last five, six, seven, whatever it's been, mm-hmm. I mean they help a ton. I mean it's so easy. Yeah, pop it in two minutes. So that's what I got in here. My, you know, today I've already eaten two Icon meals. Pop them in the microwave. Good to go. You know, with every your, time with, I travel, Icon meals and, and beer. Yeah, with your training now, is it's all bench related, or are you still focusing on no the I, squat bench? No, I train everything. Yeah, everything. So a lot of people don't train shoulders like on their own day. I always have trained shoulders in my own day. I think a strong shoulder is always equal a strong bench. Some people don't agree with that. Yeah. But I always love – I mean, I've overhead pressed heavy for – since I can remember. Yeah. You know, um, like last week we were doing, you know, somewhere in the 300-pound range for reps uh, of seated overhead pressing. I love standing overhead pressing as well. Uh, and then we do like a light bench that day too, like a speed bench or, or a close grip banded bench, something like that. Yeah. Um, and then Tuesday's like a back day. Uh, deadlifts back, stuff like that. Wednesday, off or a light leg workout. Mm-hmm. Thursday is always Thursday night. It's my bench night. That's bench night in America, we call it. Yeah. Um, so that's the main day. That's the main day. That's yeah. the big – that's when everybody comes, bench mm-hmm. night. Um, and then Saturday is usually like squats, legs, all that shit. So, mm-hmm. And then maybe arms here or there thrown in um, somewhere in there, maybe a Sunday, Friday, whatever. 
uh, any aspirations to compete again, or how do you? Oh, like a motherfucker. Yeah. I want to be. I want to bench 500 pounds at the platform again. Mm -hmm. That's biggest goal. I will have. I will take my singlet off. I will throw it on the bench, and I'll be done. That's it. 500 pounds with two reattached pec tendons, you mm -hmm. know, on the platform. Mm -hmm. And I'm very close to doing it again. Mm -hmm. And I'm 40 years old now. Yeah. So it makes it even tougher, you know, coming back from two pec tendon reattachments. Yeah. At an older age. Um, and, and then at 220 pounds as well. Where, how do, where do you plant that? Like, because it's, it's a goal of yours, right? Oh, or it's yeah. an objective. So, so you putting it that by end of next year, spring. I like, like to do it by the summer. All right. So at some point in time, you need to start training for it. Getting real serious. Yeah. yeah. How long or how far out is that? Probably six months. Okay. Hopefully. Yeah. You know, I'm right around the 470 range maybe right now. Yeah. You know, I, I smoked like 450 or whatever it was today. I mean, absolutely smoked it. Yeah. Uh, I feel super strong. I could probably hit 485 today, I bet. So where where Probably where, 15 where, pounds yeah. off. Where would you want to be six months out? You I, see what I'm saying? If it, six it, months out, I'd be hitting 500 100 pounds easily. Okay. In the weight room. Yeah. Before I even went to the event. Okay. 440, I should be able to do three, four times. Then what's that six months look for training for the event? Um, a lot of heavy triceps. Yeah. That's my weak point. Well, I just said, do you back the weight down? Back it down. Yeah. You know, do you start at eights or how do you? No, I, I like, yeah, fives or sevens. Okay. Uh, back it down, a lot of volume. Um, probably about 75, 80% range. So you're going to linearly peak into Yeah, that's thing. I've always done. Linear, right. Linearal, what is it? Linearal yeah. periodization, yeah, whatever yeah, the fuck yeah. you call it. Yeah. I've always done that. Um, so you're just looking for a benchmark now. Yep. Right? That's it. So it sounds to me like you want to get that benchmark before the end of the, the end of the Oh, year. hell yeah. Right. That's it, man. That's, that's it. That's everything. I'd rather die on the platform than miss 500 pounds. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So you get that indication on January, right? So mm -hmm. and then- And we're ready to rock. Yeah. So you're, say, 10, 15 pounds off right now. Yep. I think I got it all then. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be, it's going to be, it'll happen, and it's going to be a great day. Can't wait for that to happen. Yeah. And then how do you go that six months without being fucking stupid? What do you mean stupid? Stupid with your training. Mean, you still have to do the things that you have to do, right? I mean, just oh yeah, for, yeah, yeah. But there's 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 influencer stupid, right? And there's Huck Finn barbell stupid. There's Huck Flynn, but then there's just stupid stupid, right? Um, like going to Marks and trying to bench a fucking PR, yeah. probably stupid. stupid that was right? probably stupid, yeah. Right. So, what's the plan to not be stupid stupid? Hold on, let's pause. I got to pee. Yeah. We, I will get back to you on that. I got to pee real bad. Yeah, that works. That's my so if fear. we have uh, super chats, are there any questions that people have? Because as he's taking a piss, I can take somebody's question if they have that. Or if there's anything they want me to ask him, I can do that. Or I can just sit here and just talk to my fucking self because I do that most of my fucking life anyhow. Or I can start talking to my pretend friend, my imaginary friend. Individuals on Medicare. Or I can say our show is sponsored by AmericHealth.com backslash Table Talk. They're into hormone optimization and preventative medicine. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just fucking entertaining myself right now. Or you can go to EliteFTS.com. At some point, the sale is going to change. It's either going to change today or tomorrow. Depends upon when I get time to actually change the sale calendar. What's the next sale going to be? I don't know. I can't tell you because I'm doing a podcast right now and haven't even thought about it. I think our bands are on sale right now, but I'm not too sure. No, our apparel's on sale right now. Buy one, get one 50% off or some shit like that. So if anybody's, you know, on the Super Chats, tell me what you want to see on sale next. Because <laughs> that was just, uh, take that off of my decision tree. And we can go with that. I'm trying to think what the hell I need to put on sale next. Yoke bars are still on sale. There's another one. <laughs> so, I've been talking to my pretend friend, my imaginary friend. <laughs> Whew, in, in I've been holding that off for a while. I shouldn't have that pre-workout. Yeah, it could yeah. last a little longer. Yeah, I'm sure it's the pre-workout. <laughs> Was it the six beers? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's not. It's not the six beers at all. Mm -hmm. All right, where were we? Uh, what do you? Uh, what's the plan to not be stupid? Stupid. 
As in, like, going too heavy or something or yeah, yeah. doing stupid stuff. I mean, you've been doing this long enough. You know what lines you need to stay oh, within yeah. right. throughout a training cycle. Um, you know, when I'm – it's probably adding more bands and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. Not going so heavy as in um, weight-wise and getting real dumb with it. Maybe probably heavy bands, lighter weight, probably like 70% weight with heavy bands on it. And I never used bands until the last couple of years. What's ever. a heavy band for you? I don't even know what they weigh. I put like three-year bands on there. Yeah. I put the red, green, and uh, I got those. So um, doubled up. Yeah. Yeah. Red, green, orange. What did we put? Put like every band on there. Oh, shit. That's a lot. We put a ton of band tension yeah. on there. Yeah. Um, and I never use bands, and I, and I suck at bands. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because the top part of my bench is the, the weak part of my bench. Yeah. You know, I when I was at my strongest, I mean, I could put – shit anything off my chest fast mm-hmm. it was that that um that sticking point you know from uh you know that three quarters away up to lockout was where mm-hmm. you know i've had shit, i don't know 551 on my that lockout and a meet you know several two or three times and it's just right there i just couldn't right you know that's mm-hmm. the worst feeling it's, it's like somebody's standing on it mm-hmm. all i have to do is this you know so i try to work on that as much as i can and uh just, have you changed your grip since you tore your pack yeah it's it's in more yeah definitely in more um, my grips probably moved in quite a bit in the last four or five years because mm-hmm. it moved in a little bit after the first one and probably yeah. a CH more during, after the second one. Yeah. So one of the things I had to do with my pecs getting all fucked up is I also had to go to a suicide grip because it allowed me to tuck my elbows more. Oh yeah. Right. Because here I can, uh, here I can tuck like this. Yeah. So the more I can tuck, the more it keeps it here and takes it off of here. Huh, I'll have to try right? it. So I, yeah. you got to build the shit out of your you know, thumbless grip. Right, right, yeah. But with a full grip, I wasn't able to – you can only tuck so much. Yeah. You only turn so much. For me, because these are fucking bo- – I got holes, see, giant holes. Um, the one was just all muscle, but it, it starts right here. I mean, it's fucking huge. But um, anytime this would come out, yeah. it goes where there's nothing. There, there's nothing. It just, right. It just falls on the desk. So you like the suicide grip. Oh yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah so I, I, I too. a couple guys I've worked out with that are pretty big benchers, bench five, five fifty, six hundred. They've used suicide grips, and I, I've never, <clears throat> I've never tried the suicide grip. Yeah, now I never did until after I tore my pecs off. But I had to find a way to take this out. Yeah, or, or avoid this because right, here, yeah, because once that flies out, there's nothing there. I have everything. nothing there. I know. And um, so I had to find a way to get it in and tuck it in, and then that's where it is now. That I'm fucking just old and weak and beat up. I mm-hmm. go more to a thumbless grip, but right. I don't touch my chest very often either. Yeah. But that that might allow you to get your grip out another finger or two. Okay. And, and to be able to tuck it in. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll definitely try that. Yeah. And you'll feel it way more on your triceps, right? For me, it was like, okay, I can build my triceps. Yeah. I can't build that. Right. Yeah. 100%. You know, you know so it's like, give me something I can build. I can work with that. Yeah, that's that's uh, the next six months. That's all I want to concentrate on is building my triceps yeah. more. You know, my shoulders, my chest is very strong. I mean, my shoulders are probably stronger. It's my probably my strongest lift is my shoulder press. Yeah, out of every lift, um, I don't know. I've always been really strong in the shoulders. Yeah. I don't know why. Maybe my genetics or or what. But and I've also overhead pressed like my whole life as well. So. Yeah, and not many people do that. You know, not many people just have it one day of shoulders. They always put it in like as a like when they bench, they'll throw shoulders in, right? Yeah, it's like the back end. Yeah, yeah. And, and they just neglect them, I think, too much. Mm-hmm. I always, I mean, it's really heavy pressing two days a week, though. I mean, that's kind of tough, too. But, you know, I, I do you know over 300 pounds, like, shoulder press, and then I do, you know, a really heavy bench press the same week. But, I, I fuck, I've been doing that for years. On that shoulder press day, is that the primary movement? Is oh, the yeah. shoulder press, and then the close grips come after that? Yep, it would be heavy shoulder press right off the bat, and then uh, – yeah, that kind of goes back to how Craig used to train, though, right? You know, Tarkowski? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he trained that way. I never I, trained with him shoulders yeah, like that. No, I thought he did. Maybe he did. Maybe that's where I got it from. Yeah. Maybe I'm doing that, and not even thinking of that. Yeah. I'm not too sure. It just. Yeah. Well, he was reason, like one of the first guys to bench 800 pounds in a shirt or something, yeah, right? Yeah. No, he's, he was. He yeah, was bragging yeah, that to me, strong. like after I got to know him. Yeah. He was like, "Yeah, 94. I benched 800 pounds in yeah. his first one or something." Yeah. That bullshit. They brought yeah. out this old like you know Parle thing, whatever it was, that magazine. What was what was one of the more fucked up, or not fucked up, but one of the more oppressive things that you've seen with the guys that you've trained with over the years, not stunt wise, but just yeah. like, holy shit. Uh, 
I would say probably Lillibridge squatting. Lillibridge and uh, Derek Kendall when they're squatting like near a thousand pounds together mm-hmm. and going back and forth and like competing against each other for that at the same time. Um, that was awesome, you mm-hmm. know, seeing two guys go after that. Um, trying to think what else. Pro- when Eric deadlifted 900 pounds, you know, at the time, not many people deadlifted 900 pounds and he started bleeding. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That was crazy. I saw, I saw him like pass out after a squat too, you know, I love that. That fired me up. Um, I like people's like taking their bodies to the limit. You know, that fires me up. Like when you see a guy train so hard, like, you know, squatting 900 some pounds for reps or something and then just pass out. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that's fucking awesome. I love shit like that. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, just being around guys that were actually stronger than me, you know, because you you know, I at the time I hadn't seen people like who were stronger than me for a long time because I well, then you end up in my people. circle, <laughs> yeah. and then we get you know the strong, some of the strongest guys in the world. Yeah, I mean that was awesome. Yeah, I love that. It, that pushes you a lot. You know, that's yeah. what they always say: train with somebody that can that's that's stronger than you because that's going to push you, right? Mm-hmm. So that definitely pushed me. That was that was great. You know, with with all the expos and the traveling and all the stuff that you've done, what's um one of the, I don't want to say funniest stories, but one of the best times that you've had. Oh, know, uh, probably definitely one of my favorite times I ever had was Icon Meals had an event down in Dallas, Texas. They flew me in there, and I uh, I literally drank over a case of beer because I had a case of beer with me on ice, and we did a meet and greet, and it was all the Icon Meals team. Yeah. So I was, like, partnered, like, next to me. It was, like, Michael Hearn, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I'm sitting there drinking beer. He doesn't drink beer, right? So he saw me drink, and I paid a guy like 100 bucks to go get me another case of beer, and they did. So I drank part of another case of beer on top of that. And uh, after the event was over, those guys were like, hey, we're going to Destination Dallas to train tonight. And I said, yeah, I'll meet you guys there. They're like, yeah, right. You know, they saw me drink like 35 mm-hmm. beers or something. So no, I'll be there. So I showed up, and uh, Heath Evans, he's a football player, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, he just spot me. I went in there, and I said, I'm going to bench 500 pounds. I drank 50 beers, going to bench 500 pounds. You're like, bullshit. So I get under the bar, and I started training it. I think 225 or 315, it was like, felt like it was going up sideways. Like, when I laid in the bench, like, my, I was off balance, right? Mm-hmm. And I told, uh, I told Heath, I said, oh, I can't do this, man. Fucking, I'm, it's like, feels like I'm going sideways. He's like, don't be a pussy, do it. Said, All right, let's go. So I, then we got to, like, 455. Is my final like practice run, and I got Mike over there. I said, "Hey, Mike, I want you to cheat me in the steel chair. I'm gonna bench 500 pounds, 50 beers. It's all right." So I benched 455. I'm like, well, "I got this all day." And I have no idea if I got it or not. You know, I fucking shrank all fucking day. Mm-hmm. Mike comes, hits me in the head as hard as he can with a chair. I fucking fall backwards. I bench 500 pounds. Fucking drunker in hell. He hits me in the head with a chair again. I slam beers, and yeah, that, that was one of the best things. Probably the hardest bench I've ever done in my life, but the funniest, <laughs> craziest. Drank so many beers, couldn't believe it yeah. that I did it, you know. So that was that was an awesome. All right, so when you do that, right, so now you're thinking about that, yeah. right? And then your goal, right? <laughs> oh, I know. Now it's the bench 500. <laughs> I bench 500 pounds, like, what, four years ago, just yeah. drunker in hell, you know? Yeah. Like, it's crazy, man. Age that? catches up with you and too many pec tendon recoveries. Yeah, I was like, how's that sit with you? Because <laughs> It's like, I know it fuck. sucks, man. <laughs> yeah, there's a guy I trained with his cowboy cam, and he's just a little bit stronger in the bench than me, and he rubs it in every day because I was always fucking 75 pounds stronger than him in the bench constantly, mm-hmm. all the time. And he's like, you fucking old man, you pussy. You cocksucker. I'm going to get you, man. I'll mm-hmm. be back. I'll be back. Just trust me. <laughs> I'll be back. He benches like, you know, 50 more pounds than me in training or something, and I just get so pissed, you know. But I need that, yeah, you know. You yeah. need that push. Any aspirations for a total, though? No, I don't. I yeah. I don't think. Ever since I tore my hamstring, I have not pushed it past seven hundred pounds. I don't got no pop out of the hole. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, it just. Um, I still squat. I do a lot of. Uh, I bought a safety squat bar from you guys when mm-hmm. I right when I tore my pec tendon the second time. I immediately bought one from you guys, and that's why I trained with. Mm-hmm. Um, I do a lot of safety squat bars. I go up to like five, five eighty five, six hundred. Um, deadlifts, I pushed you know six fifty recently, but I don't know. You never know. Maybe, mm-hmm. you know, I never, I don't push those as much as I push a bench press. Yeah. Unless I'm competing, you know, 
Yeah. I do them. I love to do them. I love train. I have all aspects of training. But uh, no, I don't. My my favorite thing is the bench. I just love bench. It's upper body business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. When you think of your content creation, do you try to integrate it with your training? For instance, when, when I speak to Juji, it's like, okay, I do this stuff during this time of the year, this stuff during this time of the year. Or is it just, fuck it, let's just go. Oh, as in, as in training or as in me it's, doing videos? Well, Juju's a little bit different, right? Because he's he does got all these body like poly, phase. whatever he is. Yeah, so it's it, he's got these different phases, but yeah. he, the way he plans his content for the year is kind of based yeah. upon how his training. Speaking of that day. idiot Juju, I asked him. I said, "Hey, what do you what do I, what do I need to see out in, uh, when I go to lead FTS? Yeah, you know what I need to do, what I need to see, what should I be?" He goes, "Dude, it's London, Ohio." You're just going to lead. That's all. It's out there. Yeah, <laughs> so, I told you yeah, it's fucking bumper. That, that was hilarious. Yeah, because I asked him. <laughs> so what I need to see where they need to go. He goes, Yeah. Uh, there's nothing out there. It's London, Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's yes. funnier now. So uh, do you think like as, as let's say you here's when this meet's gonna be right. Right. Do you have certain content ideas that will happen closer? Oh to no, 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 no. All right. You know, there's uh. So they're separate. Yeah. Okay. I don't. Like I said before, I never – training comes first, mm-hmm. right? And then, like, uh, if we're going to do a dumb video or if I'm going to do a – whatever. That's always at the end. Mm-hmm. So I would never do a dumb video before I train, right? Mm-hmm. So training is first, and then if I think of a video, we do the video, and then we put it on Instagram, right? That's how it yeah. always has been. That's how we've always done it. Yeah. You know, I think the only time – like, there's times, like, obviously when I – you know, ice skated, deadlifted 500 pounds on ice skates when it's below zero. Well, yeah, we took weights from the gym, went to an ice rink. Well, that's not training. Like, yeah. but if we're in a gym, we train and then we do a video. So training always comes first. Training comes first before for dumb videos. Training comes first before drinking beer. Like I trained today. Mm-hmm. Now I drink beer. I didn't drink beer while I was training. Once yeah. in a while, I might drink a beer or two when I'm training well, for a video. But yeah, you beer bong, you know. Mm. That was for a video, though. Yeah, I, yeah. But that's why you're training. Yeah, well, that's true. You know, my training to begin, yeah, to look good naked was why I started training to be better at football. Mm-hmm. You know? Do you know a guy named Barzine? I, I can't remember his last name. He was in the video with me that when I benched 500 pounds with the beer bong, he was spotting me. Yes, I I know the name. Yeah. If I if I saw the, I would know. Yeah. Yeah. So how would that whole idea come about? Well, that was the when I was up in a tower and I, I put those two together. Like, yeah. Okay. You know, so that was the first one. Of the that, first that was one of the first. Yeah, one. one of the first ones. That and then uh, I thought of rollerblades and squatting five hundred pounds. So how did that first one hit? It hit pretty good, but not like the others hit. Yeah. Like it started going good, and then I rollerbladed, squatted five hundred pounds on rollerblades, and then this one guy said something to me on the internet. Said uh, this guy T Cummings. He says, uh, "I don't rollerblade." in the weight room or some bullshit. And I said, fuck you, you cocksucker. Mm-hmm. Something like that. And then, anyways, we ended up competing at the uh, the animal cage that yeah. year. Yeah, And we deadlifted, which deadlift is my – that's my worst lift probably. Yeah, yeah. But I still deadlifted like 765 out there. We ended up tying. And, uh, yeah, anyways, that's how that, that – all that stuff. People – sometimes people will shit on that, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, you just see me – all he does is like um, – he's on rollerblades. He doesn't do anything. He's not a real power lifter. He's not this – Huh? I I never understood that. No, I don't right. either. I, that, that's weird to me because like, what, what real power lifter is going to deadlift on a roller you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not like something you're going to do in a meet. Mm-hmm. Like, so just the fact that you're rolling up on roller blades kind of tells you that this isn't like a real power lifter yeah. video. Yeah. Right. 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 Some people are just uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know how to explain it, but they. They. Th- like I said before, they think like all I do is like stupid stuff, right? Yeah. But you can't just all do stupid stuff. That's just like in the at the end. Yeah, but mm. let's let, let me throw this at you that right. So you got that community that's gonna you know rip you for what you're doing, mm-hmm. right? Now here you're at a trade show, you're somewhere like that. Mm-hmm. How many times does somebody from that community come to you? And oh, say, they're like your best friend and say, no, no, not that, but say, look, I, how do you think I could get my views up? Oh yeah, that too, a hundred percent. You know, it's yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, so go ahead and, you know, criticize the, the, the shit my ass, right. but then ask me how you yeah. can increase your following. Exactly. No, <laughs> uh, that, that's happened before many times. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. But that's, I'm going to grab that's, another beer if you mind. Yeah, that's the nature of the um, 
It's the nature of the internet. So it's that, that, I guess that's another discussion there. How have you learned how to curate the comments and not let them fuck you up? Yeah, so anybody's opinion about me never mattered mm -hmm. it, forever. I, I don't give a fuck what you think. Um, I never It would never bother me. If you don't like me, it doesn't bother me. I know I'm strong and you're weak. I'm whatever here wants to be like, and you're fucking pathetic, right? Mm -hmm. I got that from Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I just, uh, it never, it's in one ear, out the other. It never bothered me. I never, I mean, most of the guys, any guy that writes shit on online, um, like a negative comment, I mean, they have nothing going on. I've never gone on somebody's page and said something bad about somebody, because I don't mm -hmm. give a fuck. Mm -hmm. If I don't like it, I just scroll through it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I just don't have the time to badmouth somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... It it doesn't bother me at all. It's you could you could fucking yeah. say anything about me. Obviously, I where I work, you know, people say bad stuff about me all the time. Oh, I bet. And it doesn't bother me at all. It yeah. it makes me laugh. Well, what's interesting is you just kind of answered the whole thing. Is you know, if, if you don't care, you're just going to just scroll past, right? It, you know, or you're just not even aware of it to begin with. Yeah. Now, if somebody stops and posts, obviously they're expressing the fact that they give a fuck. Oh, of course. Right. So, yes. So you obviously care. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then they'll say later in the comments, I don't give a fuck. Uh huh. Yeah. After mm -hmm. they've gone like through like 20 comments and people arguing with them. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, it's, you know, you're always going to have haters. You're always going to have people that don't like it, but there's a million other people that love you. Yeah. So whatever. You're going to, it just comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you know then if, because you can make a Instagram's a weird one, mm -hmm. right? Because you can be popular than just not for right. some reason, yeah, or have followers that just not. And then you got to figure out: is this something that you posted? Is this just you're not popular anymore? I think How it's all you, all yeah. Instagram runs all that. You know, yeah. You just you just got to keep going. You don't you don't stop. Yeah. You know, you just keep doing what you do. Yeah. Eventually, it'll, you'll come out of it. Like that's what happened to me. You know, I I, I get a ton of followers, and all of a sudden, you know. Everybody's seeing my posts, and all of a sudden it goes, like, n n way less. Everything's way less. Then yeah. you're losing followers, like, eh, whatever. I'm not doing anything different. Yeah. And now it's gone through the roof again, but I'm doing the exact same shit. So you just got to keep going no matter what. Was there anything that you did different to get conversions? Yes. you could have all these views, but then not sell anything. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Um, that's a good question. You know, because even even with that shirt, right? So yeah. you have that, you have this statement, but you have is there? How do you get them to actually know you sell that shirt? Hmm. I think well, shirts sell more. The more I wear something, the more it will mm -hmm. sell. Um, and then if you get a good video with a lot of views, like this shirt, mm -hmm. right? I put it at the end of the video, buy it here, whatever. It's All right, Lincoln okay. Bio. So there's so, a call to action. Yeah, there. you call to action. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, just the more you wear something and the more it is seen, obviously, mm -hmm. right? You get a million views, they see the shirt, they know where to get it at. And that's it. Mm -hmm. You, know? you got to have it. Yeah, it's all, like I said, it's all, it's all how good your, your videos do. Like when they're down, mm -hmm. you know, you're not selling as much. Yeah. And it's tough because Instagram controls that, but it's free, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a free app. I can't say anything about it. I don't pay for it. Yeah. It's just free advertisement. I mean, you know how much you have to pay? Like, a, you put your shit on in the, you know, on TV and a magazine and a whatever. Oh, yeah. That costs tons of money. Mm -hmm. And you're not even going to get nearly, like, what's happened in the last couple of days with my, my website and everything. Man, that would cost me thousands of dollars. Thousands. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how much. And that was all free. So you got to take the good with the bad. You know? Yeah. But you, now, now you're wondering how you get it to happen again. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. And you got to figure that out. Yeah, it's, it's always you always got to one up everything. Man, it's tough. A fucking year. You know, I remember like years ago, I made a video. I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna ever beat this video. This is the best video ever. Yeah. Like uh, I think there's. Oh, I'm trying to think. Like one video, me and my buddy Callis, I was on a leg press machine. It's actually like an a what do you call those gifts? It's on the mm -hmm. Apple or whatever the phone. It's me leg pressing. My buddy Cal says he's I'm, it's probably like four plates on each side of the leg press, and I'm incline benching 315, and he has 405 pounds on his back, and I'm doing the leg press at the same time while he's squatting down and going back up, and I'm pressing it. That was like five years ago. I've never seen a video like that, and that video was awesome. And I'm like, man, there's and I just thought of it and went to the, the the gym. Yeah. I said, hey Tom, we're both headed to the gym to train. I said, hey, I got a great idea today. So how's that? How's that unfold? Okay, so it's like, hey Tom, I got this great yeah. idea. Yeah, he's today. like, oh god, that's dumber than fuck. I don't yeah. want to do it. 
then I'll have to talk him into it or something. You know what I mean? But how? Okay, so now you're on the leg press. How's the 315 get there? I have spotters. They come okay. and give it to me. Yeah. Like they'll. So Tom would get. Yeah, that's a funny part. <laughs> so Tom would have. He'd get on the leg press machine and have two or three guys help him with the weight, get it on his back. Then they give me the bar, and then I then they pull the things for me, right? And now I don't know if I could do it. I've never done this before. <laughs> so fuck, he could die if he fell forward. He could kill me. Oh yeah. So I mean, that was a real dangerous video, but it, and it happened to work out. But he was really unstable. I mean, it was bad. If you look at the video, is. His legs are shaking. I mean, he's a really good squatter, too, so mm-hmm. I trusted him. And, uh, yeah, as I was going down, I mean, it was very difficult, but it looks awesome. And it turned out to be a great video. You know, it could have been terrible. It could have went way no, awry. it could have been really it bad. It could have been I catastrophic. Mean, we could yeah. have both died. Yeah. You just but, man, it, it worked out so good. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just like, hey, I got a great idea for a video. Let's do it. Yeah. So then. And then we do it. <laughs> well, you got to sell somebody on it then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, right. Tom, helped. He, he would get in. If I thought there was a good video, he would usually do it. Like, there's some guys that are like, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. But, he, at, you know, when they say, hey, I don't think it's a good idea, then I'm like, this is going to be good. When they say uh, that, well, you know what, it's going to be what good. What are the ideas where they've said, oh, hell no. Oh, geez. So I was talking about Jack and Homeless earlier. He would do anything. You say, hey, you want to do this? Okay. He would never say no. I said, hey, I got a great idea. I'm going to put a cinder block on my head. I saw a wrestler do this in the 1960s or 70s. I saw it on the internet. I'm going to put a cinder block on my head, and you're going to fucking take a sledgehammer and break it over my head. He goes, I'm not doing that. That's fucking dumb. You're, it's going to get hurt. I said, that's great. I said, this is great. If you think it's dumb, you think it's dumb, this is going to be a great video. So we, he goes, and we get out there, and he goes, if I'm going to do this, put, the, put this wrist wrap in your mouth so I don't break your teeth out. Mm-hmm. I said, all right, let's go. I put, the, I bite down on the wrist strap. He takes a sledgehammer and fucking hits me over the head with it. Yeah. Bam, shatters it. I do 225 for like 50 reps. It was a great video. Yeah. So I loved it. Like shit like that. Like that was a huge video. When somebody that's really dumb says it's dumb, I know it's going to take off. Well, what are the ones where they just said, no, not at all, and it never happened? Oh, jeez. I don't think I've, I don't think there's been any. <laughs> I, don't, I really don't. I think I've done every one besides the one where I lit myself on fire because I don't have an actual stuff, yeah, man, to yeah, do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm trying to think if there's any ones that we tried to attempt that we couldn't do that was too hard. I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, no. Everything I've done, everything I thought of that I think, I, I think I've done or, or attempted it and failed, and it's been on the Internet. Yeah. Either way, it's good. You know, like when I uh, – there's a great video where I uh, waterboarded. I got waterboarded while benching like 400 pounds or something, right? And I've never been waterboard. I had no idea what it was like. So they tied a shirt around my head, and they poured uh, water and alcohol like down mm-hmm. my face. And uh, I did it, and I benched it uh, a couple times, and and I fucking got up, and I, I could, it was fucking scary, dude. It was tough. Like I couldn't breathe at all. I was like, <gasps> mm-hmm. I said, I'm never doing that again. Holy fuck, that was crazy. And then I look at the video, and it's by a bad angle. And you can't even see it. Ah. Like, fuck, we gotta do it again. And I no, did it again. Did it again. And I did it again. And it sucked, man. Yeah. That was crazy. And it, it, it is really hard to think of dumb videos. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, it, it's – and I'm an idiot, and I think of a lot of dumb stuff, but, you know, it, it is hard to think of it. Most of the time I'm drinking, yeah, or at work, and I write them down. Yeah. But, yeah. And they involve drinking. Yeah, most of the time. <laughs> most of the time it involves drinking. If it's really dumb – a lot of times we'll be drinking and we'll think of something real dumb too, you know. Your best ideas come while drinking. That's another good reason to drink. Good ideas come from drinking alcohol. That yeah, is, I can see that. Right? Such as being waterboarded while you. Yeah. Drunk. That's a yeah. fucking great. I got idea. on a plane like two hours yeah. later. Yeah. That's crazy. And breaking a center block over your head with a sledgehammer. Mm-hmm. These are all spectacular. That was ideas. a great video idea. Yeah. Now, what do you think I should do? You got any video requests? I'm thinking, man, because what, what I'm seeing is if you've never had the point where somebody's like, hell no. Yeah. Right? Then that means there's a lot of ground that's not <laughs> Yeah. Right? Because just think training-wise. Like, you, you go back to when you were younger uh-huh. training, and you're like, man, we should try to do this. Yeah. And then you would do it. And you're like, oh, we should probably do that. <laughs> fuck that. No way. <laughs> no man. way. I'm doing that. that. Like, squat 315 for 80. Yeah. No. no. Fuck no. 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 no I need no, that. No, you know? You know, when you, that's what I said. If somebody says no way in hell, that's when we, that's going to be good. Well, does that work the same way for you as the say it's a training thing where I, just in my mind just now when I thought you yeah. know, 315 for 80, I'm like, no, you can't do that in one fucking roll. But you could. 
doing yeah. the whole fucking training day. Oh, yeah. And then if you're like, no, I don't want to do that, then in my brain I'd be like, what are you, a fucking push? You don't want to do it. I'm going to do it. Does that happen with these things that you're talking all about? All the time. Too? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> all the time. When, when we did that stupid video with the bike, I didn't want to do it. Yeah. Because I never jumped anything before. So I, I wasn't comfortable doing it. And I said, hey, let's just do a dry run real quick. I'm going to go real slow. And one of my friends goes, what? Tom Finn, I know never fucking does dry runs. Fuck that. I said, you're right. Fuck it. Let's go. And I did a regular run and it ended up terrible. Yeah. So, yeah, just shit like that. Now, none of these have actually broken a body part. Oh, except for the cutting the finger off. Well, cutting the finger off, but that's. Other than that, no, the only times I've actually gotten really hurt has been from actually just training. See what I'm saying? There's so much more ground. Yeah, there is, right? There's a ton <laughs> that, more ground. That I'm kind of disappointed I'm yeah, seeing right now. I know. I, I'm going to go outside right now and get run over by a car while bench pressing 500 pounds. Yeah. I'm like, you start bouncing shit off your face. Yes. You know. Oh, yeah. I like that, like too. That. Yeah. Now, when you see some of the other stunts that people are doing, because it actually has died down a little bit, where it's picking up for a while. Yeah. Like, let's, you know, bench press a piano or leg press a piano. I mean, some of them, it got to the point for me, I just started fucking not even looking at them. Yeah, anymore, there's some of the stuff. I, stupid. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think, and, and there's also, there's stuff that I see on the internet that I did like six years ago. Yeah. I just did this six years ago, man. This is, this is mm -hmm. old stuff. So, But now there's a whole, you see what I'm saying? There's a whole I know. bunch, right? Yeah. That are doing that. Right. And some of them are like freaky ass shit, and you don't, like, there's no way that weight is real. Oh, yeah, there's I know. No I, I, yeah. Fucking way. Right. Like yeah. a guy, yeah, I, I know what you're talking yeah. about. I've seen, I've seen stuff on the internet. I don't know, but like, see now, if they were drinking beer, it would be better. 100. percent Yeah. Then saying, I would watch it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But, I would 100 percent watch it. That's like a lacking component because what it's, what I started to see with all those things, and I, I did reactions. I remember this because I did reactions to a couple of them from the very beginning. Because right. I'm like, okay, then it's like, fuck, this is all I see anymore. Yeah. It's like, this is old. Yes, you know? I, I agree. I haven't done that many crazy videos like that in a while. I don't yeah. Think. I don't remember the last one I'd done that was, a lot of them have been more more promos and stuff, you know, because that's just what's selling. Yeah. You know, like cutting promos. I love cutting promos, like I said before, you know, pro wrestling stuff. Like, because if everybody else is following this path over here. Mm -hmm. You got to go a different path. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. You don't want to be like everybody else. That's what I always said. You want to be different, right? Yeah. I don't want to be like everybody else. And so, even when you talked about the leg press squat thing, I didn't see, I haven't seen that one mm -hmm. of yours. But when I saw. I've like, seen that like a thousand times now. And yeah. we started that. That was so long yeah, ago. Yeah. I mean, it's been a gif or whatever you call that for like fucking five years. Yeah. I think I saw it in, on your channel. You have a greatest hits thing. Yeah. So I was watching through there. I'm like, fuck, that looks old. Oh, it's super old. I'm like, this we is did that. Year, I mean, shit. 2014 or yeah. something. I'm like, this is the same crap I quit watching a yes. year ago because everybody was I know. Doing it. So it. we were way ahead of the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So now you're ahead of the time now. Mm hmm. Right? You just got to walk through the woods drinking beer. Exactly. That's what I do. Naked. <laughs> yeah. On the sun, what do they say? The sun and the earth and the wind and the fire and my testicles and my asshole is what he says, right? Something like I that. I don't know about the asshole. Thing. That's what he was saying today. I saw that. There's a tenant about the asshole? Something about sun in your asshole and your balls or something. Yeah, I, don't pay, I, didn't, I don't pay that much attention. Yeah, right. You know, well, I'm a real liver king, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, here and there, you know. And then, but I did see your thing, and that was, that was, that was funny, man, because I'm watching, because you see that, the whole thing explode, right? You can't not see it. Oh, right? yeah, I know it's, it's everywhere. Fucking everywhere. Yeah. And then everybody's got the reaction, and all this yeah. reaction is like, I'm so fucking tired of- Same here. You know, it's like, fuck, just stop already. Yeah. And then your thing is like, now this this is different. Yeah, this like, is this different is and funny. This should be. Right, 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 right. You yeah. know, this this is good. Yeah, that's perfect. That's And that's what I wanted to convey, you know? And I mean, it worked out great. Yeah. So, that's funny as shit. And all that stuff's funny. Yeah. It's all, I mean, that guy, I don't know. He should have, he came out and said he lied and he apologizes. To apologize to who? Why would he apologize? I don't apologize for shit, mm -hmm. right? Why didn't he just come out and say, hey, I own a TRT company and this is what I'm doing. And I'm, now I'm going to sell you this. And uh, this is the Liver King special and it's going to cost you this. And now he's going to be a millionaire again. I mean, that's what he should have done. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know who he's talking to or who his people are, but that's that would have I would have done that. I said, yeah, I've been taking this for a year. I'm I'm testing it out. This is a Huckfin barbell special. Go to Huckfin barbell. Dat cam, grab it there. Yeah, see, he and all this. Yeah, yeah. He I mean, different he should just went a different way. I would never yeah. apologize for anything. Yeah, I would have never. I don't know. I think it is all wrong. But yeah, you know, yeah. that's him. Well, the the thing with the the 
there's a lot of opinions I've seen that people oh, have yeah, they're about everywhere. it, right? And they're all over the place, and I don't really give a fuck one way or another. Mm-hmm. I didn't give a fuck one way or another to begin with. Mm-hmm. You know, so they go, so now you want my opinion when I didn't give a fuck to begin right, with? Right, right, right. So it doesn't make any difference. But, um, you know, you, you watch through all these things, and it's, you know, the, the one thing that he said during the apology, which was weird, you yeah. know, because to me that was more marketing. Well, I watched was, that than, apology. Than, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I watched it, too, yeah. and it was more... Because like drama, I look at it different ways. I'm like, okay, from a business person, like how how would my PR first? That's what I looked at it the same way. That's why I said that's what you should have done. Yeah, how would my PR guy advise this? Right, right. And I was like, yeah, it's totally not. This is marketing. This isn't PR. Yeah, you know, it's that type of thing. And um, but it was. Then then I start thinking, okay, what other really fucking famous people, like way more famous than Liver King, Mm -hmm. do we all know are probably taking shit? Yeah, most of the actors never and everybody. never fucking field the question. It's no. not like you can dodge it. Right. It, he, you know, the people like the Liver King or whatever, they can't say Well, that's what his problem. He came out and said he got that way just by eating testicles in his, his brand. Yeah. That made his brand look bad. But he could have dodged he the easily question dodged from the I'm very on TRT. beginning. Whatever. You know, yeah. Fuck, I mean, we all dodged for years and years yeah. and years and years. Right. It's just what you did. The only reason people don't dodge it anymore is because... It's a more socially acceptable. Mm-hmm. B, you know, Liver King takes it. it well, it's, it, well, <laughs> there's another. I mean, you've been around this stuff for a long time. There's there's another variable here that just it always doesn't get fucking mentioned, and that's the legality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, well, yeah. You know, a lot of us have prescriptions now, yeah. so I can sit here and talk to you about Merrick Labs, Merrick yeah. Health, and all this right. other stuff because yeah. it's not fucking illegal. And then they'll throw out that, well, no, police don't really care. I'm like, okay, listen, motherfucker, I've been around gyms with fucking anabolics since yeah. the mid-80s. Right. And I know 10 people that have done prison time for selling fucking anabolics. Yeah. So don't tell me that <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yes. You know, so you see, because now if you watch, you know, all the people that will admit to their use, mm-hmm. they're admitting to TRT use. Right, and right, right. You know, well, yeah. goddamn well. Well, that's what he said. He goes, I'm going through a professional. I am doing this, and I'm doing that, and I'm doing that. Yeah. Through a professional with my blood work with everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So even even the people that But he was, he was doing $14,000 worth of growth or some, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. And I'm doing $1,400 worth of beer, whatever whatever I said as a joke. Yeah. So how many people are using stuff that, yeah, they have their TRT script, but then they're their their black market buddies mm-hmm. supplying them with the other two grams per week that they're right making. right right yeah so it's just it's just a, well, then it's he, a weird he started throwing thing. everybody like well I'm doing this because there's hundreds of people hundreds of men out there that are dying from suicide or whatever he said like why would he even bring that up who what does that have to do with what's deflection. going on it's deflection exactly huge yeah. deflection yeah so. yeah so that's I mean that's kind of not an apology. It's no. just deflection. No. Like I said, I saw that more as marketing and so forth. But of course. You know, he'll grow from it. Any publicity is good publicity. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, That's yes. what they always say, and it really is. I mean, yeah. so many people know his name now, right? Because of, of that. Well, more people now. Yeah. They hit different. He, hell, I'm getting back fucking kick out of out of his from my mm-hmm. shirts just because Liver King lied. Mm-hmm. Keep lying. Maybe I'll make more money off of it. You yeah, know, like, I mean, what's it's the next crazy. one? Yeah, what's the next? Uh, Liver King on a uh, throne of needles will be the next one. Like, uh, what are they, Game of Thrones? Mm-hmm. It'll be Liver King sitting on there with a throne of needles, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know, something stupid <laughs> like that. That's forward thinking, though. Let me get another beer if you don't mind. No, you're, you're through six. I figured this would be about a 12-pack. See, I thought the first one, you would have bit through it. No, no, no. First one's always the slowest. Yeah. You know, I had a, I had a very uh, intense workout in here, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, you saw me just go through a six minutes of, what is it called? What do we call that? What was it called? <laughs> Nobody remembers. It, it was, it I called it six minutes of hell, but it, you call it D, it was dumbbell. Fake, it was fake battle ropes. Battle bells. Battle bells. I did six minutes of battle bells, and I couldn't catch my breath for 20 minutes. Yes. Yes. So now the beer is helping with oh, that. Oh, it's helped quite a bit. Any, <laughs> this is a good one, any, any negative <laughs> facts that you've noticed from uh, the beer? Actually, the that's a great question. Absolutely zero. <laughs> um, everything I've gotten in my life was from training and alcohol. Um, a lot of people think alcohol is bad for, for you, which it is bad, I guess. Um, and it does, you know, ruin certain people's relationships or certain people's uh, lives and everything else, you know. Um, but for me, it's, it's helped a ton. It's helped me grow a brand. 
It's helped me meet my wife. It's helped me make all the money I've gotten. Um, it's helped. It's gone the opposite than what, you know, most people would think, right? So for alcohol has helped help me build a, you know, build a brand, make money, meet my wife, meet, do every, everything in my life is, is revolved around alcohol and training. Mm-hmm. So it's helped me tremendously. You know, I don't think there's any really bad, um, you know, my liver might be bad, but other than that, I mean, a liver king. Yeah. Um, but everything else has been great, you know. Do you get it checked? Um, Your no, blood work I checked? I, I don't believe in that. <laughs> right, just like liver king, I don't believe in that shit. <laughs> <laughs> But but yet his labs popped up. Yeah, what was that all about? Yeah, so he doesn't believe. Yeah, it, that's yeah, right, he yeah. The labs. All of a sudden his labs popped up, man. <laughs> yeah. No, um, no. I honestly, I think well, most you've had people surgeries, right? So there's oh yeah, they're, they're, I've yeah. had stuff yeah, done, yeah. obviously, but yeah, yeah, d- blood dump. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, alcohol has has helped me in life more than it's hurt me big time. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, you just gotta. You can't just can't drink every day. Like, can't let alcohol control your life. But you can have fun with alcohol. That's no, what I try. Is, isn't the, isn't the other statement that moderation is you know? Well, that's a big thing, right? Life, right. And that's hard. But you're you're just like no, that's not right. Oh man, moderation sometimes just goes right out the window. You know, I've you start drinking beer and you know you just lose count. You drink like, like I said, thirty five beers, a bench yeah. press. You know, it's just some days you drink thirty beers, some drink some days you don't drink any. Yeah. So that's. That's healthier, in your opinion, than just a couple a day. They don't. They don't think so. You know, the, the gurus, <laughs> the fitness experts, the doctors—they don't think that's healthy at all. But being the real liver king, you know, being the real liver king is, is everything, brother. You know what I mean? So I don't believe in the the gurus, the fitness experts, right? They would have me pinned as like I don't know, an alcoholic and a uh, not be able to bench two twenty five ever again or anything. Mm-hmm. I'm proving all wrong. I'm drinking beer. I'm benching close to 500 pounds. So I'm when you track old. your macros, how do you track the alcohol? I don't. Never do. <laughs> when I'm drinking, I don't track shit. No. You know, um, I did. I used to track quite a bit, like uh, during the week, and uh, you know, I always I've had some numbers I'd hit. Would be like, you know, 250, 300 grams of protein a day. You know, try to get under 80 grams of fat, 70 grams of fat, whatever it was, and then uh, carbs around similar 300, 250, 300, whatever it was. Yeah, and uh, when I drink, uh, I would never track anything. Mm-hmm. But that worked great, you know. I, I was great shape, you know. I mean, I did that for a year and a half right before I got injured. Yeah, I was tracking real well, and uh, I haven't really tracked since then. But I, I, you know, once you track stuff, you're pretty good with knowing what to eat. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you, you know, doing the similar diet, similar everything, you know. Mm-hmm. But never track when you're drinking. That's that's always leads to trouble. Yeah, if you could get. Oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, one yeah. thing, one thing, because people on here that drink, a big thing that I learned is when you drink, don't eat that many carbs the day of and don't eat that many carbs the day after. Keep your so carbs. So there's like a rule to this now? I heard that from somebody. <laughs> do you this do fucking it? expert that was, uh, God, I can't remember his name. He was, uh, he was with Hybrid. He was a fitness. Uh, yeah. Francisco. He told me, uh, gave me some fucking, I don't know, science project with a note. He yeah. said, the carbohydrates will make you fat the day you drink or the day after. Something like that. So I cut my carbs down the day before and day after. Or day of and day after. Yeah. So, yeah, if you drink, cut your carbs down under 100 grams that day and under 100 grams the next day. And then go back to normal. That works. <laughs> That's science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get that. It sounds like some bro science bullshit. That's science, I but know. If it, if it, if it works, Trust me, my right? dad is a television repairman. Yeah. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> if you could get fucking drunk with anybody, current, past, present. Steve Austin. Steve Austin. Yeah, right. I, I've actually drank with Steve Austin once. Mm-hmm. I, I was on his podcast, um, and he was my hero when I was a kid. Like, growing up, and obviously, uh, Steve Austin was awesome. You know, was, he was a man, and then... Uh, I got to be on his podcast. I, I flew out to his house in uh, Marina Del Rey and, and went on his podcast. And I've never been – like, I've met a lot of people in the fitness industry and, uh, you know, a lot of famous people mm-hmm. and everything, and I've never been really nervous around anybody. And I was kind of nervous going to his house. Um, Chris Bell, I stayed at his house, and I, we mm-hmm. he drove me over there. And 
remember knocking on his door, and I could see through the window Steve walking towards me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, fuck, that's Steve Austin. And we were five minutes late, too. <laughs> and he goes, uh, your first motherfucker ever be late to my podcast. I said, oh, fuck. You want me to do push-ups right now? And he mm-hmm. looked at me and fucking kept walking. I'm like, oh, fuck, Chris, we're <laughs> fucked. And, uh, no, I mean, it turned out to be great. And it was awesome. And I remember sitting across the table from him, and, and I was locking eyes with him. And I'm like, I'm the alpha in this room, you know, but that's Steve Austin. I'm not even paying attention to what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. So it was just crazy, you know, to be interviewed by Steve Austin. And uh, I drank all of his beer. And then he had that broken skull beer. He had yeah, IPA. Yeah. And then uh, he was out of beer. And I said, whoa. And my wife was there, too. I said, my wife keeps beer in her purse, Steve. Karen, you got any beer? She pulls out a six pack because we packed six pack in her her, her fucking uh, purse just in case. And she had a six pack in her purse, and we drank the beer there too. And then he drove us to the bar, and that was the last time I seen him in person. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was a great interview. It was great. It was awesome, you know, to drink mm-hmm. beer with Steve Austin and everything. You know, growing up seeing Steve Austin drinking beer and being a wild man, and then to you know actually. Mm-hmm. Talk to him, and I talked to him. I mean, we were, I was there for like six hours. Yeah. So I actually talked to him like as a you know in person, not yeah, on, yeah, not on yeah, the air and everything yeah, too. Yeah, so. yeah. He was a great dude. He's just like you know some like your next door neighbor or something. He's the same guy. He wasn't like some guy that was like you know too good for you or something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that was awesome. I taste good. The, well, I'm going to ask the question again, but it's going to be for somebody that you haven't drank a beer with. Or gotten drunk. Oh, with. shit. So, somebody that I haven't, I would say you. Yeah. Yeah, you. You got to drink a beer with me. No, dude, I would be fucking hammered in two At beers. One beer? <laughs> well, get him one beer, huh? When's the last time you had a beer? Oh, fuck. Florin, bring that case in. How long has it been? Two well, decades ago. I only got two beers left. Bring some more beer in. Yeah, I just drank eight of beers. Come on. You haven't, yeah. I got two beers left in here, ice cold. Get, get some more in here. You want one beer? No, yeah, I'll try one. It's going to taste He's like gonna shit. He's going to try one. Hey, haven't you ever seen that movie, Old School? Where Will Ferrell yeah, goes, yeah, yeah, He's yeah. Gonna, I'm going to have one. I'm going to have yeah, one. Yeah. And then he has one, then he goes streaking. Yeah. That's going to be you streaking through London, Ohio tonight. <sighs> How's it taste? That's fucking gross, I dude. told you it was good. That's fucking gross. No way. He's addicted. No, that is fucking Listen, the first terrible. sip's going to be kind of bad. The second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Second sip yeah. would be better, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the same fucking thing that people tell me with weed and shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's just like all bad. What's it's it like taste all like? All bad. Well, what does it taste like? What do you think? Rust. Rust? Yeah. That was the last thing I thought of. No, it tastes like rust. It's cold, though, right? It's, it's Does cold. it make you feel good yet? <laughs> no, it tastes like rust. Well, you gotta get you know, you gotta get past that rust stage. You'll be fine. Yeah. So, what's it take? Like, usually about four of them. Usually about ten of them. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so that's the trick. Yeah, yeah. Like about they, ten, they, you'll, you'll they, forget they the taste at all. Tasting like shit. Oh yeah, you don't even know. You can just switch beers out, give you whatever. You don't even yeah. know the difference. Yeah. So I have a feeling this is probably like the cigar thing, where the cigar thing like sucked for a while. Right? Oh yeah. Then, then you I saw you smoking cigars with uh, a big J. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A friend of mine got me started with the cigars in January. And then it's like, man, I don't know. it was a process. Right, it is. No, no I've like, smoked cigars when I was younger. I haven't yeah. smoked cigars in a long time. It uh, fucked. No. I, I smoked cigars at my buddy's wedding. Man, I got fucked up smoking a cigar. Well, it's, yeah, it's too strong. Yeah, 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 I think it was like yeah. a Cuban cigar or something. Oh. Yeah. That, no, I used to chew a lot, too, when I was younger. And I haven't oh, chewed. I tons of that. I stopped when I was 30. I haven't chewed in 10 years. Yeah. Well, I used to quit cold turkey. What did you chew? Uh, I chew everything. I mean, usually skull straight. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had a buddy that worked for U.S. Smokes Tobacco, and every, there was all these flavors coming out at the time. Mm-hmm. So anytime there's a flavor coming out, he'd give me like 100 of them. Mm-hmm. So I had tons, and, and I like Skull Apple. I like everything. Yes, I can Anything, man. I, I, I start really young, too. I mean, I grew oh, yeah. up fucking li- like listening to Hank Williams. Show. Same here. Fucking sticks, right? Wearing cowboy boots and all yeah, this bring other it over shit. That beer. And um, so I, I went from Kodiak to Copenhagen. Oh, Kodiak? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Kodiak to Copenhagen, right? <laughs> And then it was no going back from Copenhagen. And there was a time I was going through three tins a day. Jesus. It was, it I was mean, my worst was like a tin a day. Three no, tins a three. day? It was a, and it was when it started to get expensive, too. It was like, and then, um, God, it was when I still, I, 15 years ago, I bet, is when I quit. I bought a new car. It's crazy. I bought a new car. And I used to chew on my way to going everywhere. Yeah. And a week went by, and I just forgot. I f- just forgot. Man. And I told Wendler, I'm like, dude, I haven't had a chew in a week. I just forgot all about it. I guess I'm done. 
I guess I'm done. I'm done. And yeah. I never chewed again. I haven't chewed in a week. I guess I'm done. Yeah. So people will be, you know, it's confusing because they'll be like, man, I've been trying to quit for 10 years. I'm like, dude, I just forgot. Yeah. Well, I didn't forget. <laughs> I was like, when I'm going to have my first kid, right? I'm just going to stop chewing. I'm not going to chew anymore. I don't need spit, spit, spit bottles laying around everywhere. Yeah. So I, I, I decided to stop that day. And uh, it was tough for like the first month. I never chewed again. Yeah. You know, and my wife's like, well, maybe you can have a chew here or there. I said, oh, I'm stopping. I don't. I just stop. Yeah. It's all a mindset, you know? The spit bottle or the spit cups with yeah, the little, spit, little yeah, fucking yeah. napkin in it. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided I'm just done. You know, it's, 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 yeah, it's cost me a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to need spittoons laying around everywhere. I could never It's a bad those. habit anyway. I'm just going to quit. The spittoons are gross. I could never use those. Oh, I Because you would miss. <laughs> I know. Then you'd have to pick that smelly fucker up. Yeah. And it'd be like, oh, God, this is like ass, uh -huh. man. Yeah, I had a spittoon. <laughs> like, just give me the fucking cup with a napkin. Mm -hmm. The Gatorade bottles were awesome. Oh, yeah, because they had the big lips in The big lipper. Yeah. <laughs> it was easy to spit into. My keyboards always had this brown film. Oh, machine yeah. On it. No. No, and I loved chewing. I mean, that was one of my favorite things to do was yeah, to chew. Yeah, yeah. It was, it, was, it was tough to quit, but. You know, I just, uh, you decide to do something, you just do it. Uh -huh. you know, I've, that's always, I've never, I would never quit drinking. Well, what if Ever. you just decided? I wouldn't decide. I mean, what if somebody just said, you don't have the strength to fucking quit? I, I don't think I would quit that. I can't. <laughs> I mean, I could, I could quit anything I wanted to, but I don't want to quit drinking. Right? <laughs> Isn't that what an alcoholic would say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, the cops are here. <laughs> shit. What are the cops doing here? <laughs> They've got my vehicle surrounded. For me, get out there. <laughs> um, no, I, I always <laughs> going back on the quitting drinking. Um, what did my dad always say? He said, I, "I'm not going to quit drinking. I'm six feet under." <laughs> That's what he always says. So, my dad. I mean, he's a scientist. So <laughs> he's actually a, he's actually a construction worker. <laughs> I mean, a little bit ago, it wasn't a scientist. It was what the, it was the fucking TV repairman. He's a little bit of everything. Yeah. Now, now that TVs have become so cheap, there's no need for a repair. Yeah, there's no, yeah. You know, it's so fun. now he's a scientist. My dad actually was a TV repairman. Oh, he was? That's awesome. Oh. He, he owned an appliance store. <laughs> Skip Tate's Appliance and TV. I should not. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> that's well, awful. you know what that's from, right? <laughs> that's from a movie from the 80s. You should know that. What, what movie? The it's TV Fast Times Ridge Mount High. Oh, yeah. That's oh, uh, yeah. Spicoli. They wrecked the car. Yep. And he goes, uh, he said, yeah, it's all right, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, there it is. He knows it. <laughs> He's, My dad's a TV repairman. And he goes, your dad can't fix this, Spicoli. Mm -hmm. He said, my brother's going to kill you. Then he's gonna shit. Then he goes, "What's he gonna do first? He's gonna shit. Or he's gonna kill us. <laughs> first he's gonna shit. Then he's gonna kill us." No, I remember that now. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> so I always said that. That's what I said when I broke the machine. Yeah. That was the whole, part of the whole yeah. the whole thing when the whole video. I said, "Oh, it's okay." To the owner. Yeah. You know, the owner came down. I said, "Hey, my dad's a television repairman. He can fix this." And he goes, "You can't fix this, Finn." I said, "Yo, he can fix this." And yeah, he never fixed it. <laughs> as, 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 as I grew up in this business, that was the job. That was the job I couldn't do. What TV like, repairman? The repair guy. Jeez, like, I think he's getting I, a little. I deliver the shit. Like, I think that, he's, I think Dave's getting a little drunk. You hear him talking yeah, now? He's yeah, getting wild. Yeah. You better watch yeah. out in that beer. That was my um, that was my job was to deliver the shit. You know, and you put it up downstairs. Actually, my job started cleaning the stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. like Windexing and right, the right. shit that was on the floor. And then as I got what year older, is it? What year is this? Oh fuck, eighties. You know, yeah. so maybe the, fucking even seventies. So they had like the big like uh, like dresser TVs oh, and stuff? Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. The record players and shit like that were cabinets. You <laughs> right, right, yeah. it open and there it is and the speakers and shit are yeah. in there. The TV we would have at home was like a fucking, is the size of this table. It yeah. It was like a big fucking thing. Oh, yeah, I know. Three channels. Jeez. I know, it's so crazy nowadays, like, I think everything is in the palm of your hand, everything. No, it is you know? insane if I think back to it. I remember, yeah, when I was younger growing up, yeah, we had the big, like, dresser for a TV, right? Yeah. Not many channels and all. I remember f when, like, ESPN first came out and all yeah. that kind of and uh, all that stuff. So, but now, like, I built my brand, I built my business right out That's of my fun. palm of my hand. It's I don't, crazy. I, I don't know how to run computers. I don't know shit. Yeah, I ran it because I learned how to run a phone. It, it's crazy. Know? And, it's and I would it, that would never have ever this brand Huck Finn Barbell would still be a local guy yeah. being an idiot, right? With uh, nothing except for the people locally yeah. and a couple towns that knew who I was. I mean, people bitch about technology, but as we're sitting here talking about this, I remember when HBO came out. Jesus. 
right? There, what there about were, Skinamax? Uh, yeah, well, you could kind of see. Right? Oh, yeah. You know, through remember, the, through do you ever the remember those, uh, was it, yeah, the blurry things, right? Yeah, the, yeah. The porn channels? Yeah, you could see through. Yeah, you, you could see, like, little, one yeah. boob. Oh, there's a boob! But with HBO, there were two mo- there were two movies per day, but three times. Yeah. So it was like 5 o'clock, and then it would play again at 10, and then what was in the middle? And that's that's what it was. And it's like, this is crazy that I can watch HBO on my phone. I know, yeah, you, know? you can watch any there. We yeah. had the football game going on yeah. last night as we were driving here, right, right for the phone. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's wild, man. Yeah, so the technology, fuck it. I'm- it sucks, but it's great. So I, when I was growing up, that's, you know, everybody was pushing against me, like, how you just training, you can't do shit with this. And from reference, you probably can't. It looks like You it. know, because what the hell are you going to do? Own right. a gym, right? <laughs> and nobody would have imagined, you know, there's going to be this thing called the internet. You're going to be oh, able to have God. a site on the internet right? and all this other shit. When I started, it was just putting ads in Powerlifting USA. Yeah. You know, that was the first thing. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, okay, internet, you know, it's, what's that? Yeah, yeah, like I told you, I... The first pair of knee sleeves I ever bought was from Elite FTS. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was probably 19 or whatever it was, um, I bought a pair of double ply because I thought I could squat more. You couldn't get them on. Good. I couldn't get them on. Yeah. I had to cut them to get them on. Yeah, don't really. I swear to God. Yeah. I think I still have them laying around somewhere. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the other problem. It's not remember, consumable. Yeah, right? <laughs> Fucking my same knee sleeves for 20 yeah, years. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I, I remember I got sell a, aminos? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to get a pre-workout market, you idiot. <laughs> But I remember I also got an Elite FTS shirt that was a, a had a four four leaf clover on it. Yeah, and I remember that too. I got that maybe that was more recent. Yeah, that's probably last ten years or so. Recent. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I've known about Elite FTS since shit for at least since yeah. the early two thousands. I think December. Well, it is December now. I think when we cross the year, it'll be twenty five years. Man, you know that's a long fucking time. That's a hell of a long it's time. a long fucking time. Shit, yeah. You know. It's, What's it's, the best memory you got from the last 25 years? God, there's so much, man. I mean, you have a business now, right? So there, there's so much of what you need to take care of today and the next month and all oh, that. Yeah. that. It's really fucking hard to stop yeah. and look back. Um, most of them aren't really numbers related. I wish they were. <laughs> yeah. Because we haven't, we've never had that double digit type of growth ever it's just been a slow, slow just incline slow type thing and then you have a few years down like yeah. fuck we're gonna go out of business and it <laughs> comes back <laughs> oh up. shit so it's a constant you know for the things that helped me over the years was to understand that something ridiculous like five hundred thousand new businesses start each day i mean it's it's, re- it's insane the number of new businesses right, that right. start every day yeah. and mo like 90 some percent fail after a year right and then, like, 90% of that fell after three years. Yeah. So you can get frustrated. Damn, good thing I'm in year five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank God I saying? got past the year three. And it sucks, man, because when you're year five, there's it's it's the same thing no matter what year it is. You're, 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 you're happy with what's happened. Yeah, but you want to get But bigger. you're also like, fuck, like, this should be way higher than what it is. Because mm-hmm. you compare yourself to others oh, yeah. and all this other yeah. kind of stuff. That never goes away. Um, and it actually probably leans more towards, especially with your mindset, my mindset, of the fuck we should be better than what we are. Always. No matter what. You know, because yeah. it's really hard to... See, I'm having a hard time even answering your fucking question. Yeah. No, I always... You, know? you always want to be better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You always want to grow. And you're always thinking of ways to be better. Yeah. Like, constantly. That's all... Well, the you other know. fucked up part... This is the biggest fucked up part, and it's when I had the financial meetings like I was doing when you came in. It's... I'm numbers driven, right? Mm-hmm. But the fucked up thing is, I'm I like, can't add. I'm, well, I'm like powerlifting number driven. One thirty-five, two twenty-five, three fifteen, four hundred five, five eighty-five. 205, well, no, 585. Number, like the five hundred batch. Yeah, right. Like right. The, the total, whatever it's going to be. Yeah. That matters, but profit matters. Mm-hmm. You know, to me, it's like, okay, what were the total sales? We need to fuck. We need to fucking beat the total sales. Yeah, right. Here's you always want to beat, beat that. Yeah, right? I know it. But then you lose sight of what's going on down here. Right. And it's like, okay, we beat that, but fuck. No, I yeah, know. That, so you got to, like, watch two things. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm the same way, you know, with uh, the business. And and then I'm dealing, it's like me and my wife do it. So it's, a, it's like are. a smaller scale yeah. than what you guys are. But, you know, not really. I'm, I'm trying to think started. of shit constantly, like just shirt ideas, yeah. supplement ideas, video ideas, um, just everything. Because you always want to be better. How are we going to beat this? I don't know. I don't think we can beat it. <laughs> yeah. No, we can beat yeah. it. Uh, there's a way. There's definitely a way we can beat it. So it's always, even when I write down anything, like in your phone, I write down, hey, um, 
what what I say yesterday. Uh, here's a good shirt idea. I'm driving. I was driving here, and I'm like, in my head, I just still have a shirt idea. Uh, my wife is my cardio, or something like that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's a great shirt idea. Let me write that down. My cardio is my wife, because um, I put a shirt out saying cardio is for pussies, right? As a joke. Mm-hmm. You need cardio to fight, obviously, but cardio is for pussies is hilarious. Um, it's just shit like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And always write down anything. If I think of anything, I write it down. Even if it's dumb, because something that's dumb can be, can be great. Well, it can be great later, too. Yes. Right? And my wife is 60% owner, you know, because a long time ago. My wife, I think, is 90. Yeah. Well, yeah see, <laughs> well, we thought having a female-owned business would have better benefits. Did it? it? No. <laughs> no. It makes no goddamn difference. Um but either way, it's you know we've had to find that here's her lane, here's my lane. Yeah. And then we try not to cross lanes. That's you know, good. That, that's, yeah, a, yeah. That's a tough. It is. It takes a while, and it gets it gets more convoluted when you start hiring people. Oh yeah. You know, because then who's the person going to help you or her? Uh-huh. You know right, what I'm right. saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, it's. Yeah. So me. Yeah, me and my wife will we'll start arguing over stuff, and I'll be like, No, this is going to sell. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the bad part about <laughs> about having a business together, right? Yeah. Well, with apparel, it's weird, too, because I've had a lot of things. I'm like, oh, this is going to do great. And, mm-hmm. Oh, that's oh, another thing. Sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> Even this shirt, I, I think it would, like I told you before, I thought it would sell. Mm-hmm. But I didn't think it would sell to the way it's sold. I mean, mm-hmm. it has, when you have bad words on something, right? Mm-hmm. Swear words on shit, I don't think it's going to sell as good. This shirt, like, let's get stupid. It was a great seller. Mm-hmm. I mean, just don't have anything dumb on it, like anything bad. Mm-hmm. So I told great. I didn't think something that had pussy on it would sell, but it did. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, there's some other other things that I, I brought up to her, and she's like, I don't think that's going to sell. And yeah. then it sells, and I rub it right in her face. See, like, had, I knew it. I told yeah, you it was going to yeah, sell. Yeah. That's I've the had, best. Yeah, I've had other ones that I thought were just going to suck. And they do and good. The fuck was It's that? just like videos the same way, yeah. Yeah. Same and then it's, you know, I'll come up like this. This is one I came up with. That's a good one. Yeah, from Ozarks. I'm like, this is gonna fucking kill it. And it's and I actually the conversation because this there's two factors here. It's like okay, here's the idea, here's the design, and I get it done. Then it is is my wife gonna be cool with this? Oh right? yeah, no, my there, wife's getting upset because there's so many swear words in every fucking thing we yeah, sell now. There's always getting like, past. Come on, that. can we get something besides yeah. like sexual yeah. windows and everything? And she's like, "Oh, I think that one will sell." Then I'm like, "Oh fuck, what I get myself into? Uh, is, do I really want to do this one now?" That's a good one. I like that and, one. Um, and I'm like, "Okay, this is either gonna do really well, or it's gonna suck." Oh, it's, it's same, not I'm the same fall way. In the middle. Yeah. And the fucker fell right in the middle. Oh, I'm man. like, come on, like no matter what I think. <laughs> I, I always think the same way. It's either gonna do great or it's gonna suck. Mm-hmm. We'll sell like hardly anything, or we're gonna sell a shitload. Mm-hmm. I'm the same exact way. Hey, you mind if I have another beer? No. And it's, Are you ready for one yet? Or no, if I'm just like through here, and I'm drunk, right there. I'm gonna have to take a leak again. Yeah, you already said I'm drunk. Damn it. Hey, pause it. Pause the show again. Yeah. You? I gotta take a leak. Yeah. How many? Hey, what's the record number of pauses you've had in the show? One pause? Yeah, this is a this is a record. Hey, this is a record. A yeah, 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 yeah. Long yeah. live the theater. Yeah. <laughs> so we did get one super chat. Yeah. Um, they want to know: Did you see Brian Shaw collab with Derek Smith with arm wrestling and would you ever do it yourself, or do you think that's just too mainstream and it's like? I didn't see the collab, so I don't know that. Um, I would never do arm wrestling. You know, I'm too fucked up to do it, but um, I know that from the collaboration standpoint, the people that I've known that's done arm wrestling collaborations have benefited greatly (laughs) for their YouTube traffic, but I've I've never known anybody. I've known a lot of people that have got in arm wrestling from other things, but not like arm wrestling people. Yeah, I mean, nothing against it. It's just I don't know anything about it. Except for, you know, when I used to bounce in the bars. Everybody, you fucking arm wrestle. I'm like, get away. Yeah. Like, you're going to fuck my bench up. The shotgun, fuck. That I do remember from high school or whatever it was. Yeah. Matt, this is your kind of podcast, man. This dude's, He's on seven beers right now. There's one right here. Yeah, I'm like I'm like this far down. I'm like under the logo. I'm almost under the logo. I'm fucked up. Yeah, I went out there. Here's the thing. It tastes like shit, just like I remembered. 
What's that? See, I told you. Really bad beer, my ass. <laughs> All these beer experts come in here and like, yeah, you got to drink these IPAs. No, he is a beer expert. What do you drink, pal? Um, I'm surprised. My go to is Rolling Rock. Exactly. Rolling Rock. <laughs> what a yuppie beer that is. That's been since high school. And then, uh, Rolling Rock. Listen, Coors ain't bad. I'll drink Coors. That's a non-union beer, but Smoking I'll drink the it. Bandit. Exactly. That's, yeah, from Colorado. Yeah. Rolling Rock. Come on, man. That's not a real beer. That's a yuppie beer. My dad. My dad was a huge beer drinker. What do you drink? And, uh, old Milwaukee. Oh but, yeah, my grandpa drank Old Milwaukee. Yeah, but we're going way Coors. back. Now he used to go on hunting trips in Wyoming, and he'd come back with pallets of, of Coors. Coors. Yeah, because you could only get it out there. Fucking. Right? In the Rockies, Pilot. that's awesome. Yeah. Like half our two car garage. That was illegal, you know that, beer. right? He's like smoking the bandit. Can't that was it? illegal to do that. Yeah, I think I don't think you could bring it past state lines, right? Oh, he fucking did. I think half right? my garage. I don't remember, but I wasn't yeah. born then. But I, I thought it was like some law or something. Yeah. I remember people would go. That's what smoking the bandit was. Yeah. See, when I was in junior right? high, that was like our go-to. Yeah. Like, he'll not he'll not miss one. Yeah, he's got you know, pallets like, of this shit. We yeah, like get in the case. And uh-huh. It's in the middle of the pallet. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's one missing. Yeah. One Coors Light banquet. Yeah. You know, my dad drank Paps. He drank Paps when it wasn't cool to drink Paps. Yeah. And I remember going to restaurants, and they wouldn't have Paps there, and he'd get up and leave. Are you serious? Like, Come on, son, we're leaving. They don't have Paps. We're out of here, son. We get up and have to go to a different restaurant because they wouldn't have Paps. And now you go to places, fuck, that's what they have is Paps because, like, the uh, what do you call those people, the guys with the tails on their head? The bartenders? No, not the bartenders. The uh, Tails on their head. They have, like, the whatever you call that. The, Man buns, <laughs> right? The hipster. It's like, a, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. The hipster. Yeah, it's like those damn, the hipsters took over. Like now, Paps is popping. I can find it everywhere. But he stopped drinking Paps because he retired from construction, and he ended up making every night a Saturday night. So he ended up gaining like a ton of weight. Like he went up like 300. He's a big guy, six uh, yeah, three. Calories. He's like 250, but he went yeah. up like 50 pounds. Like whoa, whoa, I gotta stop drinking for like six months and and everything and get on a diet. So he got down in his, his weight, and then he's like, oh, I'm not drinking fucking Paps anymore. I'm going to start drinking Miller Light." So he stopped, and then about two years later, Paps was everywhere. Like, that was mm-hmm. the end thing then, you know? And he was so mad because when he did want Paps, you couldn't find it. Mm-hmm. Like, it was barely anywhere, and now it's like, yeah, the hipster beer now. Right. <laughs> the tail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and those tails on their head. <laughs> yeah. So when's the last time you had a beer, you said? Been two decades? It's probably been twenty years. Is it tasting better yet or no? Same better or worse? No, it's 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 gonna get warm and it's gonna get worse. We'll put an ice cube in it. That's an old <laughs> trick, keep you hydrated, right? That's what an old the guy hi- told the me. Hydration? Yeah, you put I a couple ice cubes in your beer, it hydrates you. I thought this was supposed to be dehydrating. Well, you put ice cubes in it and it'll hydrate you. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. Right. Now we are sponsored by Element, which is a hydration stick. Right, so what? if you mix that with your beer, I bet it would foam up like crazy. Oh, it would, yeah. I've, I've yeah. mixed pre, uh, pre-workout with alcohol before. Foam's like a motherfucker. Yeah. I've drank it. I mean, it about die. Right, I've tried everything. It doesn't work out good. So, yeah, you put that powder in there, it will foam like hell, and it'll taste like shit. Well, that, maybe that's your supplement there. you got to figure out the pre-workout you can mix with beer that won't foam. I, I don't think you can. I don't know. Yeah, that, maybe that's a maybe that's a yeah. million dollar idea. I remember when I was like in high school, my my thing that I wanted to make was something an alcoholic drink that would make you stronger and not make you fat. Isn't that what it fucking all, all alcohol does? Is make you fat? Is make people think they're stronger? Well, think they're yeah. You get beer muscles, <laughs> right? You get beer muscles. But I wanted to, like a thing like it would be like um, with aminos, have everything in it, like protein and, and but there's no way because alcohol does something to your testosterone. To I don't know what it does, something, but it doesn't. It does not make you um, actually stronger or in better shape. But I wanted to make something, and I'm not a scientist. My dad is. But uh, I wanted something like that. That would have been great. What if this, what I'm drinking now, is making me stronger and better? Well, you you could argue it is. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you've, if you've. I mean, benched, it's made my company better, right? Yeah. I mean, you just said a little bit ago. No, oh, yeah, it did. But I'm saying, like, you know, instead of making you fatter or whatever, yeah. right, that you could drink, like, 20 a day and make you stronger and better shape. That would be the ultimate. It would. What? I'm going to try this if you're serious. 
Drink well, 20 I'm, beers no, a day, no, and I'll no, report no, back no, to you no, in no. six months. No, that was a question. I'd be 300, because, 300 you know, pounds. Because there's the negatives. There's always a pros and cons of everything. Right. So now you got to figure out what the negatives of those are, and then how you're going to mitigate it. But I don't think alcohol could, could actually make you stronger. Well, it can make you gain weight. We know that. That's true. And so, gaining weight does make you stronger. It does. It has a lot of carryover on the bench. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> the bigger you are, like the biggest I've been, I don't know, two fifty, two fifty five. I bench more. So the bigger you are, it has more carryover. I think in the bench and in the other lift. Mm-hmm. What do you think? I would say the squat. Squat your belly. You know, you can get the rebound. Rebound. Oh yeah. The torso. But the bench well, being bloated. The, the, you know? the bench is definitely up there. The deadlift by no, no. No, no, not at all. You see the biggest guys, they 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 deadlift this the they don't deadlift at all hardly. No, it's it's terrible. Like we were saying earlier, or I was saying earlier was uh what's his name? Uh um uh I can't remember his name now. The guy I was training with uh with Lillibridge and uh Derek Kendall. Yeah. His his deadlift was like a thousand pounds it's his uh, or his squat was a thousand pounds. His deadlift was like seven hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. He couldn't get in a good position, you know. So, well, it's hard to figure out because they got to they got to where's their belly going to go? Right. You know. Then their arms are too short to pull sumo. Yep. Yeah. You know. So they pull sumo. They end up locking out with the bar over their cock. Jesus, that's turning me on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Couple more beers. Yeah. But I do. I think the the strongest I've been in the bench is when I was at my heaviest. Well, of I think course. it's got a lot of curiosity. Well, it, it depends upon coefficient, you know, if we want to get into coefficients and shit like well, that. Well, no, yeah, yeah. All right, so here's the question then. If when you go after this 500, what body weight are you going to do it at? 220. 220. I need it at 220, yeah. So where do you sit now? 240 something. Oh, shit. So you need to lose weight? I'll lose a little bit of weight. So you need to drink less? Not much less. Listen, if I have to drink a lot less, I'll do it at 242. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So, but what's like not much less, like three less on the weekend? Uh, get, I'd say yeah, twenty four. Probably take out one case of beer per weekend. How many are now on a weekend? I'd say six. Are you shitting? No, me? I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I, I'd three? say no, not three. Maybe depending on the weekend. You know, if we're having a party going on, yeah, maybe three. So, what's it take to get you fucking even a little bit drunk? Well, I feel it now. Yeah. You know, but. Well, you're fucking eight, seven, eight in. You know, but I don't feel drunk until about, you know, 18 beers. I kind of feel a good buzz. <laughs> right? What did you say, 18 beers? Yeah. 18 beers to a case. You know, um, I drink them faster in a short amount of time, yeah. But if I drank a 24 beers in like a six-hour span or whatever it is. Have you ever done a vi- Here's a video idea. Have you done a, have never done a video to see how many you can drink and still stay under the legal limit? That's a good idea. I might do that, right? <laughs> I don't know how good the views are going to be. I'm just curious. Well, I could do that and also bench at the same time or something too, you know, right? Or we could say how much I could bench at, at a certain amount of uh, uh, blood alcohol level, right? Yeah, and as alcohol level goes up, what happens to the bench? Does it go down? Does it go up? Maybe, maybe. Fuck maybe, science. Maybe, maybe you do it with like a tendo unit or some unit that can measure speed. Right, I'm in. So now, now, now you take like. My, listen, my dad is a teller repairman. He could probably do this. Yeah, you get right? what I'm saying. Like you measure bar speed. Hundred percent apps to do this. Yeah. So that way you can get more sets in. So it's not can you keep benching 500? Right. So like, what's your bar speed after three, three cans? I like that Six idea. Six cans. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. You say so bar, I'm out of here. I'm going to the bar. Yeah. So <laughs> bar speed, right? And then what's it going to be after 24? Jeez. Fuck, it might go up. It might because your inhibition is going to be less. You're going to drop it faster. Shit, maybe maybe when I when so, I go bench five hundred one, I should have at least fifteen beers in me. Yes, yeah, right so, because I'll yeah. I'll forget about my pecs. So that could be fuck. You uh, might be onto something here. It, it could be Huck Finn conjugate. Mm-hmm. Right. So here's how you I do like your that. speed work. The speed work has to be done with three with beers, yeah. yeah. You have to have so, this many beers. So, as long as the speed keeps going up, it I works. Like that when it program. goes down, you stop. Max You're a genius. Max effort. Work hey, write is, this down. Yeah, max effort work. <laughs> Has to be done with shots. Ooh, yeah. What kind of shots? What, what do you have? Fireball or whatever? Fuck, I don't know shit about this. I'm just throwing tequila. Shit out. It's all bad. <laughs> Hold on, it's all bad. You've had three beers already. What are yeah. you doing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if this is bad, that's even worse. Bad. Yeah, it is. That's, that's why. Like, yeah, that's you bad. see a lot of old beer drinkers out there, right? But you don't see a lot of old whiskey drinkers out there. That's why I drink beer. That's another reason. Because it pickles their liver faster. 
that alcohol it's in hard liquor, right? Yeah. That's way harder on your liver than beer is. So the alcohol will kill you where the beer is just going to give you diabetes. Yes. Okay. 100%. Where That's can... another reason why I drink beer. Because you want diabetes? I like to call it livabetes, Liv- not diabetes. <laughs> livabetes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, I get it. All right, the die, right? Yeah, I don't know why. Who would ever die. think of calling it diabetes? I mean, that's a terrible name. Mm-hmm. Call it livabetes, you know? Mm-hmm. Right? So the insulin spikes are what's helping yeah, the right? training. Don't those, uh, what is it, pro bodybuilders, don't they do insulin and all that? Yeah, right. You so I do. Use, you don't use insulin. Yeah, with alcohol, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I get insulin spikes from from the beer. <laughs> it makes me grow. <laughs> that tastes good. So what, what, what? Yeah. What, what? What other drinking advice would you have for the fans? Um, geez, that's a, that's another good question. Drinking advice. Hmm. I don't really have. Advice to drink, I guess just drink. <laughs> and if you've never done, uh, I'd say, a power hour, look into that. Right? Power, power hour is very power good. Hour. That's where I'd play, like, I got a country music playlist, you know, I listen to a lot of country, and I uh, every minute a country song would come on and an air horn would go off, and they'd take a shot of beer for 60 minutes. What's the air horn have to do with this? When the air horn goes off, you take a shot. But you're, the air horn is not in country music. No, it's... It's on a, uh, it's like, a, it, well, it used to be CDs. I have a CD yeah. like that. I don't know what it's on now, but it used to, I have a CD <laughs> where you put a CD in. It'd be one minute of a song, right? Yeah. And it would go, and you take a shot of beer. And then another song would come on. All right, so this is a, like a power hour, whatever, CD. Yeah, All power right. hour. Yeah. So look into it. I like to do the Century Club, which is 100 minutes. It'd be about eight beers. And you do it yeah. in 100 minutes, you feel good. Do not drink and drive. That's another good thing. Yeah. Um, especially nowadays. I mean, you can get literally anywhere. You can get a, uh, what do you call those, Ubers? Mm-hmm. That's what I understand these pro athletes that uh, get DUIs or get messed up with that. I mean, you can get driven any. I mean, you got millions of dollars. It costs like 20 bucks to get a ride somewhere. So that's another thing. Never drink and drive. That's why I have a, a D, uh, what do you call it, a DD. That's why I brought Foreman over there. Mm-hmm. Um, watch your carbs. Uh, and enjoy yourself, mm-hmm. right? Mm. Always, and I mean always, put your beer on ice the night before. Let them sleep. Let them sleep. We call it sleeping on ice. Yeah. So we let our beer sleep on ice, right? So it's extra cold in the morning. So no fridge. No fridge. Fridge beer is too warm. I want it so cold you can't even touch the can. So you let it sleep on ice overnight. Yeah. All right, and then training advice. Build the chest, fuck the rest. That's probably my best piece of advice. This is an upper body business, like I said earlier, right? <laughs> um, and you want a, a big upper body, and uh, I think the best, best, uh, best way to go about that is the bench press, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. um, heavy benching and uh, heavy overhead pressing is king. Right. Any questions or topics that you wanted to talk about that I didn't bring up? Hmm. Yes. You said you bench 500 pounds in high school. I don't believe that. Yeah, I did. You got video of this? Dude, it was fucking 1986. That's a lot of weight. Yeah. I want to see this. Yes. And where is it at? Uh, Open powerlifting may have something close to that time. uh, What high school did you go to? Finley High School. Where's that at? Columbus? Uh, uh, by Toledo. By Toledo. Holy Toledo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I competed. I started competing when I was 13. So you grew up in, like, Toledo, right? You grew up in this area, Outside correct? Outside of Toledo, yeah. I mean, Finley's a small It's a small town. Do you know that guy from Mass? He was from Toledo. No, no. no that was fake. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> but my, one of my first introductions to the gym was to a small powerlifting gym, and that's all they did. You know, so when... You know, I went through the cement plate weight thing. Oh, yeah. Like everybody else for three months or whatever it is. You might have had another beer. Yeah, go ahead. And then getting you need in, another one? No, I'm good. 
and then getting in trouble and all that other shit, my dad put me in this gym that happened to be owned by the narc head of narcotics police. Oh yeah. You know, Cocaine. That, all that. So he put me in there, you know, so I was around police officers, but they're all competitive power lifters. So my introduction to training more or less was power lifting. You know, so I didn't right. I was fortunate to have I won't I don't want to say it was the best technique in the whole world. Yeah. But it was way better than everybody else, which you know, that just started I think the first time I ever I don't ever remember not benching three hundred pounds. Right. What age were you? Um thirteen. Was that high school or uh, right around there? Right around there. Junior high moving into high school. Um I think that the one of the high school meets I did that it should be on open power lifting was a 440 squat, 440 bench, and uh, fuck, it might have been like a 440 deadlift. I mean, it was all fucking the yeah. 440s all around. All 440? Yeah, yeah. And then there were, then I did a couple of the stupid high school meets. And yeah. um, then the guys I was training with were like, don't ever do those again, like ever, you know, do these other meets. Right, yeah. Because they were sanctioned and the other ones weren't. Right. And, and I got my ass kicked in the other ones. Oh yeah, the, you know the high school, I, yeah, high school ones. I'm like, holy shit! I, I know, it's the stud, same way. You know? Yeah, yeah. I go to these other ones. I'm like, I suck. I didn't even know what to do. Like, we never yeah. paused. It was all press, like touch and go. Yeah, right. And yeah. there's judges. I didn't know what. What are these guys yeah. looking? I didn't know anything. And this was all pre bench shirt. And oh yeah. Then I would say did they come right in like around, the late nineties. No, it was before that because they were these really tight, like. They weren't the same thing. They were like super tight T-shirts that were just tear the shit out of your armpits and shit. Did Close it, back. Did now I don't know this, but you probably do. Did did uh, Ernie Franz? Didn't he come up with like a ton of shit yeah. that he never got credit for? Or? Oh yeah, Ernie. Didn't he come up with the monoliths, or is that like a? I don't know about. I that thought he one did for sure, but I know that shortly after I came into the sport was after there was the split between the USPF and the APF. So Ernie yeah. basically Ernie said, was fuck APF, you, yeah. started the APF. Right. Um, I went the APF I, route. Me too. Yeah, right. And, and that was because that's where the guys I competed, you know, yeah. that's where they went. Right. You know, and it's, it's funny when I was talking to Blaine Sunder and a lot of these other people, you know, people get on their high horse about you're in this federation or in this federation. It's like sometimes this is just where these guys started. Yeah. You know, and that, that's all they know. Well, it's another thing. I will train any. I mean, train. Yeah. I will compete anywhere. I compete in my basement. I compete yeah. in APF. I compete in the UVSPA, USP, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, I don't give a shit where I compete at. Yeah. You know, I compete any. I compete in here today. Yeah. At least FTS. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So coming up, it was. I remember Enzer gear because I mean the, the yeah. gear was part of it when I came in. It was single ply shit, and the suits would tear out in the ass and the bottom, which was always <laughs> fun. You know, and the bench shirts just hurt like a motherfucker and tore your armpits tore up. your armpits apart and then it took me a while to find france because enzer was the big i mean they had more ads than anybody mm -hmm. else and then france it was like holy shit this suit's way better I mean, yeah the suits being way better and then by the time i actually made my way to west side you know a decade later you know i, I go in there and louis looking at my shit and he's like you need to wear a double ply and uh -huh. i'm like the fuck is a double like yeah. you mean like two suits sewn together <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I didn't know this shit existed yeah like, yeah you gotta oh you know go to france order it from france you need oh so he was buddies with france yeah so it's like get the, the double ply with this double ply that but i know ernie was for sure i believe the bench shirt where oh, there's yeah. been a lot of bullshit about that saying that's not true where it was that and then somebody else stole it and then there's a lot of bullshit yeah. back and forth um that was one, then the the canvas squat suit for sure. Canvas squat suit was all Ernie, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Because I was one of the first. That's what I thought. And it was a weird time, too, because, you know, every, not everybody, but most of the guys at Westside were all against it. They called it a diaper suit and all this other shit. I'm like, yeah. look, man, I'm watching Willie Wessels do this. I'm Squatting watching these more. other guys do this. They're fucking killing it. Mm -hmm. And I we're talked front, to, so. yeah, I talked to Ernie at one of the seniors. And he's like, no, I think you would do really well with one of these things. I'm like, okay, fuck it, you know. So yeah. Send it to me and then tailor it in. I'm like, holy shit, this is another world here. This is big time. And then at that time, his bench shirts were. Denim was a weird age for yeah. bench shirts. Right. Because it would work and then it would just take your head off. I mean, it was like Russian roulette. I mean, it would either fucking hurt and destroy you mm -hmm. or it would work. He had one that was working really well. And then shit, it just went gangster as far as bench shirts as far as getting 
making them work. Yeah. I was never able to really capitalize on making them work the way that the other people were. So you competed like that for how long? Till? Uh, until I couldn't grab a bar anymore. So I was <laughs> 2004. Yeah. You know, my, my shoulder needs replaced, so I can't, I can't grab a bar. So a lot of things kind of coincided at the same time. So it was probably 24 years competing at that point where I'm trying to grow a business, but it's hard to do when you don't get into work. Yeah. It's like 1230 because training's number one priority and all this other stuff. You know, it's just. That's what I said. Yeah. It's just yeah, it training really wasn't really working. One. You know, I had a, a kid at the time and then now I can't grab a bar. Yeah. So it's like, well, maybe I can still force my way under there. Yep. Or maybe I can just say, you know what, this is a blessing in disguise and just, and I wasn't, this was like three years of this shit is not getting better again. Cause you go through these phases where you get strong and then it gets hard. Oh, yeah. Then you get strong, then it gets hard. Yep. And then each time you make one of them steps, you get more fucked up. <laughs> yeah. So you, so then I, you know, I got strong, then it got hard. And it's like, man, I'm really fucked up. Mm -hmm. So this is really hard and I'm really fucked up. Yeah. I don't know if I want to keep pushing this. Right. And I'm not going to have a third well, shoulder. How, how old were you? Um, 38, I believe. And there was a lot. There was a lot of damage because you compete that hard for that many years. Oh yeah. And the I didn't train around anything. What age were you? Fluid. What at what age were you the strongest at? Like 33, 34? <laughs> yeah, probably thirty three, thirty four. Yeah. Um, relatively, I mean, I could say you know if you go down to when I was two twenty, I could make an argument there because right. there was less gear. Yeah. You know, and you know five hundred. I think that when I did the five twenty, I think that was raw. And that was in my 20s. And maybe it, that might have been 242. And so it's like, okay, you compare that to the shirted bench of 610 at 308. Come mm. on. You know? Right, right, right. Yeah, right. You know? But, I mean, the shirts there weren't very good. Well, they, I, I should have learned how to use them better. Yeah. Because my Cause you gotta, bench. That's another thing. you got to learn how to use that equipment on top yeah, of it. Yeah, there are other people getting 200 pounds out of their shirt, yeah. and I was getting 65. Right, yeah. Like, come on. You know, this is bullshit. Um, but you, you either play the game or you don't play the game. Yeah. I, I personally liked the gear because I was never the, the strongest, right? Yeah. So it's – I never, in, in a fucked up way, I never saw myself as that either. I saw myself as I can always be a top 10 guy, mm -hmm. right? But if I'm a top 10 guy, then they fuck up, I can still win. You sneak in. But if I need to get in there at that top 10 guy position – so that's kind of how I always saw that. But now with the gear, it's like, look, I can be this top 10 guy, but then I can learn my shit better than the other guys. And if I know my gear better, yeah. let's say I could get that. If we use gear, if I use the gear more than what I did, I would have squatted. I can, people I trained with would say this as well. I don't like to throw numbers mm -hmm. out of my ass. I would have squatted 100 pounds more for sure. Right. I would have benched probably 100 pounds more for sure. My total would have been 300 pounds higher. Yeah, that, that's another. That's why I, I didn't grow up in that era. Yeah. Right. But that's another thing I didn't like about gear is if you had our better equipment than I did, mm -hmm. a better shirt, or knew how to use it better than me, you're going to be stronger than me. Yep. But if I do it raw, there's no way it's going to be either I'm stronger than you or you're stronger than me. Yeah. You know that's one of the things. But yeah. I didn't grow up in that era either. Yeah, you know, it's just first... a different era because where I would see that from that other side was, well, if your genetics are better than I am, I'm fucked anyhow. Yeah. But so now what skill is involved? Say in football, if we got the same genetics, but I practice harder right, and I right, learn right. my plays yeah, yeah. and I know my drills, mm -hmm. I can kick your ass. Right. Where in powerlifting, that's just straight up. Here's what it is until you threw that extra yeah. layer on there. I don't have no skill. That's why I hate that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? I was all brute strength. Yeah. yeah, so that's why I've always, even when Raw started to come up, I always respected both. Yeah. Because they're different. They're oh, they so are. They're so different. Time. Yeah. And I don't think people understand how vastly different they are, and they try to compare the two. I think it's just what kind of generation you're in, too. Yeah. If you're, you know, in the, what is it, 90s, early 2000s, I mean, everybody was do, doing that. So if I was in that era, I'd do the same thing. It's just when I was was lifting, I never, you know, it was all raw. Like, raw was getting big, especially in 2012, mm -hmm. 13, 14, 15, all that. It was, it was huge. Huge, man. It was blowing it was up. Upswing. You are kind of part of that upswing to see it. Look, yeah. You remember how hard people were pushing back on that? Oh, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Big time. You know, so the, the early adapters of that, you know, Lily Bridges being mm -hmm. part of that, some of the other ones. Yeah. People want to talk about people getting hate in the sport. Big time. Like, come on, man. Yeah. 
you know, they were getting blasted. But then I think that was part of their fire. Oh, it's it was. Like, Fuck you. I will do this shit without your gear. Yeah, they show up to meets raw, but they'd be the only people raw. Yeah. Right. So, and then they started. There, there's guys that were were squatting more right raw than yeah. with gear, and that's what really kind of then started taking. I think that's kind of kind of helped that raw yeah. transition, yeah. right? See, that's what I would if I was competing today. That would fuck me up. It would if I was in a flight of lifters. Oh yeah, and you got a guy benching or squatting raw or benching raw. Yes, after me. After yes, and you'd be like less. Fuck. Fuck me up big time. No, it would it would be like to, I'm done. Yeah, so I'm like glad I'm done, man. <laughs> Same here, because I have no fucking aspirations. There's no way. I'm putting this whole suit on. I got five guys help me in it. I'm doing less than he's doing. He's, yeah, he's got fucking a single one on with his dick hanging out. Yeah, absolutely no, no way, mm-hmm. no way. Oh yeah. And then how did you start? Like how did this? I mean, this is huge. Um, like how did this? It just started. Blow up? I mean, well, I was working as a trainer. And, and how long were you at Westside? Oh, f- 14 years. 14 years? Yeah. So I was working as a trainer for probably eight years at the time. Was that at Law Fitness? Uh, higher level. It was more corporate fitness center, oh. like a country club that had, you know, dining and fucking training. Right? I'm a member of a country club. Yeah. Country music is yeah. what I love. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I would train clients from 6 in the morning to 8, go to Westside until like 1130, and then train clients. It's like 10 at night. That okay. was for eight years. Yeah. And during that time, you know, I would go with Louie to do seminars and consulting and stuff like yeah. that because my degree is in exercise science and nutrition, and that's what I wanted to do. I just didn't know what I wanted to do with it. Right, right. Except fucking power lift, and that's all I cared about. And that just seemed to be where it was going to go. And so that led into me doing the consulting and seminars and then getting online. One of the first times I got online, you know, I'm searching – powerlifting training porn hub and stuff like that yeah and i found deepsquatter.com and he had a lot of uh, jason burnell had a lot of west side stuff on there yeah and a lot of it wasn't what we were doing so i started answering questions on there for him and he was doing the best that he can you know he's going off articles that was like early 2000s probably earlier than that so 98 99 before two because 2000s when we launched the site but when the site launched it was just a q a and it was, uh, it was, that was it. It was Ask Dave. And it was, it was like a forum, but I didn't want a forum because forums were bullshit. Because there would be a thread of people arguing. Right, yeah. I just wanted, here's the question, here's the answer, go away. <laughs> there was no way to reply to the yeah, answer. Yeah, that's good. I like that. And so that, that's what started it. And then from there, people would ask, hey, where do you get bands? Where do you get this book? Where do you get this? Where do you get this? So we put a shop up and then kind of took it from there. So it, it, it started out of just answering questions for people and then them asking about products. And I was doing – I saw the future as being like the seminars and the consulting, mm-hmm. and that was going to be what was going to get me out of the personal training. Because when I met with my clients – because, I mean, after a while you have a kid and you can't, you can't be in the gym all the fucking time. <laughs> yeah. And you just can't. I know. And so we were laying out different business plans and everything that we laid out, and my clients were executives. I mean, they were smart. Everything had multiple streams of income. Yeah. It's like, okay, you can either have a training center, but with the training center, you need this. I'm like, yeah, but with the training center, I'm doing the same shit I'm doing now. I'm still going to be stuck in here all the time. Like, well, you can do this. And education was a part of it. It's like, I want to be able to give back to, yeah. to powerlifting. I mean, that was, that was a huge thing because, you know, all these people throughout my life never charged me anything, you know. Same here, yeah. And that's why I got everything I have. So yeah. I can't not not give back just keep yeah you know so how's that that's a live learn pass on right that's yeah where it comes that's through. good like how do i maintain that but do it in such a way that i can pay for the content allow it to be free but not have to have a paywall because that was a big thing back then yeah is that or you know monetizing content all the other stuff that was the drive then it became this okay now how do we pay for the content well you got to sell shit to pay for the content <laughs> What'd you, you know, sell first? Um, sleds were one of the first things. Um, weight releasers. And sleds were definitely the first thing. It was sleds and there's like fucking amino acids or something. It didn't really sell. Uh, was, amino acids? Yeah, that, yeah, People yeah, keep buying yeah, that. Why'd you yeah, stop? No, it just, it Lead FTS, shit. amino acids. Yeah, it didn't do shit. But the, <laughs> the sleds were a big one. Yeah. And the seminars, probably the sleds and the seminars were big. And then after uh, a year or two, Louie got sick and tired because he used to sell a lot of stuff. Yeah. 
and his videos and the reverse. Well, I remember those videos. Yeah. Yeah. So my wife was frustrated with her job, and he said, well, why don't you just sell the shit that I sell? And that would be like safety squat bars, uh, man arrays, weight releasers, belt squat belt. Um, belt squat's been around that long? Well, it was just a belt that had a chain on it. It was a completely different yeah. type of thing. Was, and like a dip belt or something? Yeah, it was a dip belt, and it had these fucking uh, chain that was like <laughs> welded. It was just it was it was terrible. Yeah, but it worked, and so he gave us all that on consignment, and that's where the products started to go take off. So if it wasn't for Louis, I wouldn't have a company either. I would, but it wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't look the same. Yeah, you know that was okay. Well, now awesome. I have contacts. Right now I know this person to get books from. This person to get this from. And then it's big. like well, yeah, it's like how much do I order? Because I didn't have any money, you yeah. Know, so I can only I got to take what Louis gave me, sell it, use that profit to buy more inventory, and then use that to buy more inventory. Mm-hmm. And then ten fucking years later, I'm like, I still ain't making any money, you know. <laughs> still building inventory, right. yeah. You know, and so it was a it was a long play, but I wouldn't do it any different because I didn't fucking know anything, right? Like if somebody would have said, "Here's twenty grand," yeah, I would have been out of business. Well, yeah, I think the internet helped everything, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. internet is fucking huge. Yes. You might have had another beer. Yeah, go right. <laughs> At what point am I going to say, like, no? You're going to run out. <laughs> you're you're like going to fucking run out of beer. Well, we're about to yeah. run out of beer. I'm going to need a couple more. Yeah. Here, but but the, the, I didn't even know what the internet was. at the. You know, I got a computer well, yeah. for fucking Christmas and that my brother put together. <laughs> and then I go online, it's like dial up. Yeah, shit. Bah, yeah. Bah, bah, bah. yeah, and I had a Malamute at the time. So I'm yeah. looking up like fucking Malamute sled dragging shit right. and all this stuff. Then it, it, then I started looking up the training and I'm like, what is it? And then, then I'm like, well, maybe I, the seminars were what I was trying to promote at yeah. the time. Is I need to get the seminars out there so people will come to the seminars. And the goal there was just to fucking break even on the seminars. And then that. Well, the third or fourth seminar in, there was a t- somebody that attended that said, hey, you know, you ever think about make, putting up a website? And I'm like, I have one. And I, it was just a fucking page. That right, said, right, right. Call this number. I'm like, no, like, I love real one. It's like, I got a buddy that's trying to do this. I'm like, fuck it, let's just do that. And that's where the Q&A came from. Hmm. So it's relationships and just the same thing. Yeah, it's all all yeah. building relationships with everybody. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. you know, the it's more the, the more contacts today. you have, the better off, and everything. Yeah, yeah. It's it's different though today though because it's the industry is. I mean, back then you still had the fitness mags and all the other kind of shit, but the industry was a little more trusting then. Like if I if I contacted somebody and this is they they were who they thought you know they were who they said they were. Yeah, in most cases, right. Hold yeah. on, am, am I who you thought I was? Or yeah, yeah. I am? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just talking you suppliers. complete idiot. <laughs> well, I'm talking suppliers and stuff like that. You know. Oh, like, yeah, you know, no, I got you. Stuff like right, that. Right, you know, right, right. So all those type of things. And even even with that, like online training's changed a lot with the education online. Mm-hmm. Because before I could put coaches on the site that were writers and all this other stuff, they're like legit coaches. Well, I remember reading, dude, like, uh, stuff. like stuff off your website. Yeah. About – I don't know, everything. Yeah. You know, you, um, the columns you guys had? Yeah. I remember reading those, I mean, years ago. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, it, was learned... easier to, it was easier to vet the information. Though, right. Because yeah. nobody had an agenda. Yeah. Where yeah. now, you know, everybody's trying to build their online client base. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, so are you for real? Like, what you're writing here, is this even fucking for real? Or is it bullshit? Then are you for real? Yeah. Because if we post this and then it sends people to you, then you rip people off. They yeah. come to me. Then you for look the like repo. shit. And then yeah. you look like shit. Yeah. 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 So that, that's changed. Content's changed. You know, it went from the articles right. to blogs, yep. you know, to Q&As, to all the digital video, short form. Yeah. You know, and podcast, long form. So weird, right? Because it got super short form, which is really popular. Yep. Very long form. Yeah. Like all the middle stuff is like shitty. Well, who. Is that Chuck? Who's who's squatting in your in your thing? Is that Chuck Vogelpool or what, who is there? that? Who is that? Well, your your main logo. Who is that squatting? Or is that just something you guys made up? My graphics guy still never told me for sure. So they don't. You don't know who it is? I think it. I think it's Louis. Oh, it is Louis. I th- I think. Yeah, I always wanted to know who that was. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Right. Well, because what, what we knew what the brand was going to be, and then we needed a picture of somebody squatting from behind. 
and then it sort of went to the gym that day, and it, there was three or four people. Yeah, I had squatting from behind. Right, right, and then we had to take the box out, which is why you see that fucked up. Yeah, I know. I see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, know, I love it. it. Yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, that's been your your logo since the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, yeah, I remember getting that shirt, and that logo was on it. Yeah, that was probably 2002, maybe. So yeah. That becomes the weird thing with apparel, too, is how do you keep your brand identity on yeah. each one? Right. I've had a couple, like, hit Sports Center, like, Prepare, Perform, Prevail was one. I'm like, oh, that's good, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, but my fucking logo ain't I there. know, yeah. Like, oh. Then you don't know where that came from. Yeah. Yeah, so you're fucked. I like, know. It sucks. Yeah. No, I've had stuff all <laughs> over the place, and then my logo's not on there, which is this, right? Yeah. It just says, like, might say this, yeah. but it's not, oh, they don't know whose brand that is. You know? Yeah, because so. that picks up steam. Mm -hmm. You give it three months, it's going right. to go all over yeah. every T-shirt site. Yep. You're going to be on there fucking sending out takedown requests. Yeah. And then I want to ask about, like, John Meadows. Mm -hmm. Like, all I know about him, I never met him in person. Mm -hmm. I just want to know more about him. Mm -hmm. Like he, I know he died recently, but mm -hmm. I always watch his stuff. And I, 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 he, we've contacted each other back and forth, you know, before he died. But mm -hmm. like just about how he was and how everything you saw online was pretty much how he was, was him, right? Yeah, yeah. He was. Um, if 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 I'm the person that's on this side that like doesn't trust anybody, right? Right. Then he is the person on this other. That trusts side everybody. That trusts everybody. Yeah. So if we, for us to have conversations just about business and people, we could always find right in here happy medium right? yeah because you know he that was a strength and weakness right uh, to, to him it's same for me you mm -hmm. know but yeah and he, he fucking loved to train i mean that's obvious he yeah loved to train loved to train fucking hard yeah you know and that was i always wanted to train with him and, yeah. and uh i didn't get to know him too well just you yeah. know before he passed but he'd met we'd message back and forth a bunch and i always wanted to train with him yeah you know and i bought his your, your, how you have that? The, was it the Mad Dog bands and all that? Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah band, I bought yeah, all those band, and everything. And I, yeah, I don't know. I just, so he would do anything for that. anybody. He was. He, he, he seemed like legit, a great guy. Man. I mean, it's it's when anybody passes in the industry that you know, and I've known a lot of people that oh, pass yeah. this industry now. That you always kind of dread, like what? Okay, what's going to happen? So I just kind of stay away from the internet for a mm -hmm. couple of days. And yeah. he's the only one that I never saw. There, there was like one stupid fucking bad thing, but that was nothing it. bad about like him. He's every, such a great like guy. Never yeah. seen anything like that, you know. Which means his reach and his impact was huge. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, so and his family's good. So that's right. You know. He was from around here, correct? Yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I trained with John. He was at Westside for a little while when I was there. I didn't like him because he's a bodybuilder guy. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, right. You stick a bodybuilder guy in uh, some of the places that exactly, you trained yeah. with. It just doesn't mesh well. And then um, hooked back up with him after I retired from powerlifting because I'm trying to figure out, like, what the fuck am I going to do? Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't want to fuck with your head, but, like, how are you going to train when you can't train to get a bigger bench? I mean, it's, it's – when that's – the only, fucking with my head right now. Yeah, you, you get what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know what, what fuck, I'm going to do. You know? like, just training for fitness is like, like – I guess try to drink 24 beers for noon. I don't yeah, know. I don't yeah. have anything else. I don't have any other goals. Yeah, I mean, training for fitness just doesn't – I know. Yeah, I don't get I'm it. I'm 40 now. It's getting close. Yeah. So I, I got into, I'll do that, you know, do this bodybuilding training shit. So right. if I like that, eh, some, some I liked about it. The challenge sets I liked. But the rest, I'm like, this is stupid. Like, arm days to me are stupid as fuck. Yeah. I watch <laughs> a bunch of his videos. I, 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 I use a lot of his stuff, too. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was very, very good shit. Yeah. You know, and then I, and he, he dressed up like the Ultimate Warrior one day. Or oh yeah, he got into that. For that a was while. awesome. I loved yeah. that. I was like, "This is the best thing ever." So no, he he kind of how yeah. we met or talk, you know. Yeah. But. No, he was into that like in a big fucking way. And right. And if, when he first showed it to me, I'm like, dude, this is so stupid. I know. It. And he's like, "No, <laughs> man, this is the greatest thing." <laughs> well, I said it was the greatest thing ever. Yeah, yeah. And I saw it. I'm like, "This is awesome." Yeah. He's walking around with a whistle. He's like dressed like an Ultimate Warrior. Mm -hmm. I love that kind of shit, you know. But. No, this is a hell of a brand, a hell of a place, man. Thank you. Now, is there anything else you want to know about me? Hmm. Hold on. I had to finish that beer first. Do you mind if I grab another? You got to finish them, right? It's the last um, one. Unless you want one more. You finished that? Yes, I did. We no, I did No, I didn't. We have one more beer in here. No, that's, that's yours. You sure? Um... <laughs> I saw a video 
when I was going through your stuff yesterday, and I believe it was a tour of your new place. Can't right? believe I even have it. Yeah. Yeah. And it was the setup as far as the distribution warehouse, whatever you want to call it. What do you call that area? Just your garage warehouse? Um, yeah, that the uh, we have two outbuildings on the property. Yeah. My house is on the property. We have the uh, warehouse or whatever you call it, yeah. the workshop we call it. And then the barn gym. And the right? gym's separate. So it's all on the property. It's yeah. ten acres. And now when uh, you when you did you build it or did you move into it? No, we moved into it. I was thinking about building it, but then all the prices of wood were fucking outrageous, right? Yeah. The last yeah. couple of years. And I found a place that had everything but more than actually we needed. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, this is you know this is a great property. Yeah. It has everything and more we'd ever need ever. Right. Yeah. Um, do we go or do we not? And we went. So Yeah, we that's went. where I was gonna go with is because there's enough room to grow. Oh, there's tons of room. You know, there. with that, but you're still in the middle of nowhere. Yes. Right. And that's so where I love to be. What does will UPS pick up there? Oh yeah. No, I'm very good friends with the UPS driver. Yeah. And uh they 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 help us all the time. Yeah. The UPS driver's a fan of mine and uh I've gotten to know him real well. And uh, they they treat us very well. well yeah. So there's no problems. Yeah. At all. Yeah. The the only thing I've run into here, mm -hmm. and this is not as remote as what you are, staffing's a bitch. You know. So. Yes. Have you thought about that? Um, we are close enough to a big town, mm -hmm. and uh, where it's not a problem. You know, we are close to a town that's about twenty thousand people within seven miles of us. Oh. Okay. Where we live now. There's like 200 people, if yeah, that, yeah. within a, what, six-mile radius. Mm -hmm. and there's nobody around. But within 10 miles, there's everything. Yeah. So you're out in the middle of nowhere, but you're within a distance uh, really close to everything. Yeah. Everything you need. So, yeah, we're kind of in a, a perfect area, I think. Because I don't like the city at all. I yeah. don't. I never. Listen, I like to be naked. I like to drink beer and like to be, you know, I don't want to get arrested. Yeah. So I got to live out in the middle of nowhere, right? Yeah. So I, I'm in a good spot right now. Because you, you you seem to be getting close to this inflection point that's going to be weird, right? Because you can work for a couple more years, yes. and which you should do, mm -hmm. right? Because the insurance benefits are you, that they'd be be Yeah, done correct. Not, I, yeah. But you might need somebody before then, right? The, the simple answer is you're that person. Yes. Right? But yeah. then to need somebody before then becomes a weird, yeah. <clears throat> a weird thing because what role will they go into? Um have you thought about? You know, we we discussed a ton of stuff. Um, there's so many ways we can go. We might hire more people for the business, right? Um, I think we need a uh, an automatic press. And those are expensive, you know. They're like eighty grand. Um, there's just so many things we could do. I don't know. You know, I'm not the smart one in the relationship. Uh, my wife is, so she'll probably. Well, there's another there's another option too of just. <clears throat> abandoning that and go fulfillment you know have a company i would, I would never do that okay. no, I, don't, I don't i don't like that yeah i you didn't know, either i mean no. that's why i'm putting it out there because i didn't even know that was an option no i i know that a lot of companies do that mm -hmm. and uh everything's made in-house made uh everything pretty much is made by my wife everything is made uh with maybe beer stains on it um and maybe tears right mm -hmm. um but i think that's I think that's awesome. I, you know what I mean? You mm -hmm. get it directly from us. Mm -hmm. Most companies, you don't have that. They're from fulfillment stuff. They're, they're from a different company. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, uh, what do they call that? Shipped, uh, I don't even know, bot, what's that called? Ship, uh, yeah, that's yeah, drop, drop ships yeah, and all yeah, that shit. Yeah. No, we never do that, you know? Yeah. She makes that stuff and she works her ass off. And, you know, definitely probably in the next year we're, we're going to have to uh, either hire more people or... Uh, getting automatic press and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. right? But that's great. It mm -hmm. means the business is no, good. No, good things. It just become strategic decisions. That you yeah, I know. It's there's tough. There's only so much capital. Yeah, that's true. So we'll, we're looking into everything. So I'll keep being an idiot on, online, and uh, we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. That's all I know. So, Are you going to expand it in the supplement line more? Yes, man. I, I, I want it so bad. And there's uh, there's so many ways, but – the supplement market's like uh if you've never been in the supplement market, it's like a like a mafia, like a mob, right? Mm -hmm. 
Like, they're all together. And I didn't know that until I got into it. Like, you got to know people, right? I don't know supplement guys. I don't know shit. So, <laughs> I'm just some hillbilly out in the woods, right? Mm-hmm. Making a pre-workout with a good manufacturer. And they make other products that are very, like, um, recognizable. Like, uh, I can't, I don't know what they are. But they're big no, products, yeah, big-time yeah, products. Yeah, yeah. Well, they all know all these people. And they got their, I don't even know what they call them. They said, uh. These distributors that are like, everybody knows everybody, mm-hmm. but I don't know anybody. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the deal I'm in right now. So most of my sales go through my website. But all these other companies, they can know somebody, and they can immediately make you know thousands and thousands of dollars in sales with a product that's shit, but they know people. So it's kind mm-hmm. of hard. you know. It's kind of rough yeah. waters. So I'm kind of learning that market now, so it's hard. But, yeah. uh, I mean, we're doing good, but. Man, we could do so much better if, if I knew if I knew who you should know in that market. Yeah. Like if you get connected to somebody, they can get you in like two hundred stores, mm-hmm. like immediately. Mm-hmm. Like what? So it's kind of like that. That's that's. Uh, I'm kind of at a sticking point now. No, it's a that's a it's a bitch that I've seen. Yeah, a lot of people. Have. Yeah, and and I talk to other guys that kind of know the industry a little bit, and I could totally see. That, I mean, they know everybody. Yeah. It's all the same. They all deal the same. Well, I'm just going to start a new company, but I know all these motherfuckers. So, look, at, I'm going to make all this money because I already know these people. Well, I yeah. don't know these people. You know, like I mm-hmm. said before, I'm a hillbilly that lives on a cornfield. Yeah. So, we'll see what happens on the road. Some stay just completely B to C, though. They don't go, you know, to the companies and all the other stuff. They just keep it direct to consumer. Yeah. Which can keep it smaller, but it can keep it longer. Well, yeah, we're definitely direct to consumer yeah, right now. Yeah. Um, and we were in like 15 stores, but it's all mom and pop shots that know us. Mm-hmm. You know, so companies, uh, either gyms or, or supplement stores that know me, mm-hmm. right? Um, we're in them, like 15, 20 stores. But shit, man, if I knew the right connections, mm-hmm. I man, you could be in like 200 stores immediately. You could be at a Walmart, you could be in anything. Mm-hmm. So it's all about connections, right? So mm-hmm. we'll see what happens on the road. Yeah. Right. Any other plans that you have? Light myself on fire. Well, I get that, but I'm drinking 24 beers before noon. Mm-hmm. Um, drinking uh, 12 beers at this podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, it's almost there. Uh jeez, I don't know. There's not much. Else. Well, obviously, bench of 500 pounds by this summer in a meet, a sanctioned meet. Uh, shit, I think that's it. All right, then how do people find you? Huckfinbarbell.com. Or Huckfin Barbell anyway. I mean, anywhere is Huckfin Barbell. Well, you also have a podcast, right? Oh, yeah, I do. Because yeah. the reason I know this is because I went to Huckfinbarbell.com oh, to you find did? your content, right? Oh, shit. How, how the, how'd the website look? We, we did a good website, new one. It looked good. It was good? It looked, I could find what I was looking for. My wife made that. <laughs> yeah, I can find what yeah. I'm looking she for. She has no idea what she's doing. And that's... <laughs> and that's kind of the case all the time. Yeah, I know. We had a new website that just came out two, three, what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's always a fun experience. I'm sure that was a fucking treat. I think she took it took like two months to try to make it. Yeah. I mean, she but, was a teacher, so she. You know. But I heard you had a podcast. So I was yes. looking for the podcast, but there's no way to the podcast oh, on the fucking shit. website. So let's get stupid. That's the exactly, podcast. Exactly. Exactly. So the I, best I, podcast yeah, yeah. this side of the Mississippi River. Yep. So I, I, I don't know how I actually found it. I, but I ended up finding it. What do you? Yeah. Would you listen to any of it? Yeah. What did you I listen to? The last two. What you want? You know, so I listened to the last one where you were talking about coming out here. I did. What did oh, I say? Ah, oh, we didn't have an itinerary. You didn't know what was going on. Well, I didn't. No, I know. I, I had know no that. clue. But that's me doing all that stuff. There's yeah, no I had no idea what I was yeah. doing. I didn't yeah. know where yeah. to go. I didn't yeah. know where yeah. to stay. Yeah, yeah. Man. But it's the, what I was trying to figure out was because I, I watched the podcast of you and um, uh, Deep Water guy. Oh, John Anderson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love John. Oh, yeah, and your volume, dude. It was like killing the fucking camera, <laughs> right? It was. It was. It was like. Yeah. It was. It was. It was a Zoom thing or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. But you, I was you know, in my barn. I'm like, oh my god, this guy's like a fucking wrestler. Twenty the whole entire yeah. time. Like, I, I was, and they just like, oh, and we need to figure out how to do this, man. He's gonna be way up here, He's way, way too down loud. Here. I'm like, he can't be like this all the time. He is. And then there was like the, the Mark Bell podcast. I went through that. I'm like, oh, okay. He's kind well, of I was fucking. Well, there. I was drunk then. Oh, well, yeah. Well, yeah. I tore my pec and I literally drank at least a twelve pack of beer. And I didn't think we were doing the podcast that day. Yeah. I thought we were doing it the next day. And uh, like Silent Mike or whatever, someone other, one of his buddies goes, 
hey, we're going to do the podcast now. Said, yeah. Because I had just tore my tendon, and I was getting drunk. Yeah. I got over there. I'd already have a 12-pack in, so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, then on your podcast, like, oh, okay, the guy's not always in this fucking big-time wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not always. Yeah. So I would say check out his podcast. You know, it's there's – there's a lot of them. There's, oh, there is. We, we've been going for a couple of years now. 152, I think. Yeah. It's Let's Get Stupid podcast on yeah. uh, wherever you find podcasts yeah. at. So, and other than that, thank you for coming. I'll let you do your exit because it's better than mine because I just say we're done. And so you can exit the, the podcast. Well, I'm going to exit this podcast by saying you can find this T-shirt <laughs> at hookfinbarbell.com. And you just got done listening to one crazy son of a bitch who just drank about 13 beers. I got two words for you. Okay, bye. We're done. <laughs>